Test, 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 test.
Welcome, everybody, to a very special edition of this, of the USFL podcast. I'm joined, as always, by my man, Zach Kyleman over here, which hopefully you should be able to hear. Say something for our people, Zach. <laughs> I hope you can hear Let me. us know down <laughs> in the chat. The I will say, if you, it wouldn't be... <laughs> One of our specials, if there wasn't a technical difficulty or two. So let us know if we can hear Zach down in the chat. There's plenty of you here. There's plenty of you here. My God, there's plenty of you here. Welcome in, everybody. Can, can we, can we, I'm just going to lead off. 
the, the fact you guys are choosing our our show to jump in and do this three hour plus coverage, you rock. I love this. I I love getting to talk to fans like yourself. So does of course the ref here. This is great. What what a lead off here. We got so much to come in. This is an exciting night for spring football in general and the USFL. Here we go, man. I, I know you're jazzed. I am so, so hype. So I am I, we've too. been hype all year. I mean, we've been doing this just just a couple months. Not even, well, about two months now. Almost two months. And to think that we're, I mean, we're almost at 1,000 subscribers, which we're going to talk about that here soon. Before we get started, I mean, I think a great way to start things out is with our giveaway. So if you guys have been paying attention, we were giving away your choice of shirt or hat to one lucky subscriber. We're going to announce that now. That's right. Now, no beans, no worries. If you can't make it tonight, we get it. We'll also announce it on the Friday show as well. But congratulations, Chris Mason. Sign you up. You get a you you get your own choice of hat or shirt from the new new USFL shop. So DM us over on Twitter. Now, Zach, this is a big one, isn't it? This next one. Yes. Now, we yes, didn't think that we thought this might be a, a, a while out when we would do this next actually announce the next giveaway. But we, we mentioned earlier, tune in to find out how you could win a free USFL jersey. As you know, last week they put them out. We're giving one away. Well, yeah, and uh we're close to cracking it. I just updated our stats. We're at 968. I think we're so, gonna hit it tonight, guys. We're going to hit it tonight, probably, and we're gonna, we'll are gonna be calling out one of your guys' names on stream to do that during the draft, too, of all things. Like, perfect timings, it seems. We're gonna, yeah, <laughs> we're going to pick a winner while they're picking their players. Sign everybody up. Now, here's the real situation. We're going special. We're going big. Let's put a little bit of icing on the top. If we get to 2,000, 2,000, Zach, if we get to 2,000 subscribers... You're going to get that jersey, but you're also going to get a hat and a shirt of your choosing. If, but that's yeah. tonight only. Tonight only. If we get to 2000 tonight, jersey, hat, and shirt. So make sure if you're not, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button. And as always, click the bell. It builds morale. And I think everybody needs a little bit of morale in their life. Things are going a little crazy over there in Ukraine, but we're not going to be worried about that tonight, folks. We're looking at the USFL <laughs> draft. We got some good picks coming. So the Panthers, they're the number one pick. You, you're you wearing your Panthers right. shirt. I know you're excited. We've seen mm. a name come out earlier that has been confirmed for the draft. Who do you think is going to be their number one pick, buddy? Well, you know what? The popular one right now is Jordan Ta'amu. Just the name recognition, you know, everyone loved him in the Battle Hawks, and I think they want to see more of him after he had his really solid performances in the 2020 season for the XFL. Do I think he gets drafted first overall? I think there's a high possibility. However, I think it depends on Jeff Fisher. I actually, and this is another one I had too, I don't know if the chat will agree with this, um, I think Luis Perez will go number one He's overall. A, that, that's one I was um, thinking as well. That that is one that I really like. Now, if Tom gets picked up, I'm gonna I'll still be flipping out. Like we get the first overall draft pick. I've been ecstatic and waiting to see who the Panthers get picked up since they drew that lottery pick on speaking for yourself or speak mm -hmm. for yourself on FS1. I'm fine with either one of those guys. There's a good slew of guys in here that have been either reconfirmed again today or that we're assuming are in this draft. Uh, Tom, who was just basically confirmed today, thanks to uh, Mike Mitchell, of all people, the great insider that he is. So, uh, man, we got, I mean, we got good ones. I mean, well, what, let's see other ones. Brian Scott. Of Brian all people, Scott. Too. And now here's, a, this one hasn't been confirmed, but I did see something very interesting said earlier. So Paxton Lynch was let go. I, that now, is, I did. Yeah. Now, this is not saying he's in the draft pool, but. I did see some very interesting wording that the league had sent to somebody else that said anybody, it was actually on OutKick, I apologize. OutKick said today, okay, anybody that is an NFL, and they specifically mention, or CFL free agent at the time of this draft is eligible, and we may see one tonight. Now, that, well, then. I'm not to say, again, speculation zone, speculation zone guys <laughs> link down in the description he's cranking it out link down in the description but i mean 
it's so early and we're already speculating now w- he's cranking it out it's it's already out there and if you're new to the show like you you if you're not new to the show you know exactly what we're talking about if you're new well hey we defeat the things up we make sure you know when is what in certain mm-hmm. pieces so it, it, that is definitely speculation zone we just material like to have fun. you got to keep that in in line we just like to have fun at the USFL podcast sometimes, but we let you know that is the exact thing. We don't like the pitchforks. We don't like the fire. We like good times, good times, no haters allowed. Now, one thing, so you had mentioned right before we jumped on, we have a new USFL video with Birmingham Stallions coach Skip Holtz. Let me jump over yeah. because I think since we got a little bit of time here, I'm going to put that bad boy on and let, let's just give that a watch. Uh, do you have the link at, at handy by chance? Let me know when you have it because we'll just play it at the same time. And then that's sorry, guys. You get a little background uh, scenes on how we're working things here. Low budget, but. I agree. So let's let's throw this bad boy on here. Hopefully I don't blow your guys' ears out. So I'm going to take a look at that as we play. And I'm not hearing it at all. Well, that's an interesting one, but I think I know the fix. So bear with me here, guys. Do, do, do. This is how we do it at the USFL podcast. It's on the fly. Uh, so there we go. Monitor on monitor and output. Let's try that bad boy out and monitor and output there. Sorry guys. Again, we like technical difficulties. Are we getting anything? I'm still not getting anything. I don't really know. Let's take a look down here. See, this is the, these are the kind of fun problems you have when you have a thousand people watching you. So you can't hear him now. Could you hear him before? Could you hear him before? Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Well, this is all sorts of bad. <laughs> Let us know if you keep talking. Can you hear Zach now? Let us know in the chat. Thumbs up emojis or thumbs down emojis at least on this so skip holtz i have really enjoyed getting to see his reactions to this league he kind of has been like one of those really one of those and i think that honestly he's gonna make quite the impact at least moving forward you know definitely a Definitely a voice for the league that I think you'd want in your corner. Same goes for still can't hear you, but I think I might have fixed it now. Get, can, uh, are we getting thumbs up now? Now I'm seeing both in sideways. Oh, you know, it's got to be that way. Oh, okay, I'm hearing yes. I, I, oh, man. I, I mean. I, There's Zach. Okay, I think we're good. Oh, and, my God. There we go. And it's someone that I know in the chat. Of course. Of course, J- Jake's got to do it. Thank you, Jake. It wouldn't be, like I said, it wouldn't be one of our shows if we didn't have a technical difficulty, but I'm glad you could join us for the ride. And we got it settled. We still have 20 minutes before the draft. Now, here's what I'm curious about. Let's see if this audio plays. I still can't hear it, but. I have an opportunity to fill out I tonight. Can. And for the last okay, couple months, so I'm gonna play we've all had football. It's time for the USFL draft. We've been waiting a long time for this, but these little cards, we're going to have an opportunity to fill out tonight. And for the last couple months, we've all had football teams. We've all been named head coaches, but we don't have a team. Tonight, we start to put faces and names together on that team, and it's only going to create that much more excitement and energy. I have been involved in college football for 35 years where putting your class (laughs) together is a year-long process. I'm checking the street. Um, This one obviously (laughs) is a lot more went into building tonight than just tonight. 
but tonight we're going to have 12 players on a roster when this night's over. And yeah. tomorrow we're going to have 35. March tw on March 10th, we're going to have another 10. We're going to have 45 on our roster there. I mean, so just the way this whole thing is going about and being put together, excited to be part of the USFL, excited to be part of this draft. But for me, how awesome is it to bring eight teams into Birmingham? And as I have said time and time again, the only thing that's going to be better than playing in Birmingham is going to be playing for the Birmingham Stallion. Sign them up. So good. At least we're getting through mm -hmm. the technical difficulties early. Now we know next video that comes up, bing, bang, it's going to work. We're, we're brushing right, right through these we, issues. Right. Well, we want to play because the league, here's the thing. We expect the league's going to be having some promo videos of their players. The, the, if you guys haven't heard already, they already have the eight quarterbacks that will be selected in the first round. They're in Birmingham at the facility where the draft's being taken place. Uh, they're the QBs just aren't sure where they're going to land. Right. That's the only thing they know they're in there. They don't know what the team is though. So fascinating stuff. Uh, they want to, it kind of follows Fox's, uh, kind of like shock, shock factor type of marketing, you know, just like, na like they want natural responses. People going, Oh my goodness. They got this right. guy. That's well, what exactly. we're looking at. I know. And so there's been a lot of talk about why aren't they releasing that play player pool and we kind of talked about that on the show last week is it's all about that shock value they want the surprise they want again a lot of us and as people in the chat know hey jordan tayamu signed a contract a lot of the people that are going to be paying attention to this tonight and tomorrow they probably don't know that at all so when they see it that's going to be huge for them and then there's going to be names that we probably won't even expect in this pool just like there was with the xfl that quite honestly, again, like a Paxton Lynch, right? If you yeah. went from, if you, again, speculation zone, but if you went from being cut the day before and then you land in a, a spot the day after, I mean, kudos to whoever's handling that contract work, one. Uh, but two, I mean, you really get some of that shock, suspense, surprise in, in something like that, you know? You, uh, you have anyone in particular that you're like, they weren't confirmed yet, but I would like to see this guy, it, well, not walk across the stage, but like be announced and have the card brought up to the stage for yourself. Ryan Willis. Ryan Willis. I, I mean, I sign I, him up. If, he, if there's some way. That's who I want. <laughs> that, I, I mean, want Ryan Willis, lineman, if you don't know, lineman, uh, quarterback for the lineman, mega bowl champion. Dude's a super stud. Last we heard, he was on the practice squad for the Bears, but I mean, the season's over, so I don't know how all of that handles out for him. Uh, but that would be that would be an interesting one, uh, one that I think some people would love and some people would hate. But I feel like it's almost half natural that we see him show up. Maybe, Mister Money, Money Manzel, and I mean, I'll have he was going to show up. <laughs> and I, I mean, I'll I'll tell you, I'll have a tough decision at the end of the night, depending on where he lands. Uh, but I've said it before, and I'll say it again. If there's any person that can control the madman that is Manziel, it's my man going all in, Kevin Sutherland, with the gamblers. So we'll see. We'll see. But that, I mean, wouldn't doubt it. But I think, I don't know his situation with the uh, fan control football, but I think it was only like a one-year thing. I don't, he didn't even play every game last year, right? He was just like. All, all I got, and yeah, if you haven't heard about fan control football, I'm just going to bring this up real quick. Uh, basically, you call the plays. It's arena-style football. They're playing, funny enough, the same day as the opener for the USFL, uh, just not on, you know, m two major networks. They're only, they're playing on uh, Twitch and, like, NBC LX, which is, like, some subsidiary NBC channel that I – it's for, it's for like, creative content creation types. I'm – I, I'm sorry if that was horribly explaining, explaining, and you know what NBCLX is, but I'm just throwing that out there. Uh, most I could tell you, I, because I've been following it, it's like maybe he's back in. They're like Bob Maneri is the one who got him in last year, and it's like a crapshoot coming like social media wise on if he's in or not. You know, honestly, if he really is serious, he could in theory throw his hat in the ring for the USFL right, right, right. and be one of those guys that is like hush hush. Don't say anything because his name is kind of big, even though it'll be very polarizing to some, you know, and I'm one of those people. I'm like, I saw him in the AAF and the CFL. If he comes across the stage, great, but I ain't going to be like, I ain't going to be throwing my hands up. Go, right, Woo, right, right. Yay. <laughs> this stud is, like I said, well, it all know? depends on what team he lands on. Right. 
Now, if he lands on the Panthers, I'll be ecstatic. I'll be ecstatic if he lands on the Panthers uh, because. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, see, I I, w- I wish I could do what I could right now, but I I don't want big, I don't want Big Daddy YouTube coming right. in and going, hey, what's know, the this record is our first here? Big night, we can't we're screw getting it up this yet. going. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's like how I have songs I wish I could play when my when my Knicks when us myself and the fans that are Panthers fans in the chat get that QB one in, in roughly 14 ish minutes. Actually, it's more like, uh, it's more like 16 really with the timings here, which we should really go over that. Yeah, exactly. Now, yeah. Let's, let's look want. at everything that we got going on here. Um, so let me actually, what I can do, do we have it up here? I can pull it up here. I'll pull it up on the screen. Let me just get the, the draft layout here. Bear with me. You know, again, I, I I do have it ready. Oh yeah, though, start for, start for talking, and I'll I'll bring it up. Yeah, nice, nice little press release uh, that we have here. So, as we have stated tonight, there are twelve rounds in the inaugural USFL draft for day one. I had to round that back in, so you're not like there's only right, twelve. Right. What the heck? But yeah, there there's twelve this evening. They're not they're not spread on all positions. We're gonna have to wait for some of the starting positions to p- be picked day two tomorrow morning. So this one's running, and I saw someone ask ask in the chat going. I'm sorry, three hours? Yes, they are doing this for three hours. We are going to be on for all three as we get in there here very soon uh, from 7 to 10 o'clock for all the teams. And the way this works here, so tonight's orders, and he's actually getting it up as we're speaking, but I'll go through the 12 rounds, who you're going to get to see picks. Quarterbacks go round one. Round two, you got edge rushers as well as for round three and four. I know I'm kind of rushing myself, but two through four, edge rushers. We got offensive tackles rounds five through seven. So you're getting the big boys out of the way rounds two through seven, or at least some of the good, some ones are very vital to success on both sides of the ball. Meanwhile, you got cornerbacks eight through 10, actually eight through 11. And then we tail back to quarterback once more to end the night. So you'll most likely get your starters and your backups all in order. And you'll get all these exciting or very vital positions in terms of pe- what people look for on a football roster out of the way day one. Receivers, of course, will be coming up the next day along with mm-hmm. running backs, safeties, and everything else in between. Special teams, too. There's a lot of stuff day two. Day one, though, we get a lot of the exciting pieces that really are the impactful highlight guys for a lot of the times, the ones that really drive these teams and successes on both sides of those balls. Well, what ball. I love to see is that we're starting it off with quarterbacks, ending it off with quarterbacks, which, I mean, other uh, we're not getting the receivers, but if you're getting your quarterbacks to be, be get, uh, start and end it off, I mean, that's there's no more exciting way for me, at least, right? Like, oh, yeah. Especially now that we know all of the eight quarterbacks that are going in the first round are there, like you mentioned earlier, I guarantee you we're going to see some type of video footage. We saw that the XFL, uh, this, oh my goodness, shame on Ooh. me. The USFL what? has a stage in place, so you know oh. we're going to be seeing a lot of content out of us. Ooh. I apologize, guys. Uh, but who, I mean, let's just see. In the chat, who is everybody's teams? I know I see a couple of people saying it, but I'm curious. Emojis, words, let us know. Let us know down I'm, in the chat. I've seen a lot of, uh, a lot of stallions. I've seen breakers a lot, gamblers fans, so that's right up your alley. Up. Funny enough, I, I, I know there's not many icons for Panthers. I know some people in the chat that are Panthers fans. But I haven't been seeing as many rep it. I'm kind of surprised. I'll, I'll again. I got the shirt here. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm waiting on my own. You know, Tim Skelton. I see him just putting these horses in here. You getting the local rep. I've seen Bandit Ball as well. You right know, um, but but yeah. Which by the way, Bandits they get second pick right after us. So that's the thing. We'll get all the QBs, and you know, out of all of them. So yeah, Michigan, Tampa, Philadelphia, New Jersey. I'm going in order, by the way. Houston. So we'll get. We'll get Stefan's pick at number we're five. Have, as we we're going to have some honest takes on this. Somebody brought it up on on social media the other day. You, I, I'll tell you, you, I can't hide when I'm upset. You will know if I mm-hmm. like the pick or not. Straight up, I'm sorry <laughs> to anybody in the league. I'm sorry to the players. That's just that's the ref. That's how the ref is. I call it right down the middle. I don't BS you. So you'll know, you'll know uh, this, this first round, honestly, honestly, by the end of the night, I might be a Panthers fan. So that's, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see Whoa. if Kevin Sumlin holds me, holds me in. I, I, I've always been like on right. that line, on that line. Well, you, we'll see. So you got, okay. So 
as as a reminder uh, here for those that aren't aren't knowing, so why would he flip? He he currently his his Houstonish area is where he's at now, but he grew up near That's Detroit. Right. So, so he has both of those. Yeah, bowls. I'm not a flake. I'm not a flake fan, but I'll <laughs> say. I mean, we'll see. We'll see. And I, even just based on the jersey, I'm kind of tempted to become a New Orleans fan, but I know I couldn't do that to my city of Houston. That that's like a crime. That's like a crime to be a fan a fan <laughs> of anything New Orleans around here, right? So we have nine minutes though. Nine minutes until the first picks. Now here's one thing. So we know that the USFL social media accounts are going to be covering these picks throughout the night. Now I'm hoping we get them as the picks come in, but I could see them doing it by the round as well. Um, I think since we have nine minutes, what are your thoughts? How do you think we're going to see this play out from the league tonight? Well, you're definitely going to get the quarterbacks will do one by one because they want to hype these starting quarterbacks up. They want to make sure that you know that these are talented guys they're picking up for some that either are confirmed in or that we might not know about. Uh, they're going to hype them up. And I think they'll, you'll see videos going through the night about these two. Now, for the rest of the picks, they say extensive coverage. Extensive coverage to me is you have this stuff ready per mm. pick. You're, you want to have it per pick. So I'm thinking, and I am crossing my fingers. Now, we still can chat about this all, all right. day long on here. Don't get me wrong. But I am still thinking they're going to do this one by one and show it off, get the most exposure they can out of each team. Because here's the deal. They've been ramping up marketing. Right. We, I mean, people, people even mm -hmm. on this chat that I know of, we, we've had conversations. We were complaining about how bad the social media was. And all of a sudden, these last two weeks, it has been that they are revving that engine. And you're oh, hearing yeah. them now. You are feeling that social media presence all well, over and the I'll place. tell you, those, uh, those Twitter emojis, those custom emojis, those aren't cheap, right? Those are not mm -hmm. inexpensive. So the league is pumping money into this. Like, the, so you saw that earlier with each of the teams now on social media, they have a hashtag. And when you punch in the hashtag, it has like a special emoji. So you have a Panthers emoji, stallions emoji, so on and so forth. I mean, those go up for, I think what I was reading earth, earlier about a million bucks a day. Oh my a God. Day, I believe. Wow. So, I mean, good on, you know, if anybody was worried about the funding going into the USFL, I mean, that's all you need to see right there. I mean, and we, we are seeing them go just overboard with the marketing. I mean, the Daytona 500 brother, dude, like we'll, we'll talk about this on the show th this Friday, but real quick, since we have a couple minutes, I mean, yeah, we didn't get a new promo, but I think what ha what we did see was much more valuable than a promo from the league. Well, they had, I mean, I've, if I can go off the top of my head, it was three live reads from Mike mm -hmm. Joy along with, you know, playing promos throughout the broadcast too. I mean, the 500 was great. It was actually really good this year um, with the new car. Sands, of course, some of the tire issues. I can go into that whole thing if I want because that's my one of my side sports. But, you know, I, I think they did a they did a solid job, you know, at least locally marketing it. You got oh, yeah, well over 100,000 plus fans in Daytona Beach. And then, of course, millions watching at home is too. It's It worked out right. well, you know. Oh, hey, while we're looking into this, I just got a nice – little glimpse at least at the war room uh go to scott adamson's twitter adamson sl he's actually oh, at the event very nice um he got a nice shot of skip holtz and it looks like each table much is set up like the nfl draft you got the helmet at at the place looks like everyone is i mean mike riley's right across from him you can see him sitting there for the general's table yeah, i'm pulling that up now. and they're they're all set up and ready to go for this evening and i mean remember these guys are playing as not only coaches they are technically the gms of these teams so they are selecting these rosters, handpicking them the way they want them. It is their choices this fully. Is, so they got two responsibilities. I mean, this is pretty cool, huh? This is this is bigger than what the the XFL did in their draft, if you ask me. Right? They had mm. they had war rooms in each state, but they were just based out of yeah, hotels. Look at that. This is like this is looking pretty cool. There's your uh, I was say there's your stallions coach there. He'll be picking sixth, by the way, for that QB. So got a few picks. There. I actually forgot to finish out the rest of the rounds. Uh, so Mauer's pick seventh, and I know you just were talking about New Orleans. They will be finishing in the last position for the first round. But remember, it is an analytical snake draft, so the breakers will get their first pick being a defensive end. So even if the QB is, for example, maybe you guys aren't a fan of who they pick eighth, yeah, they're going to probably pick the cream of the crop in that uh, edge rushing category right. and be uh, 
destroying people hopefully with that front seven. i mean this is i really i really do appreciate what the usfl did with this draft here this is a different touch and i mean for especially for a first year draft where you're not based off records from the year before i feel like this gives everybody an even shot yeah the panthers are gonna have a stellar quarterback but like you mentioned they're they're gonna be pushed out a little bit on their next pick because they don't come until the end of the first round and then once you start jumbling in some of those other picks and positions Things get a little bit interesting here. That's right. That is exactly right. And just a little few more details on the draft. It's going to be you have four to 450 to 500 players that you have to sign a contract and it was supposed to you have to be eligible really by today to get in. They were doing this up to zero hours. Some of my favorite players in arena, by the way, were getting signed last minute by uh, Antoine Grant. I will say right here, uh, he'll be draft day two but I can see him getting picked up. Zim, Zim Williams, who I actually interviewed on my Gridiron Gallery channel, dude's a great chat, played in Mexico. He got his contract yesterday, was super happy for him. Um, I'll talk up arena guys all day. Trevon Shorts from the Albany Empire coming in. Desmond Maxwell from the Predators. Um, I'll shout out those guys all, all day. But they've been showing tr- contracts up to zero hour. <laughs> so they were really kind of getting this thing tight. Just the quarterbacks, I think they were already pre Oh, for sure. Like, they were yeah, right. Yeah, I think, I mean... <laughs> you know, Realistically, and this is why, honestly, I don't think Paxton Lynch is going to be in that first eight. Uh, If anything, just because I think that they've probably had those quarterbacks at the ready for a while because they don't want any mishaps. And I I don't know if it's the case. So has it been confirmed that they haven't been picked? Uh, I mean, that, like, sorry, can you rephrase so you that question? You mentioned earlier that they're, they're the, well, we don't know the picks, but if there's eight quarterbacks, right. my assumption is the coaches have already picked who they want on their team because it seems like so, giving yeah. them only eight guys is, I mean, that's, that's rough. See, so, so, yeah, the understanding that I got, and this was, uh, this is based off just kind of some details that have leaked out about how this is being done. They're flying all the QBs to Birmingham. They're going to be, Basically, this is just protective stadium they're at is yeah, what it yeah, is yeah. what it is. They're, this whole they're at the protective stadium facility, the same place that they did the launch announcement of the hub. Um, you're gonna have all eight QBs there. The Q, the coaches, it sounds like no who they're mm-hmm. gonna get. The picks they said were in. So they're gonna do this out of formality, most likely. The question is the QBs, it sounds like don't know ah, who they're going to. Ah, so interesting. It's a surprise for the quarterbacks. The idea they, that it sounds like is that they're, they want to get their natural reaction to whatever team they're going. You know, it's all about getting that social, it's social media presence. People want to see this stuff. It's good for the camera. That's exactly what they're doing here. And we'll get that. That's what will be the first few rounds. Now they do have to, uh, of course they got a bit of time that they can buffer between these that each team will get. It's just, uh, that does shrink every so often throughout the draft. Uh, it right, gets shorter, right. especially day two. Things start really speeding up. But here you might see the same thing like the NFL draft where like someone knows the pick. They'll milk up some time. Or maybe not. Maybe we'll get lucky and they'll just say, screw it. Let's hurry it up. But I could see them milking this one for all it's yeah. got, <laughs> got possibly. Uh, well, we have two minutes. Two minutes. So hopefully we get that pick. So each, so the first day, each team, I don't know if we mentioned this. We, I think we may have. But if just in case, uh, we'll reiterate. Each team has three minutes to make their pick. For the first yes. day, the second day, I think it goes down to ninety seconds. For the whole, mm-hmm. for the whole, it's got, day. It basically, kind of cuts in half, sort of throughout the day. It is, yeah, it's three, and then it's ninety. Eventually, it goes down to one minute for rounds twenty-three through thirty-five. I see, I so, gotcha. kind of like you're, uh, I guess, in any draft, or really, if you want to compare it to fantasy football, in my own mm-hmm. sake too, you know, if you want to put it that way, like I don't know if anyone else is like this. Mine is essentially that where you get to a certain point, we start speeding up the process here, you know because all the vital pieces are picked up. But uh, you want to think about this, although mostly now it sounds like rounds 2 through 12 are going to be a lot more of the hard thinking, <laughs> just right uh, sweating it out with QBs right in the on. room. <laughs> now, here's, here's what I want. We have one minute left. So because I want the Internet to know that the USFL fans mean business, as the mm-hmm. USFL is dropping things on social media, I want everybody in this chat to be liking and sharing that. Let's let the football world know that the USFL fans aren't messing around. We need to come out strong for the USFL. I mean, I was going to say, uh, 
they they aren't messing around. We have two K people in here. I, I am uh, blown away by that that we that we're getting this exposure. People care about now, this man. They care about this draft. I'm loving it. I am loving. Now I'll this. say this since you mentioned since we have two K. It's six o'clock. The time it, it, the clock is running. But since we have two K, if everybody hits the subscribe button, one lucky person is getting a jersey and a hat and a shirt tonight. One lucky person. If we hit that 2,000, now we've already hit the 1,000, so somebody's getting a jersey. But if everybody in here that's not subscribed, and again, it builds morale, click the bell, click the bell. It builds a little morale. And I'll tell you, you know what builds morale? A free jersey. If it's free, it's me and a hat and a shirt. If we cross that 2,000, let's make it happen, guys. And you know what? Hit the like button, comment too. (laughs) Sign it up. And if you feel uh, generous, share it. I'm just going to stop and say this because I, I love some comments here. Uh, Colin Zarell, I'm just a heads up. I'm a Bears fan. I saw that Mitch Trubisky won to the Maulers. <laughs> you know what? I, I, if he was somehow in this draft, that'd be kind of hilarious. But like that, that I just got to stop. I, I see the man's name. I got to take a pause <laughs> a minute and go breathe a little bit. <laughs> nice one. Nice one, guys. <laughs> But yeah, we're on the clock. clock. It's officially draft time now. The Panthers boys, guys, we're on the clock. Let's get this go. Let's see who picks it up. Is it Ta'amu? Is it Perez? Is it Scott? Is it someone we don't know? We're about to find out. And then the bandits will find out right after that. So it's about time. Mr. Jeff Fisher himself about to drop the first bomb on social media and tell you what, I love the USFL's approach to this. They, I'm assuming that they got a lot of deals with with Twitter. I mean, they got the sports section alone. If you were in the filters in the explore tab, Yo. they're they're oh, hogging yeah. it. It's the banner. They they're like, hey, you better not listen here, blank. As again, I don't want to. I don't want Big Daddy Twitter or Big Daddy YouTube coming and going. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> they're, I mean, they're like, listen, guys, this is legit. We are not effing around. You're not going to forget right. about this. You're going to be curious as to what the hell's happening. And so, yeah. USFL just tweeted it out. Round one QBs. Got the list. We're officially on the clock. Panthers said the same Oof. thing. It's this is Says it's it right getting on this is oh boy, it's getting real, right? I mean, we've been following the <laughs> USFL for a long time, right? We've been following it for a long time, but now we're like getting to the point where, well, one, there's the draft. We got the coaches, we got the logos, we got the jerseys. Yep. We're getting the players today. And I mean, in just what? It, it's it's six weeks, not even. I don't even know. But, and if you, if nobody, if you didn't know, Springstock, we're going to be going live to, uh, to Birmingham, Alabama. So come join yes. us in the parking lot. The party is Gotta in the parking that. lot, April 16th, 12 p.m. Central. So we got a bunch of guests. We got a bunch of podcasts. It's going to be fun. Free food, free drinks, BYOB, so non-alcoholic that we're bringing. But again, we're doing giveaways and we're doing four hours of live podcasts. So we got us, the USFL podcast. We have Tron Hawkins from This Is The USFL podcast. Uh, we have J-Dash, Jim Mernier from Controlling yeah. the Chaos and Inside the Walls with my man Zach Kyleman here. My own show here, too. Uh, and we got some others that we're going to be announcing soon as well. So stay tuned, but we hope you join us. Uh, I haven't seen anything yet. I have both the social media accounts we up. Have, we have not, oh, although you should. Shay, I, what? Shay flipping. Flippin' Patterson, Shea Patterson is the, oh boy. Now Shea that Patterson. is a pick. You son of a gun. Oh my God, you lucky. Okay. Now that, okay. I'm not even going, I I might have to pick. I, I it, it was, it, there was thoughts he was going to be in this. We hadn't heard anything. I, I was going to say know? earlier, that was the one that skipped my mind when you said, who is a long shot that you hope is in this? Shea Patterson, and boy, oh boy, deserving of a number one pick, if you ask me. Get to the USFL's page. Brad Keselowski makes the announcement wow. via video. Let's pull that but up. Shea Patterson, he, for those that, obviously those that are in this, that you know, uh, Michigan quarterback, University of Michigan quarterback, um, main time he's had, he's had in the CFL. He also, before that, was in the Spring League. He played for the Blues just this last year. Or actually in the 2020 winter season. So, oh, and look at they posted a mock up of him in the yeah. jersey. We got to get all this oh, stuff I'm showing shown. It. I'm showing it. So, actually, I'm about to, There's the I'm about to press video. play Let's on see. it right now. 
Hi, I'm Brad Keselowski, NASCAR driver and team owner. And it's my honor to represent my home state of Michigan and proudly announce with the first pick of the 2022 USFL Draft, the Michigan Panthers select quarterback Shea Patterson. Great to have Shea representing Michigan again on the football field. Go Panthers. Sign Hi, I'm Brad up. Keselowski. Sign him up. And now it's funny. Yeah. Brad Keselowski is from, he's real close to where I used to live in Michigan. He's from uh, Rochester Hills, Rochester Hills. Yeah. So. Talk about breaking out the uh, part. Talk about breaking out the partnerships. I mean, Fox, is, Fox having the connection to NASCAR, you know, they promoted this Daytona right. and sure enough, they're uh, <laughs> that's probably where they got him. It looks like, I think that's, I believe that that is the case. What's in the yeah. background. If I'm going to have to take a guess. So First picks off the board, Shea Patterson, Michigan Panther. What a heck of a pick. So, All right. Jordan All Tayamu, right. not number one. Yeah, I, I was wondering if he wouldn't. Yeah. And again, I so like F Jeff Fisher's known as a ground and pound coach. So that's kind of, I, I, that's why I was wondering if Tayamu wouldn't fit that mold there. But sure enough, Patterson goes first. I, you know, there's a lot of Q, ta QB talent then in that case that's still left. Um, glad to see him in there, you know. Definitely someone I think that people wanted to uh, get see get another chance. You know, nice to get him in. You know, I, and I think this will be as true, much like the TSL experience. This will be another true next starting position experience, piece of experience with more tape he can get. You know, I like this. I like this, this call is, here. I mean that that's First a solid pick, board, and I, I think I, I, I'm not sure if you mentioned this or not, but I, it, this feels like a, a Fisher pick, and I think they're going to work well. And I would really love seeing him. Oh. Tayamu's going Tayamu's to the bandits, baby. Going to the I, pre bandits. I predicted this in a mock draft I did with a buddy. I said that here's the deal why I like Tayamu going to Tampa. It is Tayamu is very much an, is very much an improvisational quarterback. He's one that definitely likes to get out in the out of the pocket, get a little bit more mobility. Todd Haley loves RPO. That was something he did a, really a lot with Pittsburgh. And sure enough, here we are. If you if you need a story for Jordan Tayamu, Old Miss QB. Goes the X goes to essentially the XFL and does really well. One of the best quarterbacks in there in 2020. He's had some tryouts with like the Chiefs, for example, and a few other stops along the way in the last year or so. And, and here he and is. He, did you see? We got a video from WWE superstar Big E to announce the pick. So I'm about to play that right now. Why, hello, I am Big E, and as a Tampa native, it is my distinct honor and pleasure to announce to you that with the second pick of the 2022 USFL Draft, my hometown team, the Tampa Bay Bandits, select quarterback Jordan Te'amu! Congrats to you, Jordan, and Coach Haley. Let's go, Bandits! I'm loving seeing these, these picks, at least for the top eight coming for the, the top guys here. They're, they're going big, and that's another one that, that was recorded at the Daytona 500 as well. Yeah. Corporate synergy is going on right here. That, that, it's an, again, WWE, that is a connection that Fox has. They have that contract for SmackDown that they do every week. That That's what they're pulling from. That, so I'm wondering now, you got six more QB picks. Who else is going to be dropping? I know, I know. Well, and then, I mean, so that was that was the one big name that a lot of people were looking at is Tayamu. Another, I, I think, a good fit. And so far, I mean... I'm a little jelly about the Shea Patterson thing. I'm not going to lie. I would have loved <laughs> to have him on the gamblers and I won't be able to breathe easy until I see Manziel's name come on the board. Not at number five. <laughs> right. Our, uh, our buddies over at Royal retros, by the way, they just dropped uh, one of one, one of the nice highlights from Patterson's days in Michigan, uh, taking on uh, IU down in Bloomington an hour from where I'm at actually. Um, so already getting them in the action. By the way, we got a nice promo code for them. Check them out if you want. Sign up. USFL Podcast to check out. Just had to yeah, throw 10 that 10% off you know, your while purchase. We wait this next one. They got a whole bunch of retro USFL gear. Sign you up. USFL Podcast. Star Stars are on the clock now. Stars are on the clock. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see what they do. Oh, and the, the USFL updated their banner. I see and that. And sure enough, that's where he is. I saw oh, the chat saying that. Son to of a gun. It. Jimmy Rollins is announcing Brian Scott to Philly. Oh, you have the video ready. Oh. I'm about to put that bad boy up. I'm looking at it right, right. now, but yeah. yeah. Put it up right now. We'll talk about him. Hi, this is Jimmy Rollins. Now the honor to represent the city of Philadelphia for 15 years as a member of the Phillies. So it's my honor it's to nice. announce with the third overall pick 
the Philadelphia Star selects quarterback Brian Scott. And it, now you got Brian, the, uh, and got to the, the bandits Stars. there. They posted up a Hi, highlight reel of Jordan Rollins. Te'amu getting picked up. So all the socials getting really thrown around now. Brian Scott, though, I'll tell you, man, if you're talking the 2020 TSL mm-hmm. season, he, I mean, he was a stud. Dude really stood out. Um, it's funny that one thing has been thrown around with him that is quoted. It's uh, He's quoted as the D3 version of Aaron Rodgers. Oh, I like that. That that is that is uh, so. If that's comparison, dude has intangibles. Definitely has mobility. Has a cannon for an arm. He really impressed in this in the spring league back in 2020 that winter. So, guys, trust me. Check out his highlights. I know some people are asking already in the chat, "Who's Brian Scott?" You're not going to be disappointed gonna be if you're a star. Yeah, no, he, he's a and good and especially choice. with Bart Andrus as his coach, right? Yes. I think which they were both, they worked mm-hmm. together. That was from that season. They both were on the same team. That that chemistry is back. This is an exciting so that night. Same this reaction. is so exciting. This is this is I so know. much fun. So who do we have on the board next? Generals, right? Generals are on the clock? Uh, yes, Generals will be k- kicking things off. I see someone posting that already. Oh, now I see Ben Holmes. So we're getting updates. Let's see. I haven't seen an update Oh, no, there it is. Ben Holmes to the Generals. Okay. Ben Holmes to the Generals. Nice. Sign him up. Another good pick. And, again, looking at the uh, the coach up there with Riley, I think they're going to work out. That, that That's a good call. I Ben, ben Holmes is a speedster mm-hmm. for sure. That is uh, that was what he was taking for. He was with the Sea Lions in TSL this past uh at least this past spring. He was one of the players also confirmed on our draft ticker right. too. And so he was definitely one I think people were watching to see, will he get that first round designation? We've had kind of a, so far, majority have been, of course, on, have been confirmed or were confirmed late going into mm-hmm. today. Like Scott and Ta- Te'amu were both confirmed going in today. Uh, Patterson was nowhere. So we, this is the first people have really heard of right. Shea Patterson's name getting thrown up there. So now the gamblers, Stefan, your team's Let's on the clock. Let's see what we do. Am I going to stay a gamblers fan or am it, I going to be I salty swear, for the next three hours? <laughs> I I swear if, and oh, by the way, Michael Strahan had had the announcement video for Ben oh, Holmes. Here, let's pull that Talk up. Talk about it. Let's God. pull that up real quick, yeah. actually. Let me uh... the new, keep uh, with us the in the chat. keep monitoring the this, USFL of course. Draft, the Strahan announcing it. That's nice. The New Jersey like General this. select quarterback. Ben Holmes. Good luck, young man. Can't wait to see you out there this year. And go general. Woo! So baby. I love seeing oh, yeah. yeah, the the Fox Fox using their connections to make this a fun night. I mean That's a big oh, one. Oh, for too. sure. I mean, dude, that dude is on that, like every TV show in the world beyond being a huge name in New York football. Right. I watch him on GMA three at my normal job <laughs> every day. I see this man every day. And sure enough, as we're talking, someone cracked out on Twitter saying Ben Holmes, D three, a rod. <laughs> sure enough. Like it was going to come out. People have said this mm-hmm. before guys, talented. God, this is a good pickup for you guys. If you're a stars fan in the chat, you will like this pick. Now I am waiting I'm to see, cause I saw someone updated. bring up Luis Perez. I'm furiously up. I'm why I'm going to see if Perez does show up. You know, there's some that are say that are want are saying Manzel. If I'll be happy with P- Perez, I, and honestly, I will be happy with Manzel. You watch it. As much as I just talk trash, I am gonna be flashing the money sign for all for for months until they lose every game. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Let's see what we got here. Come on, man. Well, Sumlin. One thing is for sure, he's taking his time. He's saying, "Who are the three guys left?" Someone's saying it's confirmed Shit. Manziel, but Wait. I'm not seeing anything on the the official channels just yet. Clayton Thornton. Clayton Thornton. Let's uh Wait. Warren Clayton Moon Thornton. is announcing it as well. So Warren, let Warren me Moon. pull this up and put on the the announcement from Warren Moon announcing Clayton Thornton. Really? Thorson. Thorson. I'm sorry. Clayton Thornton. The 2022 USFL inaugural draft. Wow, what an exciting day for a lot of young athletes. This is Warren Moon here, and I am happy to announce my favorite position and the first round pick for the Houston Gamblers, Clayton Thorson. Looking forward to watching you, Clayton. Houston Gamblers all the way. Let's go, Houston. So do you want my honest, honest uh, 
Yeah, I mean, it's your QB now. This is your guy. Not that thrilled. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I oh. mean, the, well, I mean, it. We'll have to see who the two guys that come out after him are. But I, mm-hmm. if, for instance, Ryan Willis comes up next, you missed out. You missed out in my opportunity. Now, Clayton Thorson's. He, he, well, Perez is still sitting exactly. there too. I like I said, he's he's waiting. But like, here's Thorson's re- resume: Northwestern product, uh, 2017 third team All Big Ten. Uh, had st- at least stints with the Philadelphia Eagles, the Cowboys, and the Giants. So a lot of NFC East team teams, but got looks, mm. you know. So has been around the block and had a really solid career at Northwestern anyway from 2013 to 2018. You know, all bowl eligible seasons for him. What? So just as uh, been in the NFL. So a guy that's coming down maybe to get a shot at a full time mm. place. Well, here's you know, the thing. That's what it I, like. I have said that jokingly because he's one of those guys that maybe doesn't have his big name recognition value. Uh, but to be realistic, I, I think any of these guys that are in the top eight are all going to play on par with each other. So I can't, I'm not disappointed mm-hmm. at the pick, but we'll see. We'll see who else is in this next two, because then I might have an opinion on who, who is the, the guy that I, that I would have wanted more so far. I am happy. Yeah. Guess what? Home team, the hub team up on the clock, the stallions mm-hmm. going to be getting that next Got pick. We'll see up. who's going to get it. up. Now this is an important <laughs> giddy pick up. Everybody. They have the, the home team advantage all year until it counts though the playoffs and the championship. So yes, they get a little bit, they get a little cozy, but I mean, I'll tell you this, if it's the Panthers in the playoffs then they have to play against them in the championship, I'll tell you, I think there's going to be more Panthers fans there for proximity or the Maulers for that instance. Right. So let's see. We have the stallions on the clock. Let's stallions. See that means got. skip Holtz's group and get that little ticket submitted pretty soon. This is, I mean, I really love the announcements. I don't expect that we'll get announcements for the whole night. Um, maybe see it for maybe the first three rounds. I did notice in the press release, they, they kind of singled out those three rounds. Uh, but right now, I mean, Warren Moon, let me, can I just pause for a second to say like that right. to me as, again, a Gamblers fan, uh, Warren Moon is just top notch, uh, great person, great personality to be talking for the league. And we got our we got our All stallions right. QB. I'm sorry, I didn't announce it. Or Giants, Alex Mago or Mago uh, Mago Mago. <laughs> I hope I said that right. <laughs> Is now your new stallions QB, Bo Jackson, wow. announcing him. Wow, let me pull that one up real quick. Let me welcome. Al- let's pause this here. Pull this up. Hello, everyone. Bo Jackson names. here. And I'm proud to announce the first round for the announcements, these are quarterback for the Birmingham Stallions, Alex Magoo. Welcome, <laughs> Alex, to the that. team. Proud to have you to represent my home state of Alabama. Looking forward to you and the Stallions run up and down the field this season. Go Stallions. Good luck and God bless. So, like you said, Bo knows, man. Bo knows. Yes. So it's Alex Magoo. Alex Magoo. At least because Bo <laughs> knows I'm going to trust his judgment on this one. Uh, Florida International. So we got kind of a uh, an outside pick here. But again, when we look back at the XFL, it was the names we didn't know that really came out and surprised us. And I've actually seen a couple of this dude's highlights, and he's pretty solid. He's pretty solid. So mm-hmm. if you are a fan of the Stallions, I, I think Holtz did well for you. It's another uh, another camp guy too. Uh, Seattle Seahawks pick 2018 that he was picked up. He's been bouncing around. Was with the Seahawks in that first season. Jags, Houston Texans for two years, and then was back in Seattle just this past year. So again, it's been kind of keeping him with the camps. This is someone that probably is looking to get an opportunity to actually get film and starting spot positioning in a professional setting. This is that's exactly it. Um, yeah, guy definitely has some solid highlights from what what I have seen. Looks to have a pretty pretty decent career from FIU, uh, but someone that at least has a bit of NFL experience, at least in that mm-hmm. sector. So someone that you might be able to talk to those scouts and say, hey, how's his how's his talent? How's he looking on these squads? You know, but he's been bouncing around well, a little it's bit. It's a similar position that PJ Walker was in when he was going into the uh, XFL from the mm-hmm. the Colts practice squad, and I mean, look how he turned out. 
So, I mean, to me, right. I feel like Magoo's the sleeper pick here so far. He has the opportunity. We'll find, we'll find out. I mean, again, I, the thing that is with this draft, um, and the last two picks really highlight this, you know, can't fully dive into everything. Like these two were not, an, these two were not really hinted at nothing. We found at least that right, was hinted right. at. So we can only go off what we've seen. You know, I will say like Thorson, like I said, you can go back in his college career and even, uh, my buddy here, Ian Park, who I've had on the, one of my other shows who plays in Japan, played for Northwestern at the time. He really likes the kid. So I'll tell you this, you know, I, I, Wikipedia people that edit Wikipedia are so fast. This dude, they already have his Wikipedia updated. Not only that he's on the team, but in the colors and everything on the wow. right hand side. I mean, sign sign up those loyal fans. But we have we have the Maulers on the clock now. Kirby Maulers Wilson on the making clock. his pick. Refreshing furiously, trying to see who we got up next. Uh, but let's let's take a look. How's the chat doing? Yep, we we actually oh. have one. And this is one that it he was in New York. Um had a kind of an intriguing background or past there. Kyle mm-hmm, Loletta. Yes. So Loletta actually had an ugly ish end. If I remember right to his tenure with the giants, um, but came out of ri- came out of, uh, Oh, I, I was spy- spiders were that one. I'm going to have to get, get mm. back on here with it. Um, but he was kind of, uh, he was touted as at least a somewhat of a gr- kind of a, behind the scenes, like product mm-hmm. a little bit, you get a little mock up there. You can see on, on the screen of uh Loletta there, but drafted by the giants out of rich, out of Richmond, the Richmond spiders, one of my favorite, uh, <laughs> one of my favorite mascots, by the way, in all of college football. Um, but yeah, bounced from New York, Philadelphia, Atlanta was with the Browns this past year and also jumped between the Jaguars and the Browns again, just kind of between camps and between organizations. Did you see who announced this pick? I did not yet. I Terry missed that. Terry Flippin Bradshaw. Terry Seriously? Flippin Jesus. Bradshaw. All right, I'm going to put this one on real quick. Hello, everyone. Gathered in Birmingham, Alabama tonight for the 2022 USFL draft. And as you know, I know a little bit about the draft as I was drafted number one in 1970 by the Pittsburgh Steelers. So tonight's a great night for me. And I guess it's a great night for Coach Wilson. Because with the seventh pick in tonight's 22-2022 USFL draft, the Pittsburgh Maulers select quarterback oh Kyle Lalata. La La Letta. Kyle Lalata. All right. Hope I got that right. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Gathered in Birmingham, Alabama tonight for the. Tw- did you Did you watch that video? Did you get to the end of that? I I I've. Uh... I watched a little uh, bit. The or ending is spectacular. It, in, in, in Terry Bradshaw fashion, he uh, he struggles to get the name out, but I wouldn't I, I, I wouldn't want anything else. I wouldn't want anything other. Uh, but I want Terry's money in the USFL this season. I want somebody's money. So I want right. one of those uh, pick six, super six, super six. That's what they call it. But Laletta, so, we're, so far we got some strong picks. I think we probably started out pretty strong. Uh, with some name recognition, but we're, we're getting to some of those smaller picks, uh, maybe not as big of a name, but like you mentioned that NFL, that NFL experience is going to come in handy. The thing with the letter that is unfortunate, and I think people know in the chat is, you know, out of college, he was a product, you know, was re- had a really decent career at Richmond. We got, um, his sorry, thing, we have the, and, and yeah, I was going to say, we got another one. And did you it, see who announced this one? Kyle, so it's Kyle Slaughter. Being announced yep. by Drew Brees, Drew Flipper <laughs> of course. Brees. So I got to play that real quick. Do you have? The, let me know when you have the link ready, and I'll I'll, I'll go. Oh, uh, I'm good. good. I'm all I'm ready. Hey, everybody, yeah. Drew Brees here. I'm excited to announce the eighth pick of the New Orleans Breakers quarterback Kyle Slaughter. Congratulations, Kyle. I'm excited to see you represent New Orleans. Go Breakers. Hey, everybody. So before we get to the pick, I mean, we're we're end, we're at the end of the first round. And I mean, the, the celebrity announcers that they've gotten so far, I would say they knocked it out of the park. I mean, just from the name recognition on those guys alone, you know, these are going to get shared a, a bazillion times. Speaking of which, everybody that's watching us, make sure you're supporting the USFL tonight. Go and like and retweet and share these all over. Let's show the internet that the USFL fans mean business. But Kyle Sloter, break it down. Mm-hmm. What are you thinking? How are you feeling for these breakers here? 
Well, I, I can tell that the chat for sure, it seems like at least is uh, having a reaction that they like. And I, I, I know that he had been talked of as possibly an option that would be here. Um, I'm digging it. <laughs> you know, I, I, I will say it's uh, I have a better reaction, like compared to the letter last round, I will, I have a better reaction is what I will put it. Like, like I said, the letter really bugged me. Or like I said, some of his back background, I hope that that's moved on from his life, but uh, you know, Sloter, I will say solid choice. Still, I was really, some of them that were listed, I was like, man, Perez didn't go first round. That's surprising. That Cause that's the end of the, that's, that's the, the end. end. So, so breakers get up Sloter. So <laughs> There's more times for the QBs, but Perez is one. I'm like, he's got enough alt experience. He did well last year. He took year. him to the Mega Bowl. Kind of shocked. He took the Jousters right. to the Mega Bowl. So I mean, real quick. So we're going. We're going to uh, round two, defensive end edge. Uh, we got the Breakers starting things off. Panthers ending it off. First round. Who won it? Who do you think won the first round? I mean, with the picks that we have available. So actually, I'll run it down real quick. Panthers first pick: Shea Patterson, Bandits. Jordan Te'amu, Philadelphia Stars, Brian mm-hmm. Scott, New Jersey Generals, Ben Holmes, Gamblers, Clayton Thorson, Stallions, Alex Magoo, Maulers, Kyle Laletta, and the Breakers, as we just mentioned, Kyle Sulter. I mean, I, it's hard for me not to say Te'amu here. I, I just, I love the mm-hmm. pairing is why, why I have to put it down. I like Todd Haley's offense, and we're talking RPO heavy, with you know a lot of pass he- with harp rpo heavy with some di- with at least either short passing to intermediate passing you're going to see ones that he's going to draft guys that i'm assuming are best with yak yardage i like tom very improvisational guy for this offense good choice it to me fits well i like him the best out of all these um you know again i Thor- i'm going to look in a few of them here just to get a kind of a recap here thorsten i think out of the ones that I did, we weren't 100 percent on, I think he sticks mm-hmm. out to me the most. Um, like I said, really good career with Northwestern, and someone that you know I think does have the intangibles to make an impact right out of the gate. So I'm looking to see what he's got. You know, Pat, and, and in terms of our team for the Panthers, Shea Patterson. Um, hey, not bad. I mean, I will say for Patterson, another shot oh, for you sure. Know, some another at least another shot. I I don't know if this will be a better shot. He was. He was okay in the 2020 mm. version of the TSL. I can't say he was like slinging the rock like Brian Scott. Like Brian Scott's another one. That's Actually, would be that would be another one if it's not Tamu. Brian Scott, like I said, people in here are saying who he is. Trust me, look you, the guy's highlights up from the, just the TSL. If you're a You'll Stars love fan, him. trust it. You are gonna love that pick in a, a couple weeks after after April sixteenth. April sixteenth. Boy, we're not even an hour in, and I can't even talk yet. <laughs> well, dude. What well, breakers get the next I pick know, back again? Back. We're now in defensive ends, so now we're talking edge rushers, people. So let's see. Which this one's kind of wide open, wide open here. We had some people confirm, but you know now is where we're starting to get into. You know, I would we'll get we'll get some guys that will list off, but it's definitely gonna be a lot more even so than the QBs people that we might not have had listed off in the beginning. That's the beauty of this with like the, the shock factor. As much as it sucks for. Right, mock drafts right. and such, but well, that's what this we're is getting. where we really start building the teams. I mean, a lot of people say, okay, the quarterback is the star of the team. And yes, that's true. But I mean, we've seen time and time again, and if you've been a sports fan for a long time, you know, other than a few select players, you need a team to win. You need a team to win. Yeah. I mean, even with LeBron James, he doesn't win every, every game or every championship. And, I mean, he does a really good job building those super teams around him. Uh, so we're really about to get into the nitty-gritty here. And that's where I think the fun is. And I really love the idea of ending it off with quarterbacks. Now, Tayamu's got to go. Or not Tayamu, I'm sorry. Luis Perez, if he truly is in this draft pool, he's got to come into this next round, which still gives me hope that he's going to land on my gamblers. Land on my gamblers. Right, because we'll blend with the quarterbacks. So, I mean, the hope is, you know, that I hope that's the case. I have a I have a friend, I have a good friend of mine, mine that I actually played high school ball with that I believe is in this draft too. He at least was in the pool. Didn't he didn't say anything if he had gotten the contract now, but if Aaron Ellis is in there, I I hope he gets his shot. Very much was a I mean, I know I'm kind of a homer here, but like dude was great and has been great in European leagues. Love to see him come back here and possibly get a shot in a bigger time league. So 
We'll see what we Absolutely. got here. And I mean, when you look at down to it, I think this would be a great fit for him. It would, it would help him develop. It'll help the coaches build up different types of players that have different types of experiences. Um, so, yeah. I, and I mean, beyond the fact that he's a friend of the show and a friend of yours and somebody that, you know, personally sign him up. I mean, he did well in the ELF last year. Right. So, yeah. So we still have, oh, okay. Oh, no, it's not in. It's not in. Benjamin Albright, though, is tweeting about the USFL. He tweeted about the uh, the, the eighth draft pick, and the. It, it just got me excited. I thought, oh, there's a new pick. But no, <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Yeah, breakers would be the next one on the clock, which you would think that we should see that pick drop any second now. Now, again, the quarterbacks were kind of already right, predetermined. Right. So, I mean, it's a, probably a little, you're probably going to see him get a little sped up-ish mm-hmm. at this point. Or not as sped up, sorry. Slow down. That would make no sense. That yeah. Make no sense. You'll see it slow down a little. But nonetheless, you will get these picks in here. Soon it's coming. Later. It will be here. So they have three minutes per pick. So that's, I mean, at most, we only have maybe about a minute left here. Uh, but I'm checking through just to make sure that we didn't miss anything here. While, while we're checking through, actually, I've been seeing some people mention classic USFL games. I know this is... A little different, but for a chat question here, tell me if you guys, and especially if you guys are fans of the old league, what's a game you remember or what's a, your favorite memory of the USFL from its 80s iteration? Again, these two are separate. I understand that, but I still, I like referencing the past of where this league's naming has come from. So if you guys have any great memories, feel free. I'd love to read these off in the chat. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we love the old league. We love the new league. Clearly, we love the new league because we wouldn't be doing this podcast if uh, otherwise. But yeah, I think there's some there's value in recognizing the goods from the original league because, truth be told, when it comes to spring leagues, I mean, there was one that felt like it had the shot, and it was the USFL. And yeah, there were some circumstances on everything that happened back then, but those don't exist now. And quite honestly. If I were to give it, uh, you know, comparisons, they probably have a stronger infrastructure now, even though they're taking a li- little bit different tactic and, and strategy into the league, right? First and foremost, they're not really trying to be a competitor to the NFL, uh, more so just compliment. Yeah, it, right. <laughs> not, a, not exactly going gung-ho right. At, right at them this iteration at all. Um, you know, stay out of the – and that's something that I think, you know, you're talking about the competition on the other side with the XFL mm-hmm. – you know, similar deal. They, I mean, that's what they learned in 2.0. You, you know, they, I mean, Vince McMahon, right. that is said, Hey, I got to step aside. Right, you right, know? Right. We got to market it as ourselves. Actually just found a nice post. Um, it looks like these guys are getting photo ops with their jerseys. Very nice. They are the quarterbacks were getting handed out some jerseys here. So Patterson's actually, he's in front of one of those boards over there at the, uh, protect at protective stadium in that indoor complex. He's holding it up. He's got the hat. Again, these guys were already in town. They flew them down to Birmingham to make this a big deal. But yeah, it looks like all of them are getting photo this is ops. What I like to see. Is this on the uh, team social media pages? Uh, the one that is is uh, it's it's going to be look up uh, R J Young. R J Young. Let's pull up at R J Young. It'll have you'll uh, see a photo of Shea Patterson in his new getting, gear. Uh, getting a shout out, R J Young. Let's uh, let's take a look. Oh, there it is. Let's pull it up here on the screen. So sign him up. Go go retweet this guy, R J Young. You did well. Getting us a photo. Keep mm-hmm. these photos coming, young man. Because <laughs> R J Young. <laughs> see, sorry guys. I know there's a lot of people here. You're gonna have to deal with my bad jokes. There's many more hours left, and the the jokes only get worse from here. <laughs> Well, from look looks of it too, they might. I'm I'm not saying that it's happened yet, but I mean, as we're updating here, there might be the. I am getting the fear that they are going to do this by position. Right? Yeah. By like like round. they'll go through the right. whole thing. That is it. I'm starting to get that well, it gives vibe. Gives time to talk. I mean, we're hit. It's four minutes. It's been four yeah. minutes now. So the round is already over. We should already have seen the. So here's what I do. I mean, hey, you point. know what? If the XF. Uh, oh my God! Shame on me! What is wrong with me today? If the USFL wants to make us wait, we're going to. Oh, oh, looks like we got our next one coming. <laughs> Let's see. Who do we got? Dave Davin Bellum. Bell- Let me pull it. Bellarney. Sorry. The, the Bellamy. screen is uh, Dave and Bellamy. Is Bellamy. My screen's making it look like an R for some reason. Right. My, my eyesight. Defense, I swear to God. First defensive player in the draft goes to the breakers. Dave and Bellamy. Let's do some recon here. And again, this is where it would have been nice. But I, I, the name sounds familiar. 
Oh, he played at Georgia and with the Texans. That's why he he signed with the Texans undrafted in 2018. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Again, we're seeing, we're seeing some good NFL experience here. So let's take a look. So he's spent some time with the Texans, Bengals, Texans again, Titans, 49ers and Chargers all in the span since 2018. Right. He's been bouncing around for the most part the last few years to reserve either have reserve contracts or practice squad contracts. Um, you know, either that or, uh, you know, it's basically, or just having a uh, quick stops in, if right. you will, to places. Again, that's what Not- these leagues are made for though. And uh, even just having like, uh, and I'll probably mention this a million times, but looking at the PJ Walker pick with the XFL and the, in the, in the, um, the roughnecks, I mean, that, that little bit of NFL experience, just even practice squad, I think is what put him over the top. Even with some of the guys that were in the NFL as well, he was there more recently. Yeah. And I, I think this, this is a solid pick. So again, you know, the defensively looking pretty good so far, but we still have seven more teams to go. So we don't even know. The next pick might be like the right. blockbuster. And we're going to say, oh my God, why, did, why would you let this guy through the cracks? Yeah, I'd say, say signed signed to the Texans to start off, but was with uh, was with the uh, Georgia Bulldogs, of course, in the in the earlier time, in, the, in at least their earlier kind of rise up to their dominance right now under Kirby Smart. So, you know, from that program that you know at least has such a defensive has such defensive prowess to it. But uh, these scout these team players were scouted out in advance as well. So I mean. That's one thing with the USFL. One thing we have to remember is that they didn't fully do combines or anything. This is just a player group that was brought in. You signed in, they scouted you out. And if you signed up and they liked who you are, they gave you a contract. That's the, that's the main way they got Mm. you in here. You know, that's something you got to remember. We didn't get to see camp footage or anything. So, you know, a lot of reliance on like Jim Pop and crew who are doing a lot of the scouting and player management for the league. Oh, for sure. And I mean, the, you know, they've been bouncing around to like different events, I'm sure, like scouting events. There's always been rumors that, you know, the, the there was USFL scouts at like the hub football camps and things of that nature. There was definitely scouts at some of the uh, bowl games earlier this year, the all-star, like the all-star bowl games, whatever, whatever you want to refer to them as. But I mean, yeah, other than that, that was way before the coaches came around. So we're relying yeah. on data statistics and as much footage that they can look up themselves and cram in before this draft date. And again, yeah, we have the coaches, but there, there is, I'm sure, some staffs that are going to be uh, helpful along the way here. We don't know all the coaching staffs, but it, it sounds like some of them are being built out, or at least we know some are being built out. Jeff Fisher kind of talked about it earlier on uh, OutKick that he's working through getting his defensive coaches in place and so it's all in the works. It's all in the works. Uh, so we have the Maulers up next, right? Yep. Yep. We're back oh, into the snake. Go. Before we say, before we start getting Carlo weird. Kemp, Carlo Kemp, Carlo Kemp. Oh, up. wait, Carlo University Kemp. of Michigan, another Michigan guy. Um, but not this time, not to uh, this time, not to the Panthers. But again, I can't be mad at that. Go blue. I am a Michigan fan, Wolverine fan. So, mm-hmm. I'm not mad at this pick. I would have liked him to see him on the gamblers though, which I mean, we got a couple more picks, two more picks. We got the stallions up on the clock right now, but this pick came in a little bit faster. This one did come in a little bit faster than the other one. Uh, Keep in mind too. I mean, kudos to the social media teams putting these together on the fly. I assume there's maybe like a minute delay between the pick and the post coming out, but I mean, they got to drop the picture in. They got to change the name. They got to change the text and save it and upload it. Kudos to that team. Kudos to that team. Darn right. <laughs> yeah, I, it, darn right for sure. Uh, yeah, Carlo Kemp, though, Michigan product, of course. Uh, was that, He's very, re, I was going to say very recently, actually. Uh, he was undrafted going over to Green Bay, as as I'm looking here. Uh, that had a pack central did a fan nation did a nice write up. It looks like on, on him as well uh, with Rashawn Gary, him being those two being teammates going to uh, separate things. Oh, looks like we had a, somebody I have to 
Park. Oh, no. Oh, no, not. I'm, I can't even say it out loud as a joke, but don't post those links in here. How dare you? I was to say, I'll drop that stuff out. I am not afraid to bring in we my band tool. tools we that. We're a two-man team. We don't need no mods. We're watching. You can't get away with nothing here. <laughs> I will say this, though, real quick while we're waiting for the next pick. We're, let's just give this a refresh here. We're less than 150 subscribers away from 2,000. So, again, if we hit Holy that 2,000 tonight, beyond a free jersey, you could win a hat and a shirt along with it. So you could get the whole shebang. So one lucky subscriber. We're, we're going to announce it at the end. Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see when we'll announce it. We'll see. I'm feeling a little spicy. but M Much like uh, the Asia song, only time will tell. <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> Oh boy, this is a fun flipping night. So I gotta know. So while we're waiting for everybody, chat. How does it? Oh, we actually got it. We had another one that's announced, and this one was on right. the list that was confirmed. Uh, Aaron, I'm gonna. If I butcher it, I'm sorry. Aaron, Aaron Adeo, Adeo. I knew it was. I was gonna say. I was gonna say. I thought it was Adeo. So Aaron Adeo, Southeast Missouri State. So this that's your first edge and defensive end pick for the stallions fans in the chat and i mean looking at the stallions qb so alex magoo maybe don't know too much about him this guy i think we've seen a couple times around uh and i'm trying to spot my finger on where exactly it would have been but i know the name i know the name more than just adding it to the draft tracker uh so let's see let's see what we got so oh that's what it was the birmingham iron Birmingham Iron. Yes, exactly. He also is an arena product. That is his first gig. Actually, that's what's that's what's really nice. Actually, undrafted, coming out of Southeast Missouri State, went to the Salina Liberty. Birmingham Iron is where he was last in. So, hey, somebody touching right back into the fray into the local market. That's got to be pretty cool. Uh, and then had from that opportunity, had some opportunities with the Baltimore Ravens, Jets, and was with the Green Bay Packers for a spell this year. I mean, are. I love it back in the I same love, area. Yeah. I love that local. Well, I mean, and maybe not a local pick, but that double experience. Hey, we played for Birmingham before come back, come back to Birmingham again. Cause that's where that well, And correct me if I'm wrong. Is that that's where Luis Perez, he was with. Yes. Perez was with the iron. That would so be a great pick that, for that, that second round. Maybe we'll see, or the second round of quarterbacks rather than not the, the 12th round uh, rather. <laughs> So what's cool is this is actually something that's a fact that relates back personally here. Um, for those who don't know, I'm a Ball State alum, uh, chirp, chirp, <laughs> out there in the crowd. Um, Adeo actually played basketball for Ball State um, for a spell when I was there, which I don't fully I've – been, I've been to my share of games, but I would say there's – I mean, there's re, it seems like there was a reason they switched over. Um, he actually would go in his fifth year of eligibility. That's how he got into mm -hmm. football. So – this is a guy that basically did a one shot. I'm going to try and see what I can do. And his talents have kind of excelled kind of how Perez. It's funny. Perez, we talk about Luis Perez, how he, you know, his story is, is he kind of learned football on the internet, just basically yeah. by the internet. Yeah. So, you know, you got a day, you got a day here. Who's morphing his game goes from basically small Selena Liberty from the CIF, by the way, solid team out in the CIF too, because champions in football. And is now making a name for himself. So nice to get him in here. He'll get some more tape and opportunity to extend his career. 28. So, you know, still young in retrospect, still technically in his prime. The Stallions get their first edge rusher, their main guy. They and get we got a new pick. We got the gambler's pick here. Chris Odom. Pretty big oh. name. Okay. For the CFL fans, he played for the Calgary Stampeders. He's had a few different stints across the, the NFL with the Falcons, Packers, Salt Lake Stallions of the AAF. So we're seeing some of that mm -hmm. spring ball come in and the, and the, uh, the commanders or Redskins or football team, whatever you want to refer to them as now, interestingly enough, Wikipedia still has them listed as an active member of the Stampeders. Now, I don't know. I don't know when the, what the roster actually looks like, but they do already have this updated for uh, everything else. So that the interesting pick. Interesting pick. I this pick I I like again. I like this. Anytime we can get the the vast array of experience, right? Whether it's even only practice squad in the NFL, I think that's very valuable for these spring leagues. But then also having that spring league, spring league experience with the AAF, bringing that in, mm -hmm. and then even just on top of that, because I think the XFL guys uh, succeeded 
uh, very well when they came from the CFL. So, I mean, he's going to be able to counterbalance some of that faster play just from coming from a place right. like the CFL where, I mean, that's there, boom, 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 let's get rid of this bad boy. He's going to be able to stop well, some of that. I think that the chat might have just dropped another one. Let's see. I'm seeing, yes, oh. we are. Bryson wow. Young. Wow, all right. Going to the Generals. Another solid pick. So far, and again, we're right. early in the draft. I think it's expected that we see some of these, uh, maybe not bigger names, but solid picks. Boom, solid pick, man. And again, Mike Riley, long history with coaching spring football. Uh, and and uh, I believe he was an executive in one of these spring football leagues as well. I can't recall. Good pick, knows his stuff. Uh, played in Oregon uh, for the Ducks there. Yep, only re only recently out too. It was his senior year was twenty nineteen. Uh, had his senior year also twelve starts. He had to uh, kind of a you know I would say a, I'll say average, but you know somebody that I think has shown some upside and at least has gotten some looks. I know the chat was really happy for Young here, as we could see. So a lot of people definitely Good. were looking for him. And I think he was he was one that was talked about a bit going into this draft as we want as someone that you'll get mm -hmm. picked up. Um, but yeah, definitely got a Pac-12 product coming in for the USFL. You know, very much a variety of schools. Yeah, that's that's mm -hmm. the thing that's been right. stressed with a lot of this is it's about looking for diamonds in the rough. But also they've been getting a mix of people that are quality talents from, or at least that came from quality schools. I can't say they're all, well, that's, as we've said, I can't say they're all quality. Well, no, but, no, you know. I know what you're saying. Yeah, it, it, just because you don't come from a big school doesn't mean that you're not a quality player. And, and But we are seeing Correct. a good mixture of small to medium schools and larger schools. I mean, quite honestly, Michigan, that, That's exactly what I'm trying to say. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm with you here. I'm with you, I'm with you here. I'm, I'm signed up. Uh, so this, I mean, so far, and I mean, we still have three picks in this round, the 10 rounds left, the gauntlet. The gauntlet. I will gauntlet. say this. After this round, I'm probably going to take a quick five-minute break. But, Zach, you stick around, and then we'll trade oh, off. How about that? You're leaving You're leaving me for the chat to yeah. feast on? They're probably looking their chops like, Get oh, signed boy. up. We're going <laughs> to have such hey, a blast. All blend. the haters. Oh, oh hey, Cesar, yeah. shame on I see you. you. I see you. Oh, and I put him in a timeout, though. That was incorrect. <laughs> <laughs> He used to get out of here. Yeah, I put him in time. I'm going to have to redo that here. Well, we'll get you when you're back, buddy. Oh, we got another one. I got another. I, hey, I picked him, too. I got him. I was going to say, got him this time. All right, so. Got to monitor both things here. Oh, and we got, we have to try this our one? next one. <laughs> yes, you are very welcome, too. Uh, this is this is one so I feel actually, bad. How about I do the first name, you do the last name. But I will say the first name fits for the team here. Perfect. We have Freedom Akam Moladan. I think I did pretty well with that. I don't know. I let me know in the that's chat. That's as best as I could do too. Let me know in the chat. <laughs> if you know, if you guys watched our Freedom. coverage of the XFL draft in 2019, you're probably well aware that I'm horrible with names. So I apologize. <laughs> un, so un, he was un, in terms of NFL undrafted to the Giants. Uh, he was back in 2019. That is, he's bounced around from the Giants, Bengals, Titans, and the Jets. Uh, Nebraska Cornhusker. I did see somebody comment on the freedom aspect of that, which I find hilarious when you have uh, a city of brotherly love <laughs> being the choice. Right. Being the choice, uh, you know. But um, yes, uh, so you got a Big Ten product coming in, is what you got here. Undrafted, another guy looking to looking for sure to prove himself. Hasn't been someone that is. Had too much on-field experience post-college, but comes from a top-tier sure. school. Somebody that you can have name recognition. Somebody that, I mean, hey, the first name of freedom, you can, you and can have. Like, like we said, with fun. Philadelphia, I mean, name value alone. Sign that pick up. Let the freedom bell ring. <laughs> I know. <laughs> let, let, let freedom exactly. ring. I swear. So who do we got on the board next? So we have the bandits and then the Panthers coming up and that's round. Yes, out, indeedy. Uh, round two. And then we're moving over to what here? Then we're going offensive tackle for the next. Just, well, well, we still we're So we're going to get a few after the next. Two. Remember, we're going to have a few rounds of edge rusher. So we're going to get plenty of edge rusher picks here is what's going to happen. But we are going, we'll get, Round five will be when you get your offensive tackles. That's what will happen. Is it round right five now, or is it round three? 
No, well, it's round three, but I'm I saying that we have three and four I, yeah, yeah, that yeah, are gotcha, gotcha. edge rush choices. See, That's what bad. I'm telling you. My bad. Ignore me. That's what I was trying to say. <laughs> We're having fun tonight, I swear. guys. And I'm not even drinking. I don't even need to have a beer to have fun tonight. <laughs> Good news. We hit 2,000. So stick oh with us. Oh, my God. And one what? of you lucky winners, you're going to win a, a jersey, a hat, and a shirt. We're going to announce it in a little bit. We're over 2K. Sign you guys up. Are Give you guys, yourself you a round of applause and a pat on the back. Oh, my goodness. We were at 500 <laughs> yesterday, mind you. What? Sign everyone up. I, my, my guys here. What? A, I mean, what a heck of a night. Oh, wow. And with that news, we have a new pick for the Bandits. Do, 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 Mechie, do, Mechie do, do, Brown. Do, do, do. M-E-K-H-I. So I apologize. I'm sure that's not how you pronounce it. M E K H I Mac Mackie Brown, eh? Let's see what we can. So he's from Alabama, playing for the Bandits. Let's see what recon we can get on him here. Not on Wiki, so he's one of those smaller, smaller school guys. Probably okay. So Tennessee State. Let's take a look here. Yeah, so it looks like Brown was originally with Alabama and then did then made the transfer to Tennessee State before that before then of course going to his next right, level. Right, right. So a bit of, a little bit of movement there. Some so you're obviously seeing they're advertising the you know, as big a school as they can get is what they're doing oh, for sure. these advertisements. But, you know, at least hey, talent level is there. Um looks like somebody that was looking for a different opportunity at the time and i mean speaking of opportunities this is what it's all about here now i'm curious well we got a couple minutes for the the last draft of the second round chat how is everybody how, how's everybody in the chat feeling about the draft is your team doing well is your team doing bad what team do you think is performing the best let us know we want to know let us know in the chat let us know now in the comments and i mean if you haven't liked the video already make sure you do that as well it really really flipping helps i uh, i see aaron ellis has landed in the chat so uh hi aaron um, I should say, I wish you well. I hope you do get picked up in this second round of QBs by the end of the night. You know, we, I know darn well how much talent you have. So I'm just saying, wishing the I'll best for you, you, man. take you on the gamblers. You, you can't you go, go to Zach's team. That's unfair. You can't be on the Panthers. <laughs> You're going to go to Houston. I, would, I wouldn't mind. Hey, pair him up with Shea Patterson in Michigan. Why not? <laughs> I mean... Shea Patterson's good, good pick, but let's see. Let's see who we got here. So we're one pick left in the second round. We're just waiting on the Panthers. It's a exciting first two rounds. I mean, I'm, I'm a little, I won't, I won't lie. I'm a little surprised by some of the picks in the first round as far as some of the names, just knowing again, Luis Perez is out there. Uh, but overall, mm -hmm. I think um, everything's made sense. There hasn't been a pick that I looked at that says, well, that doesn't fit the coach. That doesn't fit their normal go-to. Everything, I I mean, feels re really on pace. I think maybe once we get into, well, especially with the backup QBs, I think we might start seeing some experimenting, especially within the receivers. Uh, but, you know, keep in mind, these are small rosters, so every pick counts. That's true. Every pick 30, counts. Thir we have 38 that are going to be active and then seven that will be practice. Total of 45 guys. It's going to be definitely small rosters, especially you compare it. I mean, the XFL had bigger rosters too, guys. That's that's someone people have been pointing out. I was like, oh, my God, they had 40-plus on the least active for there. We have only 35. I'm seeing, oh, and a, uh, as we're waiting for this next Panthers pick, I'm seeing a, a good old Edward Hartman. Sign him up. Getting a photo with Shea Patterson let's, uh, here. Let's pull that one up here. Let's just pull up our good friend Edward Hartman's. Oh. An even better one. I'm gonna have to look up uh, Jennifer McGraw. All the QBs with oh, the jerseys. Oh, very, very really good. Let's uh, well, let's first pull up our good friend Edward Hartman. If you're watching, hello, thank you. We so you you do really would like to meet you one day. Uh, what was the other? Uh... Jennifer McGraw. Oh, oh, and actually, we have the Panthers All right, pick. Let's take a look. Adewale Adeo or Ad Adoye. Ottawale Adoye. Adoye. That's Utah State. We'll start with that. <laughs> <laughs> Which okay, so this makes a lot more sense. Um 
I hate to say it, but they messed the graphics up earlier because they had a Doye earlier, the other the other mm-hmm. one, the other Doye, and they had the Utah State graphic, and I went, "What's going on there?" <laughs> because that's not at all where the school is. So sure enough, now they have just the helmet, and so yeah, that was a bit of a rush of a gra- of a graphic right. error. It's well, okay. We they're, Wait, they're doing we, this on the fly. I mean, kudos to these guys. Think about getting a pick, having to rush to your computer. I mean, they already have the pictures ready, at least the ones available, I'm sure, and the stats and things like that. But, I mean, sure, they have a template, but they still got to drop the name in, drop the name on it. There's so many opportunities for error here. So kudos to the – I mean, can we all, again, just take give a round of applause to the social media team at the USFL? Oh, yeah. Kicking it into gear. And, again, like we mentioned earlier – Let's show them that the USFL fans mean business, just like I'm doing to this one. Make sure you're liking and sharing all of these posts. We need people to know. You see what's trending? 2022 USFL draft. Let's get this bad boy to, like, number one. I know. I'm stoked. For those that were were curious about Doye, so, again, if you follow the Spring League, so a lot of players here are Spring League-esque. Doye was one of them. He's actually on the championship lineman squad. So, got some... uh, I've got some talent that he was looking, looking at, um, was on that squad there. that was led by Hal mummy and his crew. So here's the real situation, Zach. I'm going to go run, use the restroom real quick. I got you set up on the big cam. That's sign you eyes up chat. Be nice to him because I will be watching. I will be watching. Oh, no way. (laughs) Oh yeah. You'll be watching, but you know, I just, I'm going to get lucky. I I see chase Demore dropping into this chat. Shout out to him, former lineman himself. Nice to see you in here. Thank you for tuning in. Getting some players. I've been really, I've been really nice to see some players in this chat. This has been great. This has been some good stuff. So, by the way, in the chat, drop what you think of the of this so far. We are again going into now round three, continuing our picks here. Edge rush and defensive end is what we're looking at at this time. I'll keep you guys. I'll keep, of course, posted on this. Yeah, thank. I'm looking at the chat again. Thanks, Jim. Boo this man, really. It's my co-host. Just being funny. Just being funny is all I can tell you. <laughs> also, something I want to see. How many? Uh, how many of you in this chat are going to be in Birmingham, April sixteenth? Remember, uh, we're going to be here doing Spring Stock live broadcast from Protective Stadium, April sixteenth for that General Stallions game. So we will be bringing that down. We're going to have special guests. We're going to have, of course, food and drink, BYOB for your stuff. But still, we'll be having a good time. We'll also be doing some prize giveaways. We're getting things lined up. And we're also going to be, if we this goes well enough, we're planning on also being there for the July 3rd championship in Canton for summer stock. Yeah, we're staying with a lot of the Woodstock theming. I, I, I get it. But it was just something. We wanted to do a party of, like, football Love for the game, the love of football. I know I'm bringing that XFL phrase, but it's the truth. It's the very, very truth. So now, here's the deal. Panthers are going to be on the clock once again. We're waiting on that pick right now, or at least I'm currently scanning for it and also having you folks, if you beat me to it, beat me to it. So we'll be seeing what that comes up here now. I will say at the moment, if I'm thinking about the last two rounds and the choice, actually, never mind. We got our next pick here for the Panthers. Kavon Walker from Maryland being picked up. As you can see in the picture here, I can't bring it up right now because the refs got those controls, but dude was on camps for the Chicago Bears. So that's a one that touches right in my wheelhouse. So we got Kavon Walker there signing you up. Getting some pieces in order. And rolling on down the line. And the Bandits, as yes, I did see someone also point out Michael Scott, Oklahoma State, getting picked up too. All these different streams, you got to keep up with it. So, got Walker coming there from Maryland. We're getting, getting some more guys from these top Power 5 schools. They're getting their chances. Bandits getting some more, getting some more power in there. Scott going to probably be on the opposite side. 
things are looking good. Thanks again, by the way, for those tuning into this. Like it's this has been uh <laughs> this stream is insane. I, I will say I I have never been on a stream this big. I am thrilled to have you folks on here with us. And I owe you guys a lot as I am now gonna boot another person. Jesus Christ, get away from me with these spam chats, I swear. I'm not here for it. Neither are you. <laughs> I see something. AJ Green needs to be drafted. <laughs> oh, that's oh, that's funny. <laughs> nah. I think I'm good. <laughs> oh man, that's too funny. I am back. You are back, and we do have now all the way up to the general. Journal's here with picks, kind of catching up. The stream, it's like speeding up with a pick, picks here, trying to keep up. Um, but Devon, we had uh, Devon Walker, Michael Scott. Devon Walker going to the Panthers. Michael Scott going to the Bandits. All right. I just got the one where it is Colin Hill from Texas Tech. He's going to the Generals. And, of course, I'm trying to get back into got Gus Cumberland grabbing for the Stars. That There we go. I knew I... I was like, why am I not getting the stars one? The <laughs> so the bandits got Michael Scott. Sorry, I'm just updating my draft tracker. I didn't think they would come so fast and ferocious here. Yeah, they kind of spit them out, spit them out here quick. So bandits got Michael, Michael Scott, Kevon Walker, who was with the Guardians in 2020. He was picked up by the Panthers as well. So that was just before that. Then of course we have for the gen for you have Gus Cumberland for the stars and then Colin Hill or Colin, Colin. I don't know why I kept saying Colin. Colin Hill going to the generals. Jesus Christ. People are people are like, uh, please stop saying Colin. Right, 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 right. Or Colin, you're disturbing me. I have this volume on in my in my <laughs> living room. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I also see people with the Michael Scott being picked up like, like cue the Michael Scott. <laughs> gyps. Right. Here right, we go. Right. Hell yeah. I mean, sign up meme status is never a bad thing. No, <laughs> not at all. So the Maulers, did they put out their pick? I don't see the Maulers pick on, on their page for round three. Well, we haven't gotten the Maulers yet on round three. Now it should be our next pick up should be you guys for the game. Gambers, I mean, oh, that's what boy. we're doing now. I, uh, maybe my draft tracker's all wonky here. That's not a good sign. Well, let's fix that on the fly while we're at it. <laughs> I was gonna say, I was gonna say, you're say Mowers ain't up next unless they sped run past us. Yeah, well, we'll fix that on and the even fly. the chat. <laughs> Which actually, here's your gambler. Your gambler's picking up Ahmad Gooden right. from Samford University. Not gonna be mad at that. Looks as his uh, cue card, he has had some experience in the NFL with the Broncos. Just getting the rest of his profile here while we're at it. Gooden was, uh, from the looks of it, undrafted out of Samford in 2019. Played on the Broncos ro roster for a spell. Has had stops overs with the Jets and the Buffalo Bills. And sure enough, he is also a TSL alum as well. He was with the Conquerors just this past past spring and summer. So another guy that's in their wheelhouse. It, it, it was funny talking with some people, you know, and I, I'm only going to bring this up once because I don't want to stick on this mm. too long because we've had these conversations about, you know, the TSL's relation to the USFL of now and how it kind of spurred that. Like, look, I'm going to say it once and only once. The players weren't the problem in that league. That's mm. it. The talent was good in that league. I'm going to, I'll leave it here. I don't, I mean, you can debate it if you want, but to me, that was not yeah. the problem. The, the talent in that league is great. So people getting drafted from that league, they're coming here. I'm fine I, with that. That league had some good quality play last, last summer. summer was super fun, man. I, like I said, I went to the mega bowl to cover it. And I mean, I had a blast. There wasn't a lot of people there, but I ran into, uh, at least a newsroom fan that flew in all the way from St. Louis just for the game. And so it was, I mean, it was still football. It was good. And I mean, if you watch the game, which that, that mega bowl game, that was a fun game right down to the wire. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. 
Absolutely. I mean, th- honestly, I think it's a good thing that we see a lot of these spring league guys here because then they, I mean, they have that experience of working in these in, in a spring league and they're fresh, right? Especially the guys Mo- that are coming off last season. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that, that's just it. So stallions should be on the clock now, or if they have already had the pick out as we're refreshing <laughs> like mad, they should be having theirs drop any second. But let's see, because so here's the thing. The analytical snake, it eventually does flip a few picks, and that actually starts with the offensive tackle. So round four coming up here will be getting the same. We'll have, we'll have the same snake where the breakers will have two round picks mm-hmm. again the same way. However, round five, the maulers will start at the top. So we're going to be paying attention more to the order once right, we get right, right. to round five. So keeping you guys posted. This is, I mean, this has been an exciting night, not only for the USFL, but this channel and this show. Like I said, we've doubled our subs today. We have. <laughs> like just today. Yeah, I know, right? I can't believe it. By the way, next pick here for the Stallions, again, folks in the chat that are from that area, Chauncey Haney, North, North Greenville, is that on the, getting I picked up. That on Round the, three, pick six. That's just on the Stallions. That that is on the uh, that is currently on the Stallions uh, Twitter. Pull that bad boy up and share them. Oh well, that's why they got that that bookmarked. All right, they're trying to trick me here. There we go, Chauncey Haney, North Greenville. Chauncey Haney, Chauncey Haney, North Greenville, defensive end and edge rusher. There. Let's see what we can find. NFL's got his profile here from 2018 here. South Carolina na- native. And it looks like for his 10 game start, had 10 starts in 2018, 16 and a half tackles, six and a half for a loss, two and a half sacks at that point. And I believe he's a spring league guy too. Is that right? The blues. Yeah. The blues. They're actually, yeah, that was, uh, I was going to say he's a spring league guy. So again, they're really, uh, I know a lot of people were talking a bit part of that, but yeah, they're leaning on those spring league guys they're getting them in but they were good talents again i have to stress that you know there are good people in there there's a reason why these guys not only for the sake of familiarity but for the sake of that you know they were brought in here for reason one way or another they played well so chauncey haney small school guy this time getting his chance around to come right on back made his impression last year looks like he's going to be getting another chance to do that once more with his chance I, I, I like to so see the spring it. league guys. And and that still doesn't mean that this is the spring league with Fox behind it, because I don't think that by no, any no. means. I no, mean, it's not. The spring it's league not. <laughs> did not get uh, the promo that we're seeing Fox put into the USFL. Let's be honest here is more than we saw the XFL get in their lead up. Like at least this far mm-hmm. be like prior to, we saw we saw ads starting roll out on ESPN maybe a couple of weeks before the season. Right. Well, hey, you want to talk about XFL? So like uh, Kamon Walker getting picked up there. Reminder: he was the sack leader going into uh, week six of right. the league. So uh, you know, Guardians had a damn good defense under Kevin mm-hmm. Gilbride. Um, he is that's somebody that you know, much like Tahamu coming over. That's another star from that league that you know was looking for his chance to get another impact spot. USFL is here to right. play. Might as well jump right, on it. Right, right. <laughs> so, so good to see that. Very good so to see who, that. So who we're are waiting, waiting on right now. Should be coming up here with the Maulers, the Maulers pick if it has not been dropped by now. That is look. again the the refreshes are what I'm waiting or what we're waiting on here. Usually the cha- oh here we go Nassar player Nasir Nasir player again appropriate name East Tennessee State. Ah. Yes, just getting that one as well. All right. <laughs> yeah, it's seriously, extremely, <laughs> extremely appropriate yeah. name. East Tennessee State. As I misspell that one, of course, go figure. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like he had some time with the Bucks. Let's see what we got here. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he had any playing time, though. Let's see what we can find out. Yeah, limited. Uh, <laughs> say it. Very limited stuff coming coming up here again. Another smaller, another smaller school. But yeah, was with the Bucks for a spell. 
um, from the looks of it, was with the Spring League with the Alphas for 2021. Another Spring League guy. And I, I think we're going to see mm-hmm. a lot of those, especially in this uh, as, we're, as we hit these later rounds. We'll probably start seeing more and more of that. But again, there's nothing wrong with that. So it was chat good while I was gone. Nobody gave you a hard time. No, oh. no, no. That's what I like to hear. Chat was good. They did fine. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> we're we're doing well. See, we're catching the guys that drop these weird posts in early. Like that's the only thing, you know. And we this is really our big like so this is really our biggest stream to date. So like you know, getting a few things organized with that in the I end. like. But no chat. I mean, chat's been great. I love the interactions I, I, here. Love seeing the insight. I like what Jay has to say in the chat here. Donald Trump should play lineman for the generals. He at least owes <laughs> he owes them that as much. Or he owes them and that much. And the chat chats and the chat's bringing up our next one, which just dropped here for the breakers. And Ray Saint Amour. All right. Georgia Tech. Pull them up. And that'll round out round, round three. three. Three rounds in less so nine rounds to go. And honestly, it feels yeah. like it's flying by. I'm not going to lie. It, it doesn't feel like we're, it doesn't feel like we've been doing this for over an hour and a half. That's what I'll say. <laughs> you may, don't say that. It's like one of those things you shouldn't be thinking about. Like when you're exercising, yeah. you're like, Hey, don't, don't tell me, don't tell me the pain. Don't right, ignore the right, pain. Right. <laughs> ignore the length. But no. Uh, so yeah, breakers get their next guy. They're on the clock again. Reminder, this is the last round they're doing the standard snake. So Starting in round five, they will be switching over to tackles. That's when the analytical snake draft starts kicking in. You'll see the Maulers will get that first one instead. Yep, yep. yep. So that's the thing. Uh, let's see here. Um, I got someone here in the chat with a question. I'll see if we can answer here. So what is the USFL's policy on ex-NFLers? Any cap on how old? So, okay, that's in. So we that was kind of confuddling. Like Brian Woods, I'll admit, was a little confusing on some of his press tours and meet in some meetups mm-hmm. with that um because then he went and did like a scouting like seminar right. and essentially tried to say we're gonna go for young guys no like washed up or washed out like pro dudes from mm-hmm. the nfl or dudes that have been in through the ringer and now it's like well some guy now you're seeing of course some guys have been in the nfl you know none of the guys have been there for like years on years yet that we've seen right. drafted but there's I don't think there's really a cap. I think they're looking for a mix of young talent mixed in with guys that have been at least to the NFL level and are looking for that next step. You know, no one that's insane. There's some guy. There, there's some dudes that are in this pool. Like, uh, you know, in terms of age wise, like Ro- like uh, Rashad Ross, who I'm really wanting yes. to see play. You know, he's he's in his early 30s, but dude can oh, still sure. ball. You know, and he's been to the NFL level too. You know, I mean, hell, Antoine Grant is a little younger, but dude's been to the NFL level for his more practice. I'm just saying, there's right, no cap. Right, right. <laughs> to answer that question yeah i don't think yeah i don't think so i know there there were some stories kind of popping up that you know somebody people may have gotten snubbed and my thoughts on that is there's there's probably more to the story uh like i said the the few names that we did know in the draft pool we've known uh, some that are in their 30s so uh and and i like the mix right you kind of want that mix you want some people with the experience some of the younger guys uh, moving in with those coaches they have, I mean, we've seen the, the variety of experience that these coaches have across the league, everything from, you know, small colleges, big colleges, European football with the, uh, I don't know if any of the ELF guys came over, but definitely NFL Europe guys, a lot of CFL, a lot of XFL, a lot of a couple, one spring league coach. So I'm looking, I actually am looking to see if some, if, I haven't really seen anyone that's ELF yeah. yet, but that's a league folks. If you haven't checked that league out, I know that it played its first year and it's not as, it's not as big over here because it's, it's a year. It's of course you have to get up early to watch it. It's across the seas, but there's, there's good players. It's in not, there, it was entertaining you know? football. And I mean, that's all you can ask for is entertaining football. Whenever I, I mean, Aaron Ellis, I brought him up. He played for the Stuttgart surge. So, you know, dude had a good, t- had a good time in there, <laughs> you know? So let's see. Breakers are now again on the clock, still waiting to, Get their next one. As we are chilling I like, like a villain. Well, I like that the league at least it, they're they're pumping out the content throughout the picks, right? We're we're kind of seeing it spread out over social media. Of, like we saw Shea Patterson. Oh, Jennifer McGrath. Yep. What is her actual handle? McGraw. What is her handle? I think it is just Jennifer okay, McGraw. Because I, when I type it in, it, the name is so. Mm-hmm. There we go. There we go. Yeah, I got yeah, it. Yeah, you're looking. You're looking for that picture of yeah, all the QBs what, out outside, got it right here. 
So I got that up on the screen. So this is all of the first round picks, the USFL quarterback picks. And I mean, just looking at it again, I, how dare you, how dare you sully, sully that Maulers and Gamblers jersey. Everyone in the chat, shame Zach, shame, shame. (laughs) Unless you agree with him, then shame on me. But uh, I like it. I like seeing the names on the jersey. So, I mean, what, what does that tell you? These these picks ah. were made before day one. At least the first day. Yeah, they the came. They game. came. To not play. the rest. Not the rest. But I love this. So sign up, Jen McGraw. Uh, go give her a follow. Go give her a retweet. Sign her up. Actually, I think she reached out to me the other day, uh, and I want to say she's a Philadelphia Stars reporter. I could okay. be wrong, so I apologize. Let me. Let's. Uh, well, we're gonna do some recon live on the air. Nope, it's not. It's somebody else I talked to. Never mind. Uh, it is not the person from the star. So I apologize for confusing her. Um, but so we have what? The breakers on the board still. Yes, breakers. Breakers on the are on Let's the board just go here. Over to their page. And just give them a refresh here. I do see someone in the chat, and I will. We will answer this right now. Is who has the best draft so far? Um, I mean, Mr. Jello, I believe it is. We will get. I will, one of us will answer that question soon enough. Uh, we're still just trying to keep up with the picks as best we can. So that's a lot of it. I mean, so <laughs> far, I mean, if I just had to put it on one, we're still early. Um, but there's, I'd say the Panthers are the, honestly, funny enough, the first three picks are probably doing the best. The Panthers, the bandits and the stars. I mean, just looking at their quarterbacks, Shea Patterson, I got a special place in my heart for him. Jordan Tayamu. I know all the battle Hawks fans are happy. Uh, and then Brian Scott, I mean, again, some of the chat didn't know who he was. Be ready to be pleasantly surprised when you see his skills. But even looking at the at the the defensive picks or the uh, defensive end, I mean, again, the stars, just from the name alone, freedom, sign them up. Uh, yep. The generals, this one's a little bit different, but I think Bryson Young's a solid pick, so that might even p- bump them up into that lot as well. Uh, I mean, those are my my initial thoughts. I mean, realistically... I think I'm going to need to analyze this draft list a couple times by the end of the night. We got next pick first pick of the round four, James Folston jr. From Pittsburgh and university that's a familiar name too. I want, I can't, again, I can't spot where he's played, but I know he's been on a spring league team. Maybe it was the wildcats. What it was, uh, maybe I'm wrong. Pull, pulling it up here. So if he we played for, the, played for Pittsburgh here. Dallas Renegades. Dallas Renegades. Okay, so it was one of the Texas mm-hmm. teams. So again, seeing some of that, uh, s- some of that spring league experience. Looks like he had a cup of tea over at the Packers as well. So mm-hmm. uh, again, we're getting some of that. Uh, so okay, the Cardinals, the Titans, and the Packers that he spent time with. There you he, go. He was originally with the uh, Cardinals uh, as a free agent. Uh, so again, I'm liking that that mixture. Uh, again, I think it was probably expected that we would see a lot of guys that have had some type of spring league experience, but man, we're seeing the good ones. We're seeing some of the good ones with that spring league experience here as well. I mean, just to kind of reiterate what I was saying earlier so far, there hasn't been a pick that's made me cringe, right? <laughs> well, yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, the overall, uh, scheme of things. I mean, I'd say that's pretty good. I mean, while we're waiting for the next pick, uh, which is going to be coming from the Maulers, hopefully any minute now, <laughs> is it coming through? <laughs> okay. No, but I need you to, I need you to pull this one up. Look up uh, on Twitter at Apache heat. Apache heat. All right. Someone made a Michael Scott meme based on the Oklahoma St- state. Oh, <laughs> edge I rusher, Michael All Scott. Right. You get a retweet. You get a retweet. Oh, Apache it's beautiful. Heat. Sign. Sign it up. And, and you know what? I'm actually going to put this out right now. I think the Bandits, to me, have the best draft so far. Um, I'm going to say that off the top of my head. Um, it's not just Ta'amu. I think that you know I, I'm liking the talent based on what I've seen so far on the edge picks. But it's still pretty early. Like, you know, you can have damn – I mean – you can have damn good edge rushes and QB play, but you know, we still gotta get the line picked up. We still gotta get everything else. The receivers for crying out loud. Like let's right, not right, forget right. they got targets to throw to. So I don't know. Early, early, real early, I guess round four early. I'll go with the bandits. I really like the bandits so far. I'll give you that. 
Bandit Ball looks strong right now. So we have a new name. We have a new name. We have the the Mauler's pick is in Eric Asua. Asua. Eric, and, I, and again, Eric I don't know Asua. if I'm saying the name correctly, but I think I am. I think that one I, I got. So let me know in the chat if I, I'm all off base here. Western Michigan. So and not a lot of people. Ooh, Maction. Yeah, all like, right. I like Western Michigan. They are fun, fun school to watch. Uh, and let's see. Let's see what else we can find about this young stallion here. Well, not stallion, Mauler, rather. Well, young yeah. Mauler, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> all the meme game is coming out even stronger. I'm sorry, but I'll, we'll wait until we get the well, info. Because is... now they're making video memes. Bandits have something up that I'm, <laughs> I'm loving it. But yeah, Eric, Eric Asu, I think it's Asua or Asua. One of the two is what yes. you're talking about. Though. Yes, yes see here it so looks like he spent some time over in canada he was, he was on the alphas he was on the alphas la this uh past uh past two one of the past two tsl seasons as well i'm trying to see here it looks like he may have been in the cfl at some point as well but i can't seem to get through to the proper link here Maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> Again, this is the problem when you don't have the player pool ahead of time. You can't get the recon. Uh, but, yeah, you know, looking to day two, I think we're going to see some of those bigger names, too, come in, especially when it starts getting to the receivers, uh, the running backs. Uh, I mean, we're, we're seeing – I mean, we got, we got blessed with the quarterbacks today. Uh, but day two, yes. there's going to be some exciting stuff, and it's going to be a lot more rapid fire. Right, we're we're dropping things down from three minutes to ninety seconds to start things out with. So, I mean, can't be mad at that. Looks like I think chat picked one up more. If that is correct, Let's see who we got here. So we have the stallions on the board. Let's pull up there. Let's see if we can, because right now the chat I saw a few that said Seth Thomas, but I'm not. I got to see if I can we can get that. Uh, Working to confirm. Working to confirm. Let's see what we get. Seth Thomas. Kudos, chat. Give yourself a round of applause. Seth <laughs> Thomas, Northern Iowa. Northern All Iowa. Right. All right. UNI, Wildcats. There we go. Let's see what else we got here. Oh, he's not the clockmaker. I can assure you that. <laughs> not from 1785. Yeah, might, I don't think so. I, I mean, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you get lucky and you did pick it up. <laughs> he's been around for a while been around since the 1700s he's going to be coming in strong for the usfl no i can't been, okay. uh... <laughs> oh my god that <laughs> <laughs> you're killing me right now i swear <laughs> but yeah let's see here so you and i um had some yeah 20 so he graduated he last year you and i a senior 2019 um actually had some had a bit minimal play there but I'm assuming the intangibles, at least this is according to ESPN stats here. So I'm only getting so much, so much, right, right, right. <laughs> but yeah, another young town, only a few years removed, not much off, of, not much off the we're, grid. We're definitely <laughs> seeing them live up to that promise of kind of picking some of those young guys up. And I honestly, I, I don't see anything wrong with the young league. You know, what's really fun to watch uh, other than this chat that I'm going to ban is college football if i could get zach maybe you got to get it i don't know it's oh we got it we got an hbcu school that is being that's got drafted up here malik hemner jackson state all right all right let me pull that one up real going quick. to the generals houston, uh, not houston new jersey gen is it the generals or the new jersey gen generals. The generals oh yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah you're right wait <coughs> I miss it. Wait, did we miss a pick? Because actually, that's a good. Yeah, pick. hold on. Hang on a Let's minute. go here. I feel like. Let me double check my draft oh, order. Because I think it crazy. is. We yeah, missed one. Then. <laughs> or they mistyped. Let's see here. Where's my? I have too many tabs open. We've 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 approached the point of the night where You've I have too many time night. too many tabs open. All right, let's just do this. Houston game. Okay, we did miss one. So De so Draquan Brown, Central Oklahoma. All right. That's who was that was who got picked up. So yeah, MMA upload. Thank you. Uh, we got that lost in the shovel. That was a quick two picks. Yeah, though. for sure. Well, but, I mean that that means the coach was ready. Central, 
So Jaquan Brown, Central Oklahoma. So someone picking up another is a third rusher. And then I will I still Hamner did go to the generals. So again, picked up there too. And you know, uh, I guess that's a bit of, you know, it's obscure for the photo if they have to put yes. the helmet in. I, that is, I mean, not to say that's bad or anything. It's just that, you know, unfortunately they couldn't find for something sure. in time. I've, I feel kind of it bad. is unfortunate. It is it is unfortunate. So we have coming up next. So the stars are back on the board. We've got a couple quick secession ones there. So let's see if the stars and Andres come out quick with their next pick. Not yet, though. Not yet. Right. So we'll see. But we're I mean, we're what halfway through over halfway through mm-hmm. round four. We're, we're right. We're, Here's honestly, um, I thought it was going to be slower picks going in, but it, it's. Dude, they're keeping a good pace here. Yeah, I got a few intangibles on Hamner okay. at least. Um, so at least for uh t- two time and at least for his some of his stats here, uh HBCU SOA Bowl and Miami Bowl All Star invite as a prospect. Um, looks like he also was two time at least two time MVP and multiple time player of the week for his team as well. And has had a few interviews here and there too. Had a had a few has had some pro days here and there as well. Chances to get to the next level. So we have our next pick in. But definitely a bit more scary. Yes, yes. So we have it we have a new one. This one comes from a bigger school, Illinois. Uh K- Carol okay. Phillips. I'm as uh, Carol Phillips? S- yeah, I'm assuming so. Yeah, that is yes, that is Carol Phillips, Illinois. And you can definitely tell Indianapolis he has had a stop in at this yes, point. Yeah, definitely. But just by the picture there. And I mean, that's again getting that experience. So it looks like he had some time with the Falcons, the Colts, and the Jags. Let's see what else we have in here. Again, it's seeming like a good amount. Oh, and the Generals. So the Generals last year in the Spring League. Yeah. <laughs> so another Spring yeah. League nut. I mean, there you go. I, I ain't going to be mad at that. Once again, though, we're seeing a good amount of a mix. Of again, even if it's just practice squad experience with the NFL, that's gonna help. That's gonna help. And quite honestly, this dude's probably gonna be a stud coming out here. Um, I don't know. I don't know. We'll have to see. But I think that's a good pick. Uh, anytime you have that mixed experience, and like I said, the the spring league. I need to say stop saying like I said, but like I said, uh, his experience with the uh, spring league. I ain't even mad at that. I like that. In fact, the spring league was fun last year. So sign him up. See Jim in the chat already because anything Jaguars, he slamming the Duval in the chat. <laughs> nice one. <laughs> Gotta love that. And, oh, and <laughs> I see Tyler Tyler there. Yes, I understand. Kyle Letta was arrested back when he was with back when one of his tenure is during his tenure in the NFL. I that's why I brought it up earlier. Um, it is some I, I people do change. I'm not saying, but you know, it does put a sour taste when you see the guy get picked up, you know, for the mall for for the right. maulers. So you know, something to think about. That's all I'm putting it as, you know, another opportunity though. That That's the thing. So again, snake draft is coming to a close in terms of the standard snake, like ter- like your usual fantasy football snake draft. So we got the last two, we got the bandits getting their fourth and then the Panthers will get their last one. And then the Maulers will switch it up into round five. Well, actually let's give a synopsis what round five is going to look like. So your round five picks starting from top mm-hmm. to bottom and the, the press release, they kind of dropped. Oh, you found the video. I yes, was talking I about did. Too. <laughs> I'm just letting that run I, in the background. Uh, it's great. <laughs> just saying. Um, so round five's picks total. So you have Pittsburgh first, Stallion second, Gamblers will get the third in the round five. Then the break, then the breakers fourth, Panthers five, general six stars, seventh bandits will finish eighth. So this is where everything just gets totally thrown yeah. out of whack. We're going to have to list them off a lot more carefully than trying to, then trying to have to go with the traditional snake. That's what makes it exciting. That's what makes it fun. I hope everybody else is having a good time tonight. Thanks for coming out and supporting us. I mean, this is definitely our biggest show by far. It's our first live stream. So tell you, tell you what, um, when do you, when do you want to do that 2000 sub? Here's what I think. So we have 12 rounds, right? I think we do it after round six, do it right at the midway point. Does that work? Okay. How, what is the That's chat? I saying. know the chat will say drop it now. <laughs> but hey, you know what? Let's see. Let's see. 
Why not? <laughs> well, we'll we'll do round six. Sounds like what a plan. we'll do too, though. Here's what we'll do, just in case, because I know not everybody can stick around. We will announce it on uh, we'll announce it on our Friday show, and we'll also, which we don't normally do, but we'll also announce it on social media, just mm-hmm. in case, because I get it. Well, this is a long stream. I can't expect everybody to stick around for the full what three and a half four hours, right? Bandits got their next All right. guy. Who do we got? Adam Schuler. Adam Schuler. Florida, okay. Who also is his picture also he looks like he had a spell in West Virginia University too. So uh power five mm-hmm. guy going to Tampa Bay. And it looks like going back technically to his home to the state that he played in it's uh, for a spell there right, as well. Right, right. Yeah, and that's one thing that we haven't seen necessarily a lot of is the local guys going to uh like where they played. I mean, that was a big thing with the AEF. Right. And it was basically a regional draft um, and similar with the uh, the spring league to a certain extent. Reconnection successful. We're back online. OK. OK. So that just, just totally it just happened. A bl- it was just like seconds. So just seconds. All right. So sorry about that. I don't know what the blip was for. Uh, it, a Internet. Don't fail me now. The good news is, though, Zach, I mean, I feel like I'm actually prepared because if we do drop, I got this 5G hotspot now for spring stuff. <laughs> right. So, I mean, s- since we're talking about it, come join us. If you're coming out to Birmingham for that first USFL game between the Stallions and the Generals, come join the USFL podcast and many other podcasts for some free food, drinks, giveaways, and four hours of podcast starting at 12 p.m. Central. The party's in the parking lot. Come and join us. It's going to be a blast. I mean, if you're enjoying this stream, which maybe you are, maybe you aren't, I don't know. But if you are, come and join us. At minimum, even if you're not, come and get a free hot dog or burger. We're going to be doing giveaways. The party's in the parking lot. And we're going to have special guests there as well that we're going to be announcing as we get closer to the event. It's going to be fun. So stay tuned. Yep. So Schuler went. So just to recap here. So Schuler was at West Virginia, transferred to Florida. I did did get that confirmed. Uh, he also at least had, and again, some guys it's a little hard to find mm. details than others. He at least had a stop with the 49ers at one point since 2019. Got it. All right. So again, we're seeing that mixture of a little bit of NFL, even if it's smaller level practice squad type stuff. We're seeing that come into come into uh, factor here. So we're the the Panthers are up. They're going to round out the fourth round, like you mentioned. That's when we get into the real niche stuff of the analytical snake draft, where things start switching it up a yeah. little bit. Uh, but funny enough, uh, so yeah, you know, it's going to be it, this. This is where it gets interesting. Um, boy, oh boy, I, it's been it's, it's been, been one a so far. flipping night already. And sign everybody up. I'll tell you what, once we get this final Panthers pick to round out, I am going to also Sign step aside. I'll have you uh, going solo yeah. for a minute. Just need to, need to, you know, use the restroom, wet my whistle. Yes, definitely. I know I've been drinking the water like a madman tonight. So definitely, definitely. I mean, I, I have not a sip. I actually got, so as we're again, still kind of waiting to see the Panthers drop this one. Come on, Jeff, yeah, where on. you at? Let's go. <laughs> I, I, this is ran, this is a totally random thing. I don't know if you folks have seen this in the stores yet. There is a uh, Coca-Cola S- starlight. It's space. They, it, the flavor says it's space flavored. I don't like that. I'm not joking. I, th- that's what I have in my mug right now. <laughs> is it good? And I have tastes like gingerbread. Oh. Well, that's not space. I don't know why <laughs> space, the final cookie. It's like anytime I see anything, that unicorn really that funny, flavored. But- Oh well, wait, why? One, it looks disgusting. Wow. I don't know if, I, like, I, I, if I, I don't know. I haven't been a kid in a while, but I was a kid. I wouldn't want to be eating unicorns. So I'm sure it was made for girls more than <laughs> boys. But either way, space flavored. This is from this is a Coca Cola product. You say? Yeah, it found it at my grocery store today. I, uh, you know, the stream's coming up. I'm like, I gotta get some quick yeah. food. I made pizza. Okay, I'll admit, I, I, I got a pizza yeah. today. I made it, and I was like, huh. Space flavored Coca Cola. It sounds so silly when you say it. And it, you know, I want. I actually was coming into the stream like, this space is a mystery. So is this draft right. in so many ways. 
That is exactly what it is. I tell you, man, <laughs> Jeff Fisher's taking his sweet time over here, making sure to get all three minutes. Oh, here we go. And he, I think he was in the chat earlier. Congratulations. Did, did we finally. Chase Demore, welcome to the Panthers. Oh, Sign yes. you up, dude. dude. Dude, I am so this one I am extremely ecstatic for. If anything, if anything, the guy will be a personality for the league. The, if you remember, folks, if you watched the Spring League last year when the linemen were in the Indianapolis hub, unfortunately I didn't go to any of his games, by the way. Nonetheless, he was the man that had the tool belt. But again, championship roster that he was on, you know, someone that was a motor guy, that lineman defense was stout. And I'm glad that he stopped in and we can say that we had a USFL player stop in. Someone that is officially signed on. Congrats, Congrats to him. Congrats to him. Sign you up. And I mean, Andy's on your team. He's on your yes, team. Yes, exactly. Repping the Panthers, my Man. guy. <laughs> That's Lucky what I'm dog. saying. That's what I'm saying. I am I am ecstatic. Like I said, not only just for him being on there. We got a motor guy, but we got some. I like. I want personalities. Mm -hmm. You know, the league's got to get guys that'll be great for social. This is somebody that was great for the minimal TSL social they had. He'll be great if he's the same way he was with the TSL last he, season. He was so. on a Netflix show, right? What, some dating, what? Uh, like, reality show? What? Too Hot to Handle. That missed yeah. this? No, he's Too Hot Seriously? to Handle. So you, you've never watched that? Dude, no, I have not to, watched that. Okay. Sign everybody up. If you haven't watched watch Too Hot to Handle, you need to watch it out. It's a goofy, goofy dating slash real world-esque show that was Netflix that Chase Damore was on. I think he's on season two, <laughs> too. I don't know if it's out yeah. yet. Yeah, I didn't watch that. I'm serious. I'm sorry, folks. I didn't catch yeah, I'll, I'll pull him up right here. <laughs> ah. Put him on the oh, chat. that's there funny. Too Hot to Handle. That is hilarious. Okay. Um. All right. Tell you what. Like I said, I'm going to... I'm going to step aside now. Um, round five, yes. tackles. Maulers are let's on the see. clock. So we have the Maulers on the clock. Zach, I'll let you go. Uh, let's see what we got, guys. Sorry, you guys are stuck with me for now. Uh, but let me get the right tab up here and make sure that we don't miss any of these picks because surely I will miss one, and I don't want to get I don't want to get too far behind. But how is the chat doing tonight? Do you guys like the stream? Do you guys dislike the stream? Put in the chat. Use some emojis. Thumbs up, thumbs down. Let me know right now. Let's take a look here. So we have who's on the clock. It is the Maulers on the clock again, correct? That is correct. So let's see who we got. Let's head over to their page. So far, who's everyone's favorite pick of the draft tonight as well? Uh, I mean, I'm very, very happy with that uh, with that Shea Patterson pick. I think that's probably, that's a solid pick for the number one pick and for the Panthers. Again, special place in my heart as a Wolverines fan. Uh, unfortunate that he is with the Panthers and not the Gamblers. But so far, I think all of the teams have done pretty solid. We've seen a pretty even draft so far. Um, so let's see. Oh, we have some more pictures over on. We'll just head over here real quick. Yeah, Zach's, Zach's chair is empty, but big deal. But we're getting some more pictures from the league, too, which is nice here. We have Kyle Laletta putting in the pick for at least one of the rounds here as well. So it's kind of nice seeing these guys come in. Jeff, Brian Scott for Philly. That, that's another solid pick. Tayamu, clearly a uh, solid pick as well. I mean, a little surprised he didn't go number one. Definitely not surprised he went number two after uh, after getting picked out by Shea Patterson. So far, and like I said, don't sleep on that Brian Scott for the Stars. Uh, earlier when the name was called, not a lot of people knew who he was, but do yourself a favor. Go check out some highlights because that dude, the dude, he, he's going to show up. He's going to shine this year. So we're still waiting on the Maulers. We're starting out round five. Round five. We're almost halfway done. And again, stick around because at the end of round six, we're announcing who won the big jersey giveaway. New, new clef. Yes, we did say Tayamu. Jordan Tayamu has been signed or picked, drafted by the Tampa Bay Bandits. Many thought he would go number one to the Panthers, but here he is going number two. 
So, I mean, the Panthers or the Battlehawks fans from the XFL, I mean, I could guarantee you this. They're going to show up. They're going to tune in for Jordan Te'amu. Uh, so, it's fun. It's fun. I'm glad you guys are joining us. Like I said, this is kind of our big night. It's our big night. We haven't. This is our first live stream, and I would say so far it's a dang success. I mean, since we're waiting on the next pick, we have all sorts of merchandise. Click the link down to the loan. This is a speculation zone shirt. Because if you watch the show, we always go into the speculation zone. But we have shirts for the upcoming spring stock. We have shirts for the USFL podcast. And all of the purchases go back and do the show, right? So we don't even make any money off of this. We do this for fun, but all the money go back, goes back into making it bigger and better and hopefully getting more guests, doing more events. Like I said, that that spring stock is going to be a blast here coming up. Um, so I'm, I'm definitely... Definitely looking forward to that. More importantly, looking forward to meeting the fans here, uh, the fans of the show and the fans of the USFL. Quite honestly, it's been a couple of years since I had a t- chance to really go out and tailgate. Uh, so I'm going to use up that opportunity as much as I can. I mean, first and foremost, we're going to be in Birmingham for that first game. I know Zach's going out there for week two. Uh, we're also going to be at the championship in Dayton, Ohio. And no joke. I rented a football-themed house on Airbnb. So, Liam, Fitz, you're already entered. All you got to do is enter this chat here right now. Uh, And after round six, we're going to announce the winner. We're giving away one jersey of your choice and a hat or a T-shirt as well since we made it to 2,000 on this stream. Now, I will say if we do get to 3,000 by the end of the stream, you know what? Screw it. Zach's not here. I'm making up rules while Zach is gone. If we get to 3,000 subs, we'll, we'll give away another jersey. We'll give away another one. So we're, we, we're already announcing the 2,000 winner after round six. But if we get to three, screw it. Screw it. We'll give away another jersey. We'll sign you guys up. Now, keep in mind, keep in mind the jerseys are pre-order only. So they're not available until May. So you're not going to get it right away, but it will be coming soon. So again, if we can get another 868 subscribers here in the next couple hours, we're giving away another jersey. And Zach, I'm sorry, you, 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 I did something without asking permission. I don't know if you heard me. Oh boy, D- did you hear the 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 end the tail end of what I was just saying? Another jersey, you say? I mean, if we get to 3K tonight, why well, not? No, right? Well, I hey. If we happen to, I, I will, I will, I will sympathize with those that have gone. It is uh, later in the evening. The QBs have been selected. I understand. You know, linemen still are exciting people, man. Tackles in particular, you got to have damn good tackles for your quarterback to play. You know, like for example, Jordan Tamu here. You know, if you're a Bandits fan, you can have a guy that can scramble as long as he wants. Even with Shea Patterson for us, right. for the Panthers, you can have this dude scramble all for his life. But if you can't protect him in the long run, you're going to end up having, and I feel bad saying this because of how cheesy it is, a bad right. time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you. <laughs> what did I Nothing, miss in terms no of players, picks though? No picks. I'm, I'm furiously refreshing the Maulers uh, social media channel. Let me just, uh, maybe I'm. Uh, oh, well, I think we, it looks like we did have. At least one, because yeah, I've got the stallions I got the, right here. So well, I got Nigel Chavis for the Breakers. So what is, that was a few minutes ago. Forget to post the one for the Maulers. The Maulers are the first pick in the fifth round. Am I not wrong? They were supposed That's what to it be. Says here, and according the to the, according to the press yeah. release, that is what the press release. So we says. have Jonathan Newsom for the Stallions. Oh, well, there I go for just not looking at by only looking at the the one room. So. We probably got a couple here then. So we have Newsom for the Stallions. Let's go check out the Houston Gamblers. Ah, I see what happened here. So it's a compository pick. So what? That's what the Breakers pick is. Oh, they're they're skipping? No, so it was uh, additional. So the Breakers basically got an extra pick at the end of the fourth round. I see. Oh, I see. I see. Which the compositories were, they're an element, but... You know, they haven't been used to this point. So that's why some of this has been a little kerfuddled. That's that's what it is then. Okay, that I, honestly, I was a little confused. I said, I know I didn't screw this up. I'm looking, and then you're right. I went to the uh, 
um, to the uh, the official press release, and no, that's right there. So let's let's update this this draft tracker then that I got going over on my end. So each team gets one of these. Is that right? Well, I got to get back into the compositories here because that's it's a whole nother ball game. They do list them off in this, so we might as well get back and explore once I can get in here to the press release once more. All right, so trades between teams, which we have here, uh, trades between teams to achieve a different selection order acquired players will not be permitted, which we knew going in. However, a team may elect to pass during any round in exchange for a compository pick that may be used at the conclusion of a different position round. If more than one team utilizes a compository pick in a given round, the draft order will then, within that position round, will determine the order of the compository selections. It's a lot That's of, a lot to take in. Okay, either way. Uh, and it's, comp- it's compensatory. Yeah, thank you, Fortnite content. I, I do this stuff sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> so compensatory picks. Yes, I'll say it again. Compensatory picks, not compository. So um, then I guess we don't know who the, is the next pick still, the Maulers. I guess we'll find out, guys. We're, we're doing a Bill O'Reilly style. F it. We're doing it live. Jonathan Newsom, though. Yes. So Ball, ball State guy. pickup. Yeah, I know. I'm very happy about this guy. I, this dude has a motor. Um, I did get to see him play. True fact. Dude does have a motor. Dude, dude did make at least a bit of a name from, you know, made himself, of course, at Ball State. Had a little bit of time in Indianapolis where he was looking solid. Um, I like this one for the stall for stallions. So, good choices. You know, good choice. And he is also another compensatory, as well for that 10th pick for the fourth round. So I'm, I'm just fixing my draft tracker over on this side real quick. Cause they, they really threw me a curveball with these ones. Well, yeah, see, this is where it's going to really get conf- kerfuddled. If you start seeing compensatories thrown yep. in here, then we're definitely gonna, <laughs> we definitely will have some mixed up stuff is what's going to happen. And also Maulers did just have theirs drop. I just unclicked from Let's it. See. Here we go. First pick of round five. The compensatories were over. Chidi. Oh, I'm going to really screw this up. <laughs> Ch- Chidi Okiki. I'm going to I'm gonna leave that not... one with you, buddy. And we're going to leave it o- right Okeke. there. Okeki sounds more right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I Again, I'm, I'm there. But that's the first tackle off the board. So the Maulers get to get, get to pick up their first tackle. Looks like he had some playing time. With the Kansas City Chiefs, we'll get a little bit of the pick, get at least a bit of the background here in just a second. Boy, and am I glad that you you chose to say that name because I would have I would have bombed also, on that. Also had a bit of a spell with the Tampa Bay Bucks as of as of the 2021 season, at least was in camp with them. Tennessee State University. Tennessee State University guy as well. So has had a bit of a bounce around. And we got the stallions on the clock, I am, I'm assuming still. And, it, and Yeah, and it looks like, so yeah, and he transferred from LSU to then go to Tennessee State. So technically power five guy going for another opportunity. Now getting his chance to get another full opportunity here. This time now with the Maulers. So he'll be protecting Kyle Laletta. Yeah. I mean. So he's going to be your guy <laughs> there. Round, I mean, they really, I'm still, I'm still reeling a little bit from the curveball with the compensatory picks there. I mean, I, I knew it was a, uh, I knew it was possible. And I knew it would come. I just didn't know it would throw me off so much. But we're, we're, we're getting back into the game. We got the water today. Just if anybody's curious. We're drinking Kroger Purified Drinking Water. I don't know, Zach, if you watch <laughs> Sign Me Up every now and then, I'm always drinking water, and I would always show which brand. I change it up. Sometimes I like spring water. Sometimes I like purified water. I'm a purified kind of guy today. See, I'm a, I'm a uh, very much a ice mountain guy when I have it readily available. I'm, I'm very much a store brand kind of guy. Uh, so it's usually mm-hmm. a, a Kroger... Or uh, any of the guys out here in Texas, you'll understand H-E-B. Oh, so yeah. It's usually one of those. Don't two. have those in Indianapolis. <laughs> Don't have those in Indy. We got Kroger's for sure. Uh, and also, Owen 
Owen James, just to give you a heads up. So the draft order, uh, besides the compensatory picks, that's kind of the curveball. Um, mine and ours comes from our press release that we were given via the league. So that is where that comes from. Um, just as a heads up. Now, some people have dropped those on Twitter. You can go in there and kind of do some digging. We didn't drop bars. Um, kind of kept those that closer to our best, but others have, and even our channel USFL newsroom, we have that listed in all the details there too. You can look up the draft order there. Um, but ours is from a press release via the league. That is where we're getting. Well, and I'll even tell you too, actually, let me just flip over here. If you, if you do want to see the full order, if you go to, um, if you go to USFL newsroom.com, go to more and draft tracker, or if you just go to the news and the live draft coverage, you'll get to this page that has it broken down by day and we're updating it live. So you'll see the yep. full And we got, our, we got our next tackle pick. The stallions have their first lineman on the board. Darius Harper from Cincinnati. All right. All right. Getting Let's picked take up. a look here. Let's see what this young man has to offer. Los Angeles chargers. So he's got a little bit of an uh, mm -hmm. NFL experience there. That was that seems like it was pretty recent as well in the 2021 draft. Yeah, game, for real. Yep, he was a 2020 honorable mention All AAC honoree at tackle. Started 10 games for UC, and he's only been out. Yeah, really, just one one year, maybe really one year, because graduated after 2020 season. So he's recent. I mean, um, perfect. You know, young. That's a young guy. <laughs> Someone definitely saying, "Hey, I'll take my chance. Just go straight mm -hmm. in." With this opportunity. I mean, I, I, I kind of love to see it. I mean, these, this is again, what these leagues are made of. I mean, realistically, as, as, as these types of leagues gel, I think you're going to st start seeing more of this. You'll see guys that maybe go in, maybe get into the NFL, maybe get in the practice squad, but will take less, less money to go become a star in the USFL to kind of get more of that footage to move back into the mm -hmm. NFL. Because again, looking at the contracts, what's the one place that the USFL guys can leave for? the NFL, right? That's right. That, that is a, uh, competition thing. You can't go to the CFL or the XL and I'll credit. You can get out of your contract at the end of the league mm -hmm. year. Um, there is an, it's an option too that they're doing at the end of the year. So once the next calendar year starts, that's when you can do the option in or out. But if you're go, trying to do XFL, you have to make that kind of split decision come late winter of 2020 of this season. So, You'll have to think about that. And that's kind of the first impression the league gets here is these players get to play. They'll see if it's legit and if it's going places and they can obviously evaluate their options elsewhere. Thanks to what is growing outside sources. So you we got, we got my team here. The gamblers up. We got a new pick Brandon Hinton. Uh, and Brandon. I mean, so he's from Villanova. Yeah. We even got the breakers too. rapid right. fire. It looks so, like, and it looks like he spent some time with the Rams. I'm assuming that's the Los Angeles Rams, but uh, it could have been the St. Louis. I would believe uh, I don't. Yeah. Brandon Hittner. And then uh Paul Adams from Missouri going to the breakers, Let's pull them up here as well. Just give them, give them a good old refresh. Yeah. They're coming in quick succession oh, yeah. now. Yeah. Getting a little later into this, although it's funny though, it was that, Quick, I'm assuming uh, that meant <laughs> Fedora knew who he right. wanted as his guy right off the Which, gate. I mean, as a coach doing a draft, you know, there's probably no better feeling than sitting there waiting. Like, there's a guy that you have highlighted, and you're like, can I get Paul Adams? Is he going to make it? I only need to make it through seven other guys. And then that feeling of, all right, yep, my pick is in. It's here. I'm ready. Yep. Hitner is a fitting name, by the right. way, for a guy that's going to be <laughs> popping someone on the edge. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I hope he's doing a lot of uh, it as a gambler's fan, mind you. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Villanova, obviously known as a, uh, you know, great D one basketball college. And that's very much known off the gates to many as a basketball school or as a football school, but you know, does have its histories there. You know, that Pennsylvania area is where it's coming from. But yeah, Hittner looks like he had a uh, tryouts, at least with the Colts. He's been with the Rams for a little bit of a spell. So it's come out and has had some time at least to get in the NFL recent guy too. Mm -hmm. It looks like uh, according to the NFL's page, only one year of experience hopping around. So not, not too much. Another dude, just like we were right. talking, getting a saying, I'm going to take mm -hmm. my chances, go to a different league. And then, like I said, we also got a uh, Paul Adams too. 
with the Breakers. And even now, the Panthers, Keith Williams, Colorado State. Nice. Picked up. Let's take a look at him here. Keith Williams, the, the, the picks are coming in. Panthers, let's just pull you up here. I do find funny the chat, you guys in the chat with Wins Manziel going. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to wait for that 12th away. round to see if Manziel's in there. <laughs> it just won't go away. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, darn it. Of course. Uh, Keith Williams. Tackle. Because there's a also a basketball player from West Kentucky, Keith Williams. I got to... Gotta specify. So yeah, Keith Williams. Let's see. No, it's a common name because now I just got another Keith Williams, Nebraska. Right. A little different. Although recent guy too was at Colorado State for the most. Of course, like we said, for the most part. Not much, uh, kind of at least having trouble. I think the generic name is not definitely helping with the does search. not help. I mean, there's one thing to say if we can't pronounce the name, it's pr we're probably going to find them at least when we <laughs> when we search it. I mean, yeah, that's the one thing with my gotta, name. It's uh, oh, new new pick here for the generals. Yeah, you can Garrick you McGinn, Garrick McGinn. I, Garrick and again, McGinn. I hope I'm saying your name properly here. I will say, I am glad that the one person that we do know that was in the chat in the draft hit. His name was real easy <laughs> to get right. <laughs> so at least we got that going for us. Garrick McGinn there from Eastern Carolina, AAC school. Let's see. And oh, I do see some questions here. How long are we streaming? Again, we're doing this till basically 10 ish, whenever mm -hmm. the draft's over. So it's kind of up to how long these guys go. We're currently now moving in in through this fifth round so going to be announcing that winner of that next prize in the sixth so that's coming up coming very up soon shortly. and again just a reminder if, if and i never thought we would but if we get to 3k we're dropping a new jersey winner so uh mm -hmm. i mean i don't know if we'll get that i don't know if we will but if we do i'll say you guys earned it uh garrick mcginn by the way uh Graduate was undrafted out of Eastern Carolina 2019. His stops include Buffalo, Carolina, Buffalo again in 2020, and then Jacksonville as of these last two years as a practice squad member. Not bad. Again, I ain't no shame in that game. I really like picking up practice squad guys for, uh, for these leagues. Now we do have the stars in Blake Allen camper, South Carolina. Let's take a look here. Blake. Blake the name Allen sounds Camper. familiar here too, and so I wouldn't doubt if we saw him in definitely one of the spring leagues, whether it be TSL or AAF or XFL. But this name, uh, I'm trying to think of where where I remember it from. You know, it's uh, it's funny when you have a name. <laughs> uh, I sometimes have a good laugh because it sounds like the way they put Blake Allen Camper, it comes off as almost like a job title. <laughs> Blake Allen Camper. <laughs> Blake Allen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, no, I'm just I'm messing for I'm sure. Messing. So he he spent some time with the Chargers at least. Um, okay, I'm trying to find some more on him here. I think if we get rid of the Allen, that's going to help us here. Yeah, let's, that that probably will help. So he a was with bit. the the Generals in the spring league. Spent some time with the Argonauts, so with the CFL. So the, uh, all go. those CFL fans up north. Again, this guy's got a nice little spread of experience too. Again, getting. I think, especially on the defensive end, getting these guys from the CFL is going to help because they're used to having to stop different types of plays, faster types of plays. Uh, so, I mean, I can't, I can't argue with anybody from the CFL coming on in. No, not at all. <laughs> I, I dig, I dig that choice. We gotta say, get, you're just getting a lot of dudes that have mixed experience, you know, too. You know, not the first CFL guy. The first one was the, uh, well, technically first overall draft pick, Shea mm -hmm. Patterson, was the one that really kicked that one off with the experience on that. <laughs> Sorry, Stetson. <laughs> I thank, by the way, Ray Thompson. I see the explosive 
chat here, just subscribe. You all should look me up in Birmingham. Well, hey, again, we have, sp- we have Springstock, yeah. so uh, we'll look you up, or you come over to us and say hi. We'll shake yeah, your hand. Yeah, for sure. And I have the ad on the screen here. So April 16th, 12 p.m. Central. Come join us. The party's in the parking lot of Protective. We're going to be out there for the first game between the Stallions and the Generals. Honestly, we'll probably be out there for the next day, depending on the schedule. We're not doing spring stock the next day. Spring stock is April 16th. Come and join us. Free food, free drinks, free giveaways, free podcasts. It's going to be fun. So, yeah, sign you up. We good. We just got the Bandits tackle selection. Tyler Catalina from Georgia. Pull him up. Had a spell. It looks like he played a little bit for the – formerly known Washington Redskins, now known Washington Commanders, or also formerly known Washington football team, whatever way you want to reference them. It is from Washington that he was play, playing as well, Georgia product. Very nice. Very nice. So good. Good good, good quality schools here. Let's see what else we got on him. Another CFL out of wet Red Blacks. Spent some mm-hmm. time there. Had a couple different spots in the NFL uh, between the Redskins, Vikings, and Panthers. It uh, looks like the Vikings and Panthers probably just bounce between the two, but he did spend a good couple of years with the, with the skins. Um, he did mm-hmm. have some playing experience. He, he debuted against the Cowboys. So at least he has some on field NFL experience in a real game. And then with the CFL from 2020 until what it says, at least in Wikipedia present, at least until today, he's now in the USFL. There you have it. <laughs> happy, happy for uh, really just, I said, we said this at the be both of us have said this in some capacity mm-hmm. going in, you know, if anything, celebrate that you got these, you see these young men getting another opportunity. So that, that I think in itself, if you're just, you want to, you want to feel good for right. these guys, that that's how I look at it. You know, these people are changing their dream or they're chasing the dream. And it looks like based on the USFL's post just a few seconds ago, no compensatory picks. That was the conclusion of round five with Tyler Catalina, which means that round six for that leadoff, just to give you a heads up how we're looking at that, round six, the Bandits will snake back. And so we're going to get the snake that is in reverse mm-hmm. order of round five. So Tampa, Philadelphia, New Jersey, Michigan, New Orleans, Houston, Birmingham, ending with Pittsburgh, and they'll snake back in for round seven. So the snakes evolve, it looks like, depending every few position right, groups right, right. is what is going on here. Because they will, they actually won't change the order until round 12 when they hit back and do the original reverse snake order with the quarterbacks to end the day. So that's it. And I'll tell you what, it's time beginning of the sixth round, my friend. All right. So let me just run a couple things here. Let's, let's get the magic ready. I'll, I'll keep the, I'll keep the eye on the pick. You keep an eye on the pick. You get the the prize ready. ready. So again, if nobody knows what we're talking about, I mean, we, we had a thousand giveaway. We bumped it up to two to add in an extra shirt or hat. We got to two. If we get to three, we're going to give out a whole different jersey, a whole separate giveaway. Don't know if it'll happen. But Tim Skelton, I hope I'm saying the name right. I'm sure it's just a screen name anyway. He's, a, he's, a, he's one of our big supporters, too, so I love seeing yeah. that. Here's what you need to do, bud. Uh, and we'll announce this on the Friday episode, just in case you're still not in the chat, because I, I don't know if I've seen him chat. And uh, no joke, I used a – there's a tube buddy. You can randomly select a, a, a random chatter. And it's one of our regulars. It's one of our regulars. So here's what you got to do. DM us over on Twitter at USFL Podcast. We'll also announce it on Friday, and we'll announce it on social media as well. So if you're not still here, no worries. We got you covered. But, guys, that's, I mean, we we have so many giveaways going on. Again, if we can get to 3,000, probably not likely. But if we do, we'll give it on another jersey tonight. And I think Zach and I, I think we need to hit the drawing board and come up with a new number for we'll, we'll announce a new giveaway Friday for sure. Right. Well, look, the fact we're even at two K um, guys, we're not joking. We, the, the other day I looked back, I had a post that was saying, huh, we're one away from 500. All of a sudden this is blown up. You people have found our channel, you know, and have embraced our draft from, from what it looks like. And I thank you for stopping in. I mean, Seriously. I'll tell you this. I knew this would be a, like a success, but I didn't know it'd be this big of a success this early. Uh, realistically, like I said, we're, we're recording episode eight this week. So we're, we're technically not even two months into this bad boy. What do you got? We got news. No, I <laughs> it might be one of those sound things. I saw two people say they couldn't hear you. And now I have some people saying that they can. Now Carson says there's no sound. That's hmm. good. 
Okay. Let us know in the chat. <clears throat> Can't hear anything either. I don't know why that would have changed. Well, we'll just keep talking and let's see. Are you sure? And now we got another guy that says there's no sound. Now, I don't understand why that would change. I'll keep on monitoring. Somebody says, Owen says these. sound is fine. Sound like a problem on your end. Yeah, double check this, dude. Do you have it muted? <laughs> I, I'm joking. Honestly, I'm joking. <laughs> but Well, yeah, I see people are saying the sound is fine now. I, I'm not, not to call. This isn't like a call on anyone. Yeah, yeah. Like, hey, you know, yeah, but... Yeah, I mean, check yourself. Thanks for the feedback, we though. We, know. we do like being kept in we, the know. Believe me. Um, yeah, we want to know sooner rather than later if we're just talking to air. Um, right. We do like being kept in the know. You are not, this is not a disservice to us. We are happy we are being fed this information. Yeah, straight up. <laughs> and all. thank you, Chad, for reaffirming us and letting us know that the sound isn't a problem until we find out this is one big troll. Like a whole group of like, yeah, this sounds good, suckers. Ha ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> the old, everyone's just in here to say the sound's bad. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Everyone, you guys, you, you guys are saying it's good. I, we're messing. All right. So we're still waiting on that. Uh, at least unless Twitter is not updating correctly, we are waiting on the round six pick from, at from this moment. Bandits. From the bandits. From the bandits. Another tackle selection is what we're going to be getting. So. You're going to get most of your guys, uh, you're going to get your, essentially your front line set up. And here's the thing. There's really no room for, tr for like camp, like at least com competition. Your rosters are going to, for the most part, maybe some wiggle room, but they're pretty much mm -hmm. locked. So <laughs> if, if you, uh, for, if you see these guys pick up on your team, odds are these are your starting dudes for these first few position pickups. So you know, that last tackle round is probably your starting tackles. Oh. Most likely, if not entirely, you're starting left or right tackles, depending on mm -hmm. where they go. Right on. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, well, there is a supplemental draft that's set to take place, I believe, in a couple weeks. But, yeah, realistically, the guys that we're seeing picked up now, I don't think we're going to see many of these guys get cut. And quite honestly, the supplemental draft to my, I, I mean, they don't need to make picks in that draft either. It's more of... Hey, somebody gets hurt. Somebody, something happens. I mean, you need to have a little bit of wiggle room, right? Um, so, yep. yeah, it, it could change a little bit, but it's not going to change much. It's not going to change much, at least for that first year. Uh, I do see somebody saying the bandits picked, and I think I just saw it fly by my screen. There it is. Next tackle, round six, pick one, Corbin Kofusi. 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 Let's see. Corbin Kafusi. I think you were right on. I think that, again, we apologize. We are not linguists by any means, me especially. Uh, but you guys probably know that. It also doesn't help. Again, we didn't know right. the pool. So, like, we can't, there's, we can't practice yes. these Thank names you. off the cuff. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. Let's see what we can find out about him. It looks like he at least spent some time with the 49ers. Comes from BYU, uh, which I like mm -hmm. BYU. BYU, I mean, I, I've been to Salt Lake and beautiful city, by the way. And BYU has a beautiful you need campus. to go out there oh, sometime. Great hiking. Great hiking. Oh, yeah. Really? So he spent some time with the Saints, Jets, and the 49ers. Like I said, BYU. Um, doesn't look like he. Oh, he was also. He was drafted in the 10th round uh, by the Battle Hawks, but didn't sign with the league. All right. Really? So. Well, I'll be darned. I'll be darned. Well, and we'll see. Does that happen here again? Uh, maybe, uh, maybe rethinking that step then I, is I, the case. I think what know? happened is, is a um, he got. I think he got an offer to join the Jets practice squad or something along those lines. Where, I mean, yeah, you let the guy go, right? Uh, especially before mm -hmm. the season starts. Now there was some there was some things in the X, uh, XFL where. I can't remember who uh, Josh Johnson. They wanted to, the Lions wanted to pick Josh Johnson back up, and the XFL said no. But I get it from the tier right. one quarterback standpoint. Um, Got a new pick right. in. It is for the Philadelphia Stars, and I just great. I just clicked off the darn darn pick. There it is, Michael Rodriguez the third, Louisiana Tech. All right. All right. Let's see what we got from him here. We'll pull him up on the screen as well, so everybody can take a look here. So we're kind of moving along again. They, they're keeping the pace going. 
And I like a third. I like, uh, you know, y- you see a lot of juniors and, and seconds, but thirds, and once you get into that fourth, I mean, that's a proud lineage right there. We do have a city, and he is a CFL uh, talent as well. Just as that's one of his, his one place he's already been. It's the first thing that comes up when you look, up, look right. him up as well. So where did he play? Does it say? So Louisiana, so yeah, Louisiana Tech, according to LA Tech's site, he was a red shirt, redshirt senior in 2018, saw actions in 12 games as a left tackle with 10 of those being starts. Not bad. And has honors of all conference USA honorable mention from that 2018 season. Got a new pick for the generals, oh. Kelvin Ashley uh, from Auburn. So again, Ooh. big name school starting to come in here. Uh, as we look through, let's see what we can find out about the rest of his career. Calvin Ashley. Spent some time with the Bucks. We're seeing a lot of the a lot of former Bucks here. This has to be at least the third one that I've seen so far tonight. Well, okay, so this is curious. Um, if this is the same Calvin Ashley that I'm looking at, um, according to HBC, HBCU Game Day. Um, looks like he is, this is an unretired opportunity because he had announced, uh, back in August of last year that he was retiring from football after being waived by Tampa Bay. Hmm. Um, looks like that was from ment- uh, mental, focusing on mental health. So it might've taken a spell off. Can't be mad Coming at back that. into the fray. Mm-hmm. Wait, nope. This might be the wrong. Unless I'm looking at the wrong Kelvin Ash. It's very possible. Yeah, Again, the name isn't very like unique. So we do have another pick, though. Uh, and this one, I apologize going into it. This one, it Tayton Saltis? Saltes? Taking a look. Uh, I would say, I would say Saltis. Either one, I would say Saltis. Sorry, guys. T- if any of you guys are watching, I truly apologize from the bottom of my heart. But, uh, Again, I am not a linguist by any means. Let's see what we can find on him. So we got New Mexico. Spent some time with the Jets here. It looks like in 2021. Uh, signed with the Jets, undrafted, free rookie. Waived August 9th. So he, he was only there for a little bit. Um, but he's back on. Oh, it looks like he was uh, uh, placed on injury reserve August 9th and then released ultimately October 25th. So, again, it's one of those guys, I mean, really coming in to make a name for himself. I mean, this guy's straight, like right out of school, basically, right? Fresh mm-hmm. feet, fresh body. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, Panthers picking up their second tackle there. Most likely your, most likely one of your starters at that point, at that yeah. position. Yeah, yeah. For myself, for ourselves, for myself here, and for the fan, Panthers fans still in the chat here. And I mean, you can't be mad at that. Like I said, I, I like the younger picks. I like that. Um, I mean, it was kind of something expected going into this. Not to be fair, right? That, well, the mer- that's the majority you're seeing that continue. Is it's a lot of dudes that have been either practice squad, reserve contract, uh, for like th- like two or three seasons. And they're taking that another chance is what it is. That, that's where we're seeing right it. on. So we're waiting on the breakers now breakers up next. So we're halfway through the sixth round. So we're halfway through the, the, the first night of the draft right now, then, right? No, no, I guess we'll be halfway through after this round. Well, after this round. you're definitely halfway through the round. Yeah, we're halfway so through the round, sure. but not halfway through the draft until the next four picks. That's right. Mm-hmm. Little pea brain math doesn't work so good in here. <laughs> 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 you feel, yeah, I feel you. So my, my great grandpa, my grandpa, my uncle, and my dad were all engineers. There's a reason okay. I'm not. <laughs> I don't like math. <laughs> I don't like it. Oh man. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah, I'm the first one out of my family not to work for Chrysler. It's it's really kind of sad to be honest hey. with you. And we well, um, I'll interrupt you here. We do have our breakers right. pick. Donnell Green, Minnesota. Let's pull him up here. Again, Donnell Green, Minnesota. That's another thing. We've been seeing a lot of guys from the Midwest, and I always say Midwest is the best. Um, So 
And again, if you any of uh, I know the Panthers fans come out strong, so I assume there's a lot of Midwestern USFL fans out there. Um, but I, I assume they're liking these picks. Yeah, let's see here. So 2018 season for Green, uh, played in 11 games, started 12 as left tackle. Um, that was for Minnesota here. Um, Looks like he spent some time with the Jags as well. Let's see what mm-hmm. else we can find. And actually, before he came to Minnesota, he was at uh, Coffeyville Community College. So came oh, up okay. there before transferring over to Minnesota for three seasons. Very nice. I love seeing that kind of stuff. Nice, nice job. By the way, Minnesota's website, nice job. They even have a pronunciation. like uh, Man, play. we need that for all of these. <laughs> I mean that that see that's something that's underrated by people. I think that's that doesn't get looked at enough. You know, I like that. Let's see who we have on the board now. So we have the yeah, gamblers. Big old, big old Let's Big see Ten who we guy. got for my team. Let's give this a refresh. I have a feeling it's going to be up there. It's not mm-hmm. up there. Okay, all right. And keep the, and keep in mind that is uh, round six. Keeping this on edge. Yeah. So that's round six pick five. So you got just a reminder for the draft order. With here for round six, so the gamblers, and then we finish off with stallions, maulers, and we do another round where we do the the snake in the reverse order that we've been doing with this offensive line again, and then keep on going until we hit QB. So yeah, so we have a couple, what, another round of offensive tackles. Then we're going into cornerbacks, right? That's what it looks uh, let's like. see. So yeah. round, yep. So round seven's tackles. We hit cornerbacks, four of them that will get yeah. knocked out, not eight through eleven. And then we'll get that final quarterback selection in the night. So if you guys really want to know who the backups are, if you want to see your favorite QB for sure, and if you want to see, of course, corners, one of them I, I got to interview, and I'm hoping uh, Zim Will- Zim Zimbalist Williams or Zim Williams as he goes by. I I also hope that he does get picked up. He got signed up on Monday for his contract, so I'm hoping that's the case. And I see Hilo Sports. Nice to see hey, you, guys. My buddies from from Belly Up. Um, Aaron Ellis has not been drafted. He didn't get, he did not get picked up in the first round. There are eight more picks for the round 12 plus compensatory, depending on if they will get that for the quarterback selections, but that is going to be coming up. So if you want to wait until the 10 o'clock ish time, <laughs> time frame, you'll probably see that. Let's see. Houston. Come on, buddy. Kevin Sumlin taking his time Kevin today, Sumlin. taking his time <laughs> yes, today. Is. Still not up. Kevin Sumlin. Time Kev, is running my out, my man. <laughs> tick tock, tick tock. So funny, one little rule th- rule set, for example, if you don't draft in your time frame. So if you miss, you still can draft. That is, You can still keep on trying to make your pick. However, now you have two teams on the clock. So if, for example, in this scenario right now, it's the gamblers that would be up. So your next pick on, of course, I click right off it, it as I'm doing that, doing this. Okay, here we go. So your gamblers, for example, if they don't get this pick out right now, then the stallions would be able to pick as well during that time. And they could steal a player if it's on that draft order. Just keeping right. that in mind. All right, Sumlin, don't screw this up then. Don't get the I mean, stallions. Hey. All right, here we go. And someone's and, in. Hey, former you- Houston Roughneck as well, Avery Genesee. And I've actually met him hey. a couple times at the meet and greets. Funny guy, good guy. This is a, you know what? I was giving you a hard time, Coach Sumlin, but you, you came, you hooked it up, brother. I ain't even mad at this pick. Rough him up, keeping that Houston springtime connection. I'm telling you, I now I like this one just because we we very much got to see uh, like. This was the, the best team in the XFL. They had it like stellar, like June Jones run offense. They did a great job protecting PJ Walker. Genesee was one of those guys anchoring it. So the gamblers get to bring somebody back to that same market and they'll get to anchor it for that, for that. Now, as here's, well. so, here's something interesting. Went to school, Texas A&M. So yeah. we're seeing funny we're seeing enough, a, some interesting things starting to happen because He's 28. He, I'm trying to think of the timeline. That it's very likely that he was there with Sumlin. And now we have another one, another Louisiana Tech pickup for the Stallion. Well, not 
for the Stallions, but another Louisiana Tech product coming out here for the USFL. O'Shea Dugas, or Dugas, it's one of, one of the two, again, pronunciation-based, um, coming out. Looks like he had some time there with the Bengals as well, according to the card, as we'll take a look at his setup. One more pick in the six left to the Maulers. And then we are. Then we are actually halfway through the flipping draft. This I is know. better than I could have expected. Way less technical difficulties than I expected as well. So congratulations to everybody in the chat not seeing us fumble around. <laughs> I mean, nobody really wants to do that. I joke about it, but I don't really like the tech. <laughs> I don't really like the technical difficulties, but if I don't joke about it, um, a hurt inside. So yeah, it looks like the Bengals is, uh, he spent most of his yeah. time here. Another player. It's only been out about three years. Dugas said his senior year in 2019 for LA tech. Um, funny enough. So that would be still about the time that skip Holtz was coaching LA tech. So you, that's another connection one, two, two draft picks in a row guys that they're, they know what they're going to get from right. these players. Um, they were on these rosters for for, they were on these rosters or for these teams, at, or at least for a duration right. at some point, or were a close relation to it. Because I know someone that's right on the border of his end of his tenure was, of course, with Genesee. But still, those connections back to those schools. All right. So one more pick in the sixth. And I, and I know this is my fault, so I apologize. But I've been pounding these waters like they're candy. I'll, I'll tell you what, we All got right. that final six round pick, at least unless it's compensatory. Isaiah Battle, Clemson, oh. going to All the right. Maulers. Let's pull him up here. Again, I, I, I'm, we're seeing some, I'm surprised by the number of bigger name schools that we are seeing. Yeah, a lot of power fives so far. Um, or, I mean, a lot of power fives are, are power lower. Right. The other five, is that what they yeah. call it? Power, the group yeah. of five. I was saying lower five. It's group of five. I know this. <laughs> But yeah, a lot of, a lot of group of fives too. Uh, so Isaiah battle coming out solid, solid stuff there. Um, as you're looking up details, Stefan, uh, I see Elliot plays retro bowl stream tomorrow. No, unfortunately that's not the case. Um, issue is we have, uh, until further notice, big <laughs> regular d boring jobs. Yeah, we have unfortunately. to go to. So, uh, otherwise, yeah, we'd probably jump on with you folks and maybe do a midday, like morning day stream, but not Here's yet. What we'll do. Hey, US, we'll, you know. we'll definitely be talking. We'll, we'll do, we'll do a recap of the first round and we're going to be going over at least all the big names in the second round for our Friday show. So stay tuned to that. If you haven't hit that button, if the subscribe button's still red, click that. It builds morale. Click, click the bell as well. Cause that's when you'll know when we go live, when our videos drop. And if you're more of an audio guy, we're on basically every podcast platform you can think of. So just look up the USFL podcast or there's links down in the description. Actually, go on. We have a pick. Do we have our pick? Well, I was about to say, well, we don't have a pick. We're, the sixth round is over, though. They did announce that those were all the picks. So that is official. Battle, though, in an XFL product, Seattle yes. Dragons. Right on. Yeah, so he he has a pretty decent amount of experience here too. I lost his page, but so we have the Rams, both St. Louis and Los Angeles, Chiefs, sub, uh, Seahawks, Panthers, and then Dragons. So I ain't even mad at the. Uh, I can't be mad at any of the Spring League guys coming. So nah. here's here's I'm, I hate to do it to you, Zach. I'm gonna put you on by yourself one more time. I got to use the little boys' room. I've been like I said, I've been pounding down these waters like it ain't no thing. But I will oh, be back yeah, hey, soon. Feel feel free. I I will be able I will be able to gladly talk with the crowd. Uh, Fat guy sports. What round are we on? We are starting round seven, currently. Uh, we are still in the. We are still currently in the offensive tackles at the moment. This is the final round of tackle pickups, and then we will have four straight rounds of cornerbacks. So you'll be getting a lot of defensive picks here coming at you very soon. Tell you what, guys, though, I've been a uh, draft pretty solid so far, I would say. Um, I know that some people did want more of an official, you know, of course, draft broadcast. Here's my deal with that. I think we've been analyzing the league as a very much it's in crunch. It's trying to get the essentials out of the way. If you, it's going pretty well social media wise so far. 
I think next year, you get through this first year, as Daryl Moose Johnston has said, you get on to year two. And if you get into year two, you're successful. And then essentially, you can then broadcast it. So I think next year, you'll be seeing a broad... I think next year, with Speculation Zone in mind, because I got to bring that up, you'll be seeing that as the possibility. That's that's me being honest with you. And I did see somebody bring up the question, what is my favorite pick so far for the Michigan Panthers? Good question, because I'm actually... So Patterson, I'll admit, I pedigree, or at least his status, I'm like... Okay, not bad for the name. Um, he's not my favorite pick. Um, he's also not he's actually not my favorite quarterback that uh, we wanted out of this draft. Shocker, I know. Um, no, I don't mean to be mean. Um, I guess right now, if I were to say my favorite guy overall, that I would be like, yeah, this 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 feels very good. Either one of the edge rushers, uh, Adewale Adeo, Ad. Ad Adoye or um, Chase Demore, so far, I think I'm 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 going to say those two picks are definitely ones that I'm going to hang my hat on and say yeah, that that's those are my choices right now. So I'm I'm liking I'm liking the edge rushers for Michigan. I'm expecting a pretty good defense for the Panthers. I, I am I think that that's going to be their strength so far. I mean, corner we'll find out soon. <laughs> we're we got one more round of tackles and then we're gonna have that jumping in. But right now a lot a lot of a lot of power five guys, a lot of TSL talent, some XFL guys scattered in there, some CFL talent mixed in with those resumes. Then we got some of the small schools too. Ooh, favorite Mauler's pick. Again, still kind of Trying to get back to the draft page to see if we got anything drop for our next pick. Not seeing anything yet. But let's see. If I were to say favorite Mauler's pick, huh? Let me think here. Because I'll tell you right now, if you already know how I felt, I'm not... Kyle Laletta, I'm like, okay, you know. Hey, like I said, maybe maybe... Maybe he turns the corner. I'm not, but I'm I'm like, all right, you know, at this point. Um, out of the picks for the Maulers, I actually like the Isaiah Battle pickup. So I think their tackles are pretty solid. Uh I I like both I like both of the tackle positions here. I think they did a really good job. Kirby Wilson has, I think, did a pretty good job with that. Um I also think Carlo Camp, not a bad selection, too. I'll give you that. I guess we're just going through the ringer. Best Stallions pick now. Again, still waiting. Unless I, I'll double check, of course, one more time that I'm not missing a pick while I'm answering these questions. As. Nope, nothing yet. At least not anything new yet that I can see. Bing bong, I'm back. (laughs) You kill me when you text me that. I swear (laughs) to God. (laughs) It's, I. I don't know what it is about Bing Bong that just makes me like die a little inside with You know laughter. what really makes me sad about it? I've been saying Bing Bong like that, like unironically for years. And then somehow this year it okay. became popular. I was like, oh man, I should have been saying it online like all the time. I, my wife, <laughs> my wife, I go, I walk in the room, I'm like, Bing Bong, guess what? <laughs> so when she saw it become ah. popular, she's like, your thing is popular. I said, it ain't from me. But speaking of which, we're on the second half of the draft. So I'm, I'm getting a little getting a little bubbly here guys oh he's bringing it bring out some drinks it's gonna be fun i but i'm gonna i'm gonna pace myself i'll probably only have this one drink responsibly hi hi that's all we say hi hi says zach is my friend do you know hi hi uh i i hope maybe i don't know the alias but i i'll call you my i'm definitely gonna say you're my friend right now kent whitaker's that signed this guy up for subscribing and you know what click the bell it builds morale mm-hmm. if you haven't already you're gonna feel a little bit better about right. yourself and i, I did say no oh, you go first. Oh, well, you i was just first. gonna uh, remind again if we hit 3k by the end of this stream we're giving away a second jersey so we're less than 800 away 
We're less than 800. We probably have like another hour and a half. We're at seven, 747 subscribers left. If we get 747, so anybody in here that hasn't subscribed, hit the bell as well. You'll be entered. We might announce a second cool. winner. And again, Tim Skelton is the winner of the first giveaway. We'll announce it again on Friday. We'll announce it on social media. I'm, I, that was actually that was actually what I was going to pass along. So yes, you, thank you. you did exactly Perfect. what I was doing. Great. So let's take a look here. So who do we have on the board again? I, I apologize. I stepped away. So, so yeah, now we're on to the, we're on to round, round seven, wow, round. Yes. Round seven. So back up to the Maulers again. So we're back up there. Maulers first going back down to the bandits last. Get that up. What we've been answering so far as of uh, the last few chat items is people have been asking like, what's your favorite pickup for said teams and such. Because ask the Panthers, I actually be honest with you, my favorite picks, my favorite pick wasn't Chase Patterson. It was uh it was actually Chase Demore or uh, uh Ottawa uh, or Ottawa. Uh, oh my God, uh, Ottawa. Uh, no, I'm gonna mess that up. You I know, know who what, you're talking I'm, about. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna pull it up so I can see. Ottawa Aduye. Ottawa. And I'm thinking this because I'm thinking I'm trying to like, dude, it's Ottawa Agunle. Just take a right, right. off. <laughs> but. Yeah, I, I like the defensive edge rushers as the Maulers just dropped their next tackle selection. Charles Baldwin, Youngstown State. He'll be the first one off the board for the Maulers on this seventh All round. Right. Sign him up. First pick of the seventh round. Let's take a look and see what we can find out about this young man here. And again, yeah, we apologize. If we had the list prior to, we would have had a lot of recon um, going into it. Um, so we do we do apologize here. And again, with this name. Well, it looks like he does have CFL experience. Now, if you look up Charles Baldwin yeah. without the without like the university, you get basically a military, it looks like a military personnel member. So just a heads up. Um, but yeah, let's see. Few, had a few years with Youngstown State there. And it looks like he had some time in the CFL, as listed on their website. At least was put in their database. Yeah, so I don't know if he was signed. He was definitely in a draft pool at some point. Yeah, the info, even like Youngstown State's website info is kind of all over the place too. And that's the unfortunate part. Some of these guys, we're just not going to be able to find a lot of information about. Give it a mm -hmm. couple weeks or a couple a month or so. When we see the play, we're going to know who some of these guys are a lot more than doing some research. That's for sure. Uh, okay, I think I I think I found them now. So, the football database website gave this best. 2015, um, he was with a in a National Junior College Athletic Association. Uh, ASA J Junior College in New York, it looks like. Had a year at Kansas and then Youngstown State in 2018. And it looks like his only recorded his only other recorded one is uh with the Lions, BC Lions in the CFL. Got me excited there when you said the Lions. I said, Oh, and Andrew the Murphy roar. adding a bit of yeah, Andrew Murphy batting a bit here, saying Baldwin was a high recruit to Bama before issues. Yeah, I saw that it looked like he uh, he had to leave for some reason. I didn't see the exact reason. Oh, which actually it's, his jersey is is Bama in the picture, but still, you know, we, we do have our next pick though, Justice Powers right. uh, from UAB, right? Ooh. For the Birmingham Ooh, okay. Flippin' Stallions. What a, what a, I mean, <laughs> the dudes already has the home field advantage kind of two times over now. Love that. Mm -hmm. I love the home time pick hometown picks, if you will. Yes, indeed. So, oh, uh, to speak, talk about, so you got hometown picks, you got pick, you got pictures from the event. Another one, you go back to RJ Young's, uh, page, you got Todd Haley sitting next to Jordan Ta'amu at the table. Take a look at this here. Yeah, it looks like uh, the old ball coach is getting, uh, getting to know his quarterback right now. I like to see. So let's pull up here. Oh, that's Jeff Fisher. Yeah, Scott, that's a wrong. So he's got a whole Scott bunch Adamson. of good stuff going on here. Our, our buddy Scott Emson from Bama or, or in Birmingham, uh, where he <laughs> where he kind of has been there for major, been there for a lot of his journalistic career. You know, with the uh, retweet of the Justice Powers pickup, go Blazers. 
massive Blazers fan if you get to know oh, yeah. Scott. So. Yeah, yeah. Or just fan of football. That's another one. I can't <laughs> wait to go meet him when we're when we're in town. When we're when we're down out there. Again, we're we're gonna meet so many people at Springstock, but we're gonna meet a lot of people that I mean, we've talked to these guys online, but we never met them in person, right? And yes. that's why I love doing these types of things. I've always been a fan of the internet. I've always been a fan of meeting people on the internet. I mean, I kind of grew up on the internet. I'm not going to lie. Uh, so, I mean, this is kind of that natural extension of that. Yeah. Your next uh, tackle pickup for the Gamblers is All in. Right. My guy, John Yarborough from Richmond. Again, the name sounds very familiar. Again, I uh, is it a CFL thing or is it a spring league thing? We're gonna, I'm going to have to look him up again. Uh, Yarborough, let's see. Let's see. Richmond Athletics. He was in the CFL. Maybe that's what it was. At least he's in the database. He's in the database for him. Hamilton Tiger Cats. Right on. Okay. He also has XFL stats. He was with the Vipers. He was maybe that's what, maybe it was one of those that I, that I remember him from here. So again, at least the, he had, at least his record is on the stats page. Also looks like he had a spell with the Carolina Panthers at one point. Right. So again, we're seeing a good little mix of uh, of experience. We have the CFL, which I think these guys are going to excel in a league like this. Uh, again, with the XFL, I mean they're almost perfect fit for it. And then having that NFL experience sprinkled in, sign it up, sign it up. Mm -hmm. So now we have USFL and draft is trending now. Let's see if we can. I don't know. Is, is there an easy way to see like what the order? Of the trends are, I don't know how to do that. Uh, oh, maybe if I go to trending. <laughs> also, Matt Lyons coming in here, good another friend of us in the community as well, uh, pointing out that he also was appears to be with the TSL. So he does have a bit of background there, Very too. Nice. So real quick, just to answer what I was saying a second ago, USFL's trending number 12 right now. Number oh. 12 USFL trending. And that's for the United States. I mean, I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm. I mean, let's see. How do I? I don't know how to change it in here. The marketing machine is ramping going, up. Th those millions of dollars that they seemingly paid for those emojis are paying off. Oh, and we do have another one for the round. Thanks, David. David. David Kislinski there with our good friend of the show. Marquise Lucas, West Virginia, going to the New Orleans Breakers. All right. All right. Let me pull up that for the chat here. Let me just find the right page. West Virginia. I, and that's another place I love is West Virginia. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been. Not a lot of people travel to West Virginia. Not I got a – so I <laughs> – honestly, since Kelsey – like Hilo is on here, I'm assuming it's Kelsey who's on there. So we, we had to do a – we did our a, a tailgate excursion to Pittsburgh oh. last year. We had to travel through West Virginia, and I, you know, I do want to I do want to drive through again just for the scenery. Like I, I the mountainous like oh. range with the Appalachia is great. Um, but it was funny. We just drove through the one time, and it's like just <laughs> get through. Like it was just like we just drive through West Virginia. I'm like, oh come on, we can stay. It's like no. Nah. I'll tell you this. <laughs> but no, I I'll definitely want to check. If it you out. ever go back through West Virginia, and if anybody in the chat is from West Virginia. Tell me I'm wrong, because I you know I'm not. You gotta stop at Tudor's Biscuit World. Tudor's, Tudor's Biscuit, Biscuit World. World is the most magical place in the planet. As you can expect, everything is served on a biscuit. And if you're lucky, <laughs> if you're lucky, I can't remember the name of it, but there it, it, there's certain locations that have a Tudor's Biscuit World on one side and like a spaghetti house. On the other, uh, uh, I, I, I'll, I'll be honest. I didn't try the spaghetti house, but I did try the biscuit and Tudor's biscuit world is, I mean, all you need in your life. That's all you need. So if you ever go through West nice. Virginia, it's a shame because they're only in West Virginia. So I've only had one chance to get them two chances. I take it back. And I didn't hmm. do that. So Mark, so Marquise Lucas is a familiar name. Uh, besides his stops with the Bills, Vikings, Falcons, Buccaneers, he is with the Apollos in 2019, and he was with the Vipers in 2020. Interesting, interesting. So this is, I'm, I'm just sorry, I I got sidetracked by a new tweet. By uh, sure. Well, we also have we also have another pick in too. Oh, perfect, so perfect. So let's. See. Yeah, and this is for uh, good old yeah. Panthers. Joshua Dunlap, University of Texas, San Antonio. 
give this a refresh here. There we go. There we go. Let me update our little tracker here. And again, if you guys do jump off and you want to keep up beyond the uh, USFL social media, which if you haven't, make sure you're liking and sharing these posts. We need, let's get the USFL the number one trending. Come on. We're at number oh, 12. Yes. I want a hand in that. So everybody take a break. Don't turn off the stream by any means, but go over to Twitter, share some of these things. Let's show them that we want the USFL, the everyone in the world to know who the flipping USFL is and when they're coming. So Joshua, yeah, no Dunlap, joke about let's that. Take a look at him. Let's take a look at your new, your new guy here. So it looks like he did have an, he was an undrafted free agent that did take a stop with the chargers in 2020. Um, according to the athletic page here, um, honorable mention, all conference USA selection on offensive line in 2019. Uh, earned starting nod as a right tackle for all 12 of his games for UTSA. Very nice. So has, of course, another say, got it, got some guys with some pedig pedigree here, at least in the mentions. Uh, but again, shortstop in the NFL guy that's taking a look at these alternative approaches and say, and put his hat in the ring and they're taking them up. Hey Zach, so. I don't know. My, my, uh, I'm not able to block people in the chat. Oh, I can, I might be able to from here. I, I got him. I got him. Mm -hmm. Get out of okay. here, you, with the webcams again. They really, they're coming oh, out. Geez. Oh, jeez, yeah. they're different accounts. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Got a few. Got a you few. sneaky <laughs> sneakies. Yes. Oh, we got another one, the Generals. All right, let's take a look. Round seven, pick six, Terry Poole, San Diego State University. All right, it looks like he had some time with the Seahawks, at least, here. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look. Terry Poole. Another name that sounds familiar, but I honestly, I could be mistaking him for someone I know in real life. <laughs> I'm not joking. Uh, so <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> uh, that's too funny. Um, looks like he has been, uh, he looks like he has been out of, uh, out and about for a little longer than some of our more recent pickups mm -hmm. though. Uh, 2013, at least according to his athletic page from SDSU, that is his last name, named honorable mention all Mountain West performer in 2013. Also named 2013 Mountain West Fall All Academic Team. So started all 12 games too for the uh, for the for SDSU as well. So he, we we he, we have some more stuff. So, so he was with the AF with San Diego, and then okay. with the XFL with the Roughnecks as well, and most recently played for the Argonauts. And the AAF, that makes sense based on, uh, honestly, his pick, because he's Seaside, California is where he was born. So if you remember the Alliance, they did more regional-based drafting. Mm -hmm. So that was definitely the closest you're going to get was picking up for San Diego. Makes sense why he went over right, there, though. Right on. But yeah, he's definitely been more through. The, he's had a little more experience than some of these other guys, a lot more stops uh, with more time, but someone that looks like has at least been through the alt ringer alt football ringer and back in. Well, I now. mean, quite honestly, if you look at other than the CFL and maybe the NFL stuff, both of his spring league shots were cut shy, not because of him, but by the leagues themselves. Uh, right. So we haven't really, I mean, realistically, again, we mentioned it earlier. If you're coming from the roughnecks, there's a chance you're a very good player, especially for this, this level of play. So yeah, I will never be mad with that. Ray Thompson asking question. Do you know when the season schedule will be, will be published now? We don't, there's nothing concrete. Um, there's been like hints that possibly once the draft's done, they're going to just drop it on, on, on us. So I would say anytime past tomorrow afternoon, start kind of mm -hmm. scouring social because they're that's coming up. They got the championship game out of the way. The rest of this has just got to be, marking games down out of the 10 weeks. So it'll be coming. It's going to be there within the next, I would say within, if I had to predict speculation zone, predict that is keep in mind, yep. I would say within the next week, you're going to get this. I think so too. If not, if not baseline, it has to be out by training camp. Mm -hmm. So March 21st, you know, it has to be out by then. Simple yeah. as that. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt if we see them dropped it before this Friday. I really hope. And if you guys are at the USFL are listening Drop it Thursday. Drop it Thursday because my boy Zach and I, that's when we record. We want to talk about it so the fans can hear about it Friday. But if you drop it Friday, I ain't even going to be mad at you either as long as we get it. 
but it could be next week. It could be, it's going to be soon. It isn't going to be drawn out. I don't think much longer after this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's going to be coming up. Oh, okay. So here's another one. Might, might want to, a little tidbit, local reporter, uh, Lyndon Blake okay. from WBRC. Um, Skip Holtz, I'm telling you, dude is just, I, I'm like, I, I didn't follow him as closely just because I'm not connected as well with like certain, some of the schools he's been to, like LA, Louisiana Tech. But dude just seems like a joy to be right, around. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> like, like it was like, uh, I guess Skip, it looks like from what I said, I didn't listen in fully yet. But it looks like he called. He got called. Or basically said happy birthday to the to the reporter's dad on <laughs> air. <laughs> dude is just a dude's just a joy. Right. It seems. No, yeah, he seems fun. He seems fun. I watched him on Outkick earlier. He looks like he's having a blast out there. And he did say in Outkick, he says <clears throat> he thinks he's going to have the most fun of his career here in the USFL. And That's cool. I, I honestly believe him. I mean, especially, I mean, look at uh, Spurrier. It's a dang shame he never got to finish that Apollos coaching with that season. Because I feel like that was oh, the yeah. most fun he was having out there, too. It's a shame we never got to see him come back to any of these spring leagues. But uh, here we are. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> here we are, indeed. We're just waiting right. on the stars so, now. Waiting on the stars. Yeah. Stars and bandits would round out round seven. And again, compensatory picks in mind well, that should in theory round it out. So we just got to see them. They're probably holding over or they might be pushing the compensatory. Right, right. Oh my, oh my gosh. We got more content. The Michigan Panthers dropping the moment that Shea Patterson got drafted. This looks like a legitimate, like, yeah. or at least it's not as, of course, it's not like radio city big, like with all the size, but like they had them sitting at tables, they like it right ready to go you know this felt like real for these people you know they're dressed i'll up. tell you this this is an this event. definitely makes me feel like we might actually get a, a televised draft next year i mean the, the effort that they i put think into we this. should Here, I, i'm gonna go ahead and play this video real quick actually it's 19 seconds so i'm just gonna go ahead and hit play now <laughs> Cool. I mean, you, you can see you got uh, media personnel there. The Jeff Fisher greeting, of course, up there on the main stage. But you can tell, like, these guys got invited. They got their families there. Yeah. They got, you know, all the other QBs. Like, that's yeah, cool. Yeah, for sure. That that feels real. And that's, you know? I mean, you want it to, right? This, I, I like it. I, and I, I honestly, I think we're going to see way more video content come out of this event in the next couple of days, too. Tell me we're not going to mm -hmm. see a package video of each of these guys coming up. But sorry, we do have our next pick in Jacob. Yeah, thanks, Braden. <laughs> Jacob Paul Burton from Baylor. Baylor coming ah. to the stars here. Um, uh, there is no picture in the uh, in their post, so it's another one of those uh, maybe smaller uh, school and uh, that school guys, but maybe not so much known about him. Let's see what we can find. Mean and then while you're looking that up, we had the bandits. Oh, they were sweet. ready to go. Jawan Bushel Beatty getting picked up number eight in round seven. Let's take a look out of Michigan. All right. And I, again, I ain't even mad at that. Uh, yeah. I got big blue getting represented more. Let's see what we got here. If I can find Houston, there we go. Houston gamblers. Let's give them a refresh there. Oh, wait, no. Oh, the bandits, the bandits. Why am I looking at Houston? The uh. And you're actually, so Beatty, you're actually getting as a, uh, not only a Roughnecks pickup from there, but also was just on the Red Blacks last season. We're seeing a lot of guys, and, actually. Well, not a lot, but we've seen a good amount of guys that were on the USFL, like, or, uh, sorry, the CFL, like, recently, recently. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, it's, that's not, I mean, other stops he had, uh, came out of Michigan in 2019, uh, undrafted. Was went went to the then Washington Redskins. Uh, also had to stop with the Cowboys that same year. Went to the Roughnecks for 2020. Came out when with went with Carolina the same year, and then CFL 2021 with the Red Blacks. So uh, bouncing around. Looks like he's back in the states, getting another opportunity. Nice to see. Only 25. Another young, another young Power Five guy coming on in. Big old, big old tackle. For sure. <laughs> Someone you're gonna, someone you're definitely gonna want on either side. Well, he, at least in this round, he might be more backup tackle, I guess. Right. But you know, could be some competition. 
it's just a little, you know, still has, still might be arguable that might not happen, but another beefy guy that might be protecting uh, Jordan Ta'amu or stepping in for Ta'amu. Right on. Right on. Or to help yeah, with yeah, Ta'amu. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I know what you mean. Problem. I know what you mean. I'm being, <laughs> just got to keep that. Yeah, keep, got to keep my words keep on. Keep pitchforks here. and fire away. We corrected it, folks. <laughs> <laughs> So that rounds out round seven. We're in round eight now. We're waiting on round eight. Tampa Bay Bandits are going to start off, so they're getting the back-to-back pick here. But boy, oh boy, four rounds left. Only four rounds left in the first day. And you know what? Well, well, yeah, we got uh, – well, actually, I mean, well, technically we'll have five if you count this one because you'll have the four. Oh, right. You'll have cornerback, 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 quarterback. Right. See how that sounded yes. confusing when I said corner and, and quarter? But you'll get, now we get ball hawks. We mm-hmm. talk about people that are going to be swatting away those passes coming this, up here. This is what I'm looking out for. I'm telling you, my guy, Zim, Zim Wallace Williams, I am hoping to God he gets picked up here. I I, I mean, obviously there's compensatory, or the uh, there's obviously the later, later draft mm-hmm. there going on. <laughs> but I'm telling you, man, I'm hoping. I, if we can get as many friends of the show, and that's why I, the one thing I'm sad is guards aren't today, because you know, our man, former Battle Hawk, Bruno Reagan. Oh I my mean, God! Sign yeah, him up. We won't even get to hear. We won't even get to hear about him till tomorrow. Oh, and actually, we do have compensatory All picks. All right, let's see who we got. So round seven, pick nine, Matthew Snow, from Pace. I'm gonna have to look that up. It says Pace. Um. I have not. That one is a. That one I'm gonna have to check on. That one. Yeah, Pace University football, based out of. So it's Division Two school. The Pace Settlers is what their mass. Because I'm sorry, I've not I've actually not heard of this one before. It's always fun though when you get one of these schools that you haven't heard of, right? It, it's mm-hmm. a little. It, I don't know. I don't know much about them. I mean, so my neighbor. Uh, I won't say what school. Oh, that is Pleasantville, New York. Sorry, <laughs> that was what I was making sure. But your neighbor, please oh, go my on. My neighbor's tell. son. He's a freshman in college, and he plays football for. I won't say the school because I don't want to like out them, but it's a very small school. It's their first year of having a, a football program. And I okay. mean, him and I chat because, I mean, he knows what I do. And I, he's a fun guy. Anyway, I'll chat with, oh, these webcam yeah. people, get out of here. Sorry, I, <laughs> I will get you people over and over if I have to. So anyway, um, but yeah, I, I just, I kind of love talking to him about the smaller school thing. And he, he goes up there. It's up in, um, actually, I won't say the state either. Not that anybody could find me or him, but better safe than sorry. But it's a, it's a small school way up north i won't lie though the dude straight up bought a party van or a party truck a party bus a party really? bus really to go back and forth from texas to where his, his kid plays up north and i'm a little uh-huh. jelly of that i'm not gonna lie either <laughs> that's that's <laughs> that's funny or that's I, that's awesome really oh we have another compositor or compensatory i almost <laughs> did it again uh panthers getting another tackle um Pick 10 in the seventh round. Joshua Taylor, Mississippi Valley State. All right. Michigan Panthers. So Panthers loading up a little more on that on that offensive line there. So, so yeah, let's see. So, again, that pick being, I repeat, Joshua Taylor, Mississippi Valley. So, let's see here. Pulling up his... Stuff. Ooh, he is a uh, recent then. Oh yeah. Uh, twenty twenty one fall roster. Hmm. At least uh, if I'm, ah, uh, well, let me double check. That might. Nope, that's correct. According to Mississippi Valley Athletics. Very nice. Yep. Offensive line junior. Oh well. Wait a Uh-oh. minute. Uh oh. Uh oh. Well, now there. Now there were talks that there were some guys that would maybe be these folks very few that were going to be these college level that would go to the USFL, but we may have had, um, one here. but I mean, I'm looking like Mississippi Valley state. Cause even draft diamonds here, if you look at draft diamonds, NFL draft prospect, Joshua Taylor. So 
this is definitely looking like a guy that if he didn't forego to go to the NFL, he, t- he got the USFL d- sign up for the draft. So it, it showed, no, I'm looking at him cause he's from Mississippi Valley state. I'm looking at his roster page from Mississippi Valley state and he's a junior in 2021. Yeah. Six, six, two chillin says he has graduated. Ah. So that would be it. But going right into this, maybe, maybe judging the situation is what we got here. So let's see. Let's see. Do we get any extra picks in this round or do we move to round eight? They're keeping it exciting. That's for sure. Yeah. Round seven has concluded. There we go. go. We'll actually pull this up. So yeah, Joshua Taylor was the final. Let's pull this up here. So this is the final. So we have round seven, Charles Baldwin, Justice Powers, John Yarborough, Marcus Lewis, or Marquise Lewis, Joshua Dunlap, Dunlap. Man, I am losing... This is probably not helping, maybe. Terry Poole, Jacob Paul Burton, Juwan Bushnell Beatty, Matthew Snow, and Joshua Taylor. See, I wrapped it up good. <laughs> <laughs> so so here's the deal. Um, yeah, the, the time frame they gave was definitely not there because it is we we I just noticed the time. We have easily hit 10 o'clock and they have not gotten even to the corner back. Oh wow, yeah. So yeah, yeah. They're in for a long night then if they thought they were gonna be done. At this Honestly, point, I thought we were doing either that or these here. either that or the social media picks are going slow is what could be happening. Where, too. Honestly, I had that thought as we might be on a delay on what they're seeing live, because I mean, quite honestly, it's a lot of work to be pumping out these. Even if there's no picture of the person, just a logo, they got to be updating the the names, the schools, the the height, weight, all that stuff on these little promo cards that they're putting out. Actually, I don't know if they have the height and weight. Yeah. But, uh, you get my point. So yeah, it is very it is very possible that we're on some type of delay here. All right, we are then on round eight. Cornerbacks are now up. Corner, not yes. quarter. I gotta make sure we're saying that. So eight through eleven will be cornerbacks. The you also still have the same analytical snake draft format that has been going on since the offensive tackles. So that will be going now. Tampa Bay starting off. Pittsburgh ending it and then thus so on until we hit quarterbacks, which then will go back to the breakers getting that first pick in the second quarterback round. So keeping that up to date, we will keep going for sure. As we go, go along, see how, how these, how these picks go on as, into the night. Five, five <laughs> rounds to go. Five out. rounds to go. Now, again, it might pick up. It might pick up. I mean, especially sure. for that quarterback one, uh, that last round, I think will go pretty quick. Um, and probably as we get near the end of the rounds of these cornerbacks, maybe even the beginning, because we saw a couple times Larry Fedora, uh, Sumlin, and even Fisher, I think on a couple instances. What is going on in the chat with the L's? Uh, I don't understand. Well, I don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to see where it's just. Tam- oh, I nope. I see exactly where it is. Uh, if I'm thinking it is now, I know Zachary James put him in, but I did see Richard Conrad, Tampa Bay bandits select Snooki. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if I were to assume that's where the L's are coming from, I'll go with that. Well, there's a lot of L's. I hope that's not about us. Give us a thumbs up. <laughs> hey. Oh my gosh. So yeah, round eight looking for cornerbacks here. Um, we do have, I mean, let's look back actually at the, I guess while we're waiting, you want to look back at some of the players that were at least confirmed. Yeah. No, I think that's a good um, idea. Cause we, there, we had, cause you put down 94 that were either, they dropped their contracts or have been confirmed by other sources to have mm-hmm. done that. And actually, I don't know. Um, I will have to actually turn that back on. I think. Oh, that's right. Cause of the draft. Yeah, ticker. I can, that's I right. can do that That'd though. Be- I mean. Uh, up no, to no, you. no, I'll, I'll Other, just move it to the bottom of the page. I just need, it, it'll take me two seconds. I have it right up in front of me. So let's do that. And what I'll do is I'm just going to move it to the bottom of the list because I want everyone to see, like, the important stuff up first. Sure. Uh, let me preview that before I hit save. I've learned that many a times. Always preview your work. And let's see what we got here. Day two. You have corn. See there we go. Okay. So now give it a second. But if you update the draft tracker um, below the picks, you will see the at least the ones we were able to confirm from the player pool. Right. 
Now it's what's cool is too. I'm getting we're seeing more photos from the site. Scott's keep kind of moving around, getting some more shots. Scott, one with Mike Riley, but you can see the backdrop. They got the uh, draft logo up, but they do have a counter in there. So that you know, I mean, I was expecting, of course, if so, but it is kind of like if it, it is an official as you can get draft. There is a timer for these picks as it shows, and that is available for those teams. They are announcing them via the podium. So I even I'm I'm pulling up Scott's uh, Twitter up on the screen too. So if you haven't followed him, follow him. Like I said, he's down on the scene at the event there. Friend of the show. Oh yeah, he's friend doing of the great. Show friend of a, on social media. Um, so he's getting us a little bit of a sneak peek here. And like he says, Generals coach Mike Riley, two minutes eighteen seconds to grab a snack. Sign him up. <laughs> but I love kind of getting this inside look. And I, honestly, for an event they're not streaming, they're doing pretty dang good at uh, one. The setup, I think, is awesome looking. Like you mentioned earlier, it's kind of professional looking with the players and the, everybody's kind of dressed up. They got their family there, things like that. Yeah. And realistically, like I said, this is just going to be the beginning of the content storm because you know throughout the week, throughout the next week, especially after day two, we're going to be seeing video packages and all sorts of things that are going to come out of this event alone. So, yeah, they aren't streaming it, but you know what? By them not streaming it, it gave us the opportunity to come and have fun with you guys. And us mm-hmm. to have fun together. Exciting. Exciting times. So, oh, and we there we go. First corner off the board. Right. Delrick Abrams Jr., Colorado. All right. Tampa Bay Bandits striking to start out the eighth round. Let me just pull them up on the screen here. here Delrick Abrams Jr. that is so he is also very recently out undrafted out of Colorado in 2020 signed up with the Falcons in 2020 2021 was with the Los Angeles Rams and here he is sign him up (laughs) again I I like that I I like getting the little varied experience across a couple different areas here it's coming into the CFL the, the place to make your name known Sign them up. Uh, and so so we have the bandits up. They just made their pick, and we're moving on to the stars. I will say Andrus has been pretty quick generally today, so we'll see if that sticks around. Uh, Pulling the trigger, <laughs> so they say. <laughs> exactly. So overall, uh, like I said, I still feel this way. I don't think there's been any bad picks. I don't think there's been anything that made me scratch my head or wonder what the heck's going on. So, so far, so good. I, I mean, yeah, maybe not all of the names we've known. There's, there's some names right. that, yeah, sure, they don't have, like, name value. But realistically, I mean, that's expected, right? These guys are going to make a name for themselves now. Not, yes. you know, uh, so if you have any worries about it, especially, again, some of the names that we mentioned from the Spring League, you shouldn't be worried at all. Um, I think a lot of it's going to really come down to the coaching more than the playing. Yeah, of course, you need your players to perform and and do what they need to do. So it, I'm not concerned about it, at least. Stars now have their pick in Channing Stribling, University of All Michigan. Right. Go Blue, another Michigan another guy. Blue. I, I mean, I think we've gotten a Michigan guy on almost every team except for my flipping rough. Uh, uh-oh. Shame on me again. Gamblers on the gamblers. <laughs> there you go. There you go. <laughs> I don't know what is going on with me today because I don't even. I was going to say, we don't, we don't even know if the Rupnicks will be back. I so don't we remind can't, even, me. can't even talk about that yet. Yeah. Canning Stribling, second pick of the eighth round, going to Bart Andrus's Philadelphia Stars. Big Blue, University of Michigan there. Also, some CFL experience as well with the Tiger Cats. XFL experience with the Dragons. Tiger Cats mm-hmm. twice, so he's in the Tiger with the Tiger Mem- Cats. Memphis Express even oh, before right that. So he's got again the the kind of that magical mix of experience. Get out of here, webcam! I will keep catching you. I will. We will keep. We definitely these will. People, <laughs> these people, I tell you, they see. Oh, I'll just hide you. You can chat all you want. Go ahead. Nobody will see you, sucker. 
So is that a bit, yeah, a bit of a bounce around here. Um, let's see. And is Michigan, Michigan here for his stats? All Big Ten second team in 2016. Coaches and media voting that. Finished his career fourth highest single season total pass breakups in school history. That's nice. As well. Led in 2016, led Big Ten in pass breakups during conference play and was tied for fourth in interceptions in the conference. And was team's defensive player of the game against Wisconsin on top. So, yeah, just a few extra tidbits they added in for the site. But the big ones there. So, you know, coming out of college, all second second team, all Big Ten. Um, Michigan being very much, uh, at least in recent history, more or, well, I guess overall history, but still, I would say more recent history under John Harbaugh and before that, more of a defensive school mm-hmm. in that case. Um, you know, so you are going to have that. Uh, I think for him, you know, a lot of the film coming from seeing him in these alternative leagues, I think that definitely, as well as CFL experience, I think that helps his case for getting picked up here. So guy has been playing at least at professional level for several years in a row now. Um, he had a quick few hops in the NFL when he first came out, but mainly his stuff has been since the AAF, all things outside the NFL for the for most sure. part. We have another pick though for the generals, uh, Devante Bowsby, uh, and he has... Oh, that one's good pick. Yeah, that one's a very recognizable yep, pick. Yep. So beyond his experience all over the NFL, right? We're talking the Chiefs, Bears, Chiefs again, Eagles. We have the San Antonio Commanders of the AF, Cardinals, Broncos, Raiders, and Patriots. I mean, the dude's had a stop uh, at a lot of different places. 60 total tackles out of his uh, NFL experience. Uh, spent. It, was, it looks like he was a Super Bowl champion. Super Bowl champion. Mm-hmm. In here, yeah, he with was, what the was this the second pick of cornerbacks, third, third, uh, second pick, second pick of the, cornerbacks. So I mean, solid pick for the generals right there. Yeah. So I mean, he's been. I mean, the Commanders is where he really made his big impact, impact in the alternative football community. But yes, he is a he is a Super Bowl champion as well. Um, definitely has been in and out of the NFL and through the ringer there. Um, but is no stranger to that scene too. And also to keep in mind, so that was the generals that connection goes back to Mike Riley with the commanders. So just remember Bosby was one of the highlight real making guys for the AAF in terms of secondary. He actually did have a few nice interceptions during his Mm -hmm. tenure. Got to say, as we are getting into our next one, you know, kind of my Panthers getting this next choice. Tino Ellis, mm-hmm. Maryland. And it looks like already some time with uh, Miami based on the, the picture, yeah. highlight photo. Oh, now it's coming out. Yeah, now, I think uh, they're flying now. The Breakers, Adonis Alexander, Virginia Tech. Let's pull them up here. That was real oh, yeah. quick. No, they've been they've been they've been knocking these ones out. I think. Well, especially at the beginning of this round, they know who they want, and if they're available, why wait? Let's just get, and they're looking at that time like, oh boy, we were supposed to be done by now. Yeah. Well, I think this too. You're gonna. The cornerbacks, there's going to be, I think, a tad more competition here um, and also a little more wiggle room based on who you draft. You know, you'll have your standard two out wide, but, you know, you also want to look for your nickel guys there. You know, different defensive schemes will change how things are operated. So, you know, I think for the most part, these corners, you're going to want to get your primary guys, but you're going to have out of the positions available – Corners and receivers will probably be the ones that have the most competition in camp for what little wiggle room there is. Those are the two spots that generally have the most competition for getting those starting roster pieces, roster spots locked up. Right on. So now, now we're just waiting on the gamblers. So this one, not so fast. He, you know, it almost makes me wonder, did he want one of those other picks that came through? Cause we saw so far, the first three picks were pretty boom, boom, boom out there pretty quick, slowed down. (laughs) But again, we've seen, Kevin Sumlin, he's taking his time. The last time that I started complaining about it, he came out with a pick I couldn't argue with. So let's let's see right. what we got here. Let's see what we got. You you back you back on the complaints? Is that so, what I'm hearing? Well, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> I mean, I'll say I'm not angry with his draft picks. Uh, so far, he's done pretty well. Um, there was a couple of quarterbacks I would have liked to see, maybe. Uh, but I mean, we just didn't have an opportunity to get him early in, in the round. So. Sure. But I, I will say, I think uh, I, I always like a little bit of mystery. So Clayton Thorson, like I said, I'm going to be definitely be looking up his highlights after we wrap up tonight. Just kind of get a little refresher there. 
So I'm, I'm kind of excited not knowing, too, because if, if it was a Jordan Te'amu, I know Jordan Te'amu. Yes, I'd be happy. Mm-hmm. But I like to do the digging and learning and that kind of fun stuff. Right. Let's see here. I'm digging into Adonis Alexander, um, at least his pro experience. So he went to college, Virginia Tech, um, drafted via the supplemental NFL draft in 2018 for the then Washington Redskins. Uh, also had 10 years in Los Angeles, San Francisco, and was most recently with New Orleans um, as either an offseason or practice squad member. According to the New Orleans one, he was uh, signed with them but was waived on Baden Place on IR back in August of 18. So he was uh, there you know, for a little bit, at least in camp. Um, so he's had a little bit of time to get ready here and recover to then be here for the USFL. As in terms of his Virginia Tech days, let's see if we can get that here while we're waiting for the next pick. Boy, am I glad Chase Demore got picked and he was in our in our chat earlier. Oh, I yes. know, right? It, it, oh. Isn't that that that's something you could like? That is something you can clip and be like, "Hey, yeah. <laughs> just so you're clear." <laughs> He's probably he probably left and was like, "I get on the phone, got to talk with uh, got to talk with my buddy Jeff Jeff Fisher right, now," right. you know. Gotta we get got ready. the name. <laughs> got a name. Jamar Summers from UConn for the gamblers here. Interesting. And again, okay. the name sounds familiar, but I can't place it. I've been having that a lot tonight, uh, quite honestly. And that's probably my problem and not anybody else's. But let's let's take a look here. Jamar this is Summers. Why. This is why we got a couple guys, a couple things. Birmingham Iron, right? Yep. Detroit oh my Lions gosh! Yes, and I'm Guardians. seeing it right now. He, well, yes, th- that's why it rings a bell. Summers was solid for right. the Guardians. Yeah, he he was he. I mean, the Guardians had their defense came on strong back half of that five of that five week mm-hmm. stretch. Uh, he was solid in that secondary. That's just, and I know that some people make it fun. We have a few positive takes, but Summers was indeed a good pickup for the, the general or for the guardians back then. Um, this is a nice one for the alternative play, much like Devante Bosby. Um, this is a guy that I think will come in and great choice for your first overall. I think that one, as long as he, nothing goes wrong at camp, he'll definitely be locking down one of those corner spots right out. Of I the think gate. so. I think so. And I'm very happy to have him on the gamblers. Cause this feels like somebody that skip would have picked up next. So I'm glad yeah. we beat him to the punch. But, yeah, so the Stallions are coming up next. Let's see if if Skip Holtz has his pick ready. Because I know Sumlin, he likes to draw it out. Yep, and chat just chat just said as I was getting it, Brian Allen of Utah. Okay, another Utah. Oh, and the other one was BYU. Never mind. But I do mm-hmm. love Utah. Yeah, still, same, yeah. similar state. Well, same, same state, state similar state. Same. <laughs> I, I know no, I, just... I that w- words have failed me today. <laughs> I'm not used to talking this long. Brian Allen. <laughs> Brian Allen. How do I'll you say this? Me? Brian Allen is a very popular football name. If you look it up on Google, we have Brian Allen, wide receiver, linebacker, running back, cornerback, offensive lineman, museum and art historian. <laughs> uh, let's go to the cornerback <laughs> here. Yeah, Allen. So out of base, base, coming out of Utah, Drafted fifth round in 2017, pick 173. Uh, spent two years with the Pittsburgh Steelers, two seasons then with the Seattle Seahawks. Had a spell with Buffalo, San Francisco, and Cincinnati in 2020 before landing on Cleveland in 2020, going through 2021. He now is going to the USFL. And then let's see if we can get some stuff on his Utah days here to ch- take a yeah take a gander. Brian Allen, University of Utah Athletics. Let's see, 2016 season, 13 games with nine starts, four picks, tied for fifth in the Pac-12 on that number, and was second on the team in picks. Ten total passes defended, including six breakups, 35 tackles that year. Um, No accolades, at least. I mean, accolades don't always mean it, but none none of the all-pac or all-conference ones that we're used to right now. Um, So... Besides that, Mark, NFL experience, I think, is where you're going with this. Um, in terms of Skip, I mean, Skip's all all college, so the connections will have, would have to be based on something on the back end if I had to take a gander. But um, for the most part, 
you know, NFL experience is what you're getting out of this, I guess. <laughs> you know, he did have some time playing in seasons is what right is going on, on. Right on. So we have the the Maulers actually with the next two picks. So we're just waiting on them right now. Um, but, yeah, they're going to round up, wrap up this round and start out the ninth round. Again, still on cornerbacks. We're, we're cornerbacks all the way down to quarterbacks, basically. So, so yeah. this will wrap up the eighth round. And that will give us four rounds left, right? Nine, 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 nine. Yep, four rounds, four rounds. Yep, so that's four uh, rounds. We're we're a third, two thirds of the way through the draft after this next picks, and depending if we get what co- uh, co- compensatory, compensatory picks here. Let's see what we got here. Did Kirby Wilson give us our pick yet? We're refreshing now. Let's take. Oh well, I hit the wrong button. Let's now we're refreshing. Let's see what we got here. All right. A, yes. A Jean, and if, Jean Harris, is that how you say that? That's that I would say that that is correct. And that chat did uh, get that one. Uh, Colton Mel, Melman, thank you very much. And if I said that wrong, you can definitely critique <laughs> me. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, uh, Gene Harris, it looks like our buddy, our good old buddy from our site, James Larson is loving that dub is saying that is a W for the very league. Good. Let's take, let's, let's do some more recon here. All right. As Gene Harris, at least as USC athletics highlights, according to that, let's see, 2018. Um, so he was the starting nickelback as a senior in 2018 for USC. Um, 2017 nickelback and return punts, um, overall appearing in 14 games, starting nine of those at that time. So it was at least a, Somewhat consistent to our nickel mm-hmm. corner is what it looks like. We're getting expertise and based on his recent track, at least on that track record. And it looks like we have, he, he spent some time with the BC Lions as well of the CFL. Philadelphia Eagles I'm seeing too. So again, mm-hmm. we're getting some of that varied experience. Uh, again, can't be mad at that, but we still have the Maulers. Let's see who they pick up with their second cornerback. Uh, the first of the... Yeah, should should flip over. As the, yeah, it is. We can confirm based on the USFL tweets that Round eight is indeed over. So we are on to round nine, second round of cornerbacks. Uh, again, I, I could, unlike the tackles, I could, or the edge rushers here, most likely you're picking up guys. I mean, some of them I think are definitive, like you're going to be starting them right away type of people. But again, these rounds with the cornerback selections, generally there's a little more competition in that se- section, a lot more guys playing that position and needing to have those assigned. So, you know, some of them will probably come off as more competitive pieces in here. Right on. So let's let's wrap up uh, round uh, recap recap. That's the word I'm looking recap, for. Recap round eight. Round eight. So we have Del Delrick Abrams Jr. for the Bandits. We have Channing Stribley for the Stars. Devonte Bosby again, big pick here for the Generals. Tino Ellis for the Panthers. Adonis Alexander for the Breakers. Jamar Summers. I'm loving it. For the Gamblers, Brian Allen for the Stallions, and as we just mentioned, Gene Harris for the Maulers. That's wrapping up round eight. So now we head to round nine. Or no, 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 that wraps up round seven. And now we're going into round eight. No, that wraps up round, well, round eight. No, we're going no. into round nine. You're, you're mixing yourself up. Oh, it's getting late. That's what's is, happening. I knew this was a problem. I knew this would be bad you know, news. But, <laughs> but no, round, round, round nine's coming up. And also, Gene Harris, thank you, chat. Um, Yes, XFL product. And now it makes even more sense why James was excited. Um, Roughneck. Oh, well, actually. then sign us up. <laughs> sign us up. I, I, I'm i loving that pick and as sure. well. Wrong team. And but we have a, we have our yeah. next pick. Nine. Would you would you care? Go right it. Let's see what we got. Terrell Bonds, Tennessee State, going for the Maulers nice. here. Nice. So at least they they had their picks Terrell. ready. Uh, Haley's over there. He knew. Terrell Bonds. Let's see what we got on Mister Bonds here. Bonds. <laughs> Terrell Bonds. Bonds. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> We're on the same page. <laughs> so, all right. So came out of Tennessee State, uh, 2018. Did not did not appear to be picked up by an NFL roster immediately. His first stop was with the Memphis Express. Sign him up. And then he had stops with the Baltimore Ravens from 2019 to 2020. And then his last appearance in the NFL was this past year with the Miami Dolphins. Uh, he was signed to a reserves contract July 20, January 26, 2021, but was waived in August. Not 
bad pick. So, and I love seeing the AAF guys get a chance in here too. We do have a stallions. Yeah, and you also as well. Yeah. Let's yeah. see what we got. Tay Hayes, Appalachian State. Oh, app, nice. App there State product, huh? Bring him up on the screen here. Tay Hayes. Let's see what we got here. So, okay. All right. All right. So he spent some time with the Jags, Dolphins, Vikings, Cardinals, and Panthers. Uh, Ten total tackles in the NFL, one fumble reco- uh, recovery, two pass deflections. Um, and I don't know how many games he was in though. That's what I was, I'm trying to look for. Yeah. T Hayes. Let's see. Appalachian state career stats. Uh, his last year in 2018 started all 13 games as a cornerback recorded four picks, 44 tackles, seven pass breakups, two block field goals and three tackles for loss. Second team, all Sun Belt all right. as well. Sign him up. Now we have the Houston Gamblers up next. So, you know, I'm just excited for these picks. Let's see what we got of course. here. Come of course. On. You got to see what your team's Someone getting. Someone don't let me down. And we got it. Don't and it's, it's likely I'll like it. Will likely from Maryland. <laughs> so let's. Well, yeah, and back to back. Here's a uh, freaking Fedora, man. He's going real quick again because you got Will Likely, Maryland, and then Derek Jones, Old Miss. All right. Sign him up. So I like that. Fedora, it, he knows who he wants. It seems like he's yeah, just he, going. He's, he's probably so happy. Again, there's probably no better feeling than as a coach during the draft, having a guy on your list and getting to that point and like, yes, he's free. Sign him up. He's mine. <laughs> and will you know what I like? In terms of our naming convention, I swear someone better, someone better see this man pick somebody off, and he'll go. Well, I guess he will likely do it again. Right. Right. <laughs> That's a rough kind of joke, and I will laugh at it too. <laughs> oh, now, 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 Will Likely definitely has connections here. We have all over the place. Comes out of Maryland undrafted, goes to New England for a spell, goes to the Argonauts and the Tiger Cats to back to back years in a row, lands on the DC Defenders in 2020 for just a tad. Uh, let's see here. He says, well, it says likely signed with the defenders during mini camp in 2019. He was waived during final roster cuts in January, 2020, but he did play for the jousters last year. So another, uh, another guy on a championship roster from the TSL season last spring. And I mean, the mega bowl, if anybody didn't tune into that game, I don't know if there's any way to find it. I don't think there's a way to download or watch it on demand, but if there is, it's actually, it's probably on YouTube somewhere. It's probably on YouTube is my guess. Watch that mm-hmm. game. Watch that game. It was a fun game. Uh, and quite honestly, we're probably going to see a lot of guys from that game. We so we just mentioned one, and there's already a, bit, a couple, I think, that have come through from that. Join this league. Right. You'll get a good refresher course on some of these guys that we're seeing in there. Uh, and, I mean, just for the heck of it, too, throw in some AAF and some XFL in there as well, just to kind of get primed up. Uh, because, yeah, I think you'll, you'll kind of get an understanding of the style of play that we're going to see here. Um, at yeah. least uh, while we're waiting for the pick, as far as the rules, it doesn't sound like it's going to be too gimmicky for more or less. They're going to be using, uh, uh, NFL rules with, with a few hinted mm-hmm. tweaks that that's still waiting for confirmations officially, but at least according to Mike Pereira, or Mike Pereira on green light, you know, you're going to, he's claiming you're going to see things like challenging, roughing the passer calls mm-hmm. or, or challenging, you know, uh, elite or challenging a defenseless receiver calls as well. Um, certain s- tweaks, it's, it's not as mm-hmm. big as the XFL. That's what they're For hinting sure. at, you know, a few things, but they're not game changes. They just want good football. That's all they care so about. Here, we have um, our next pick yeah. for the Panthers. Your guys here. Ha, James yep, Houston. There we go from Baylor. Um, so I, I mean, okay. I would have loved to have him with the gamblers just for that connection alone. Uh, but let's see. Let's see what he has in his uh, uh, resume here. HBCU Perfect. product, or at least, uh, well, let, actually, hang on, hang on. There's uh, two. Um, I might be jumping the gun. Let me, let me hang on. I need to put James Houston Baylor. Or, ah, that's why. Jameson Houston. Yes, yes. See, I'm now really jumping <laughs> the gun. Ah, retry. That's more like it. Here we go. Jamison Houston, undrafted in 2020, 
had quick stops with Cleveland and Carolina and Philadelphia in that said year. Last year, he had a stopover with Jacksonville. May 18th, he was tra- Houston, let's see, he was traded to Jacksonville along with a six-round draft pick exchange for Josiah Scott, but he was waived August 24th from that said trade. And let's see if we can get his stats up from Baylor as well. Yeah, so Baylor here, looks like 2019, started all 13 games, 34 solo tackles, um, or sorry, thir- sorry, yeah, 44 total tackles, 34 solo. One interception as well, forced to fumble. So a little, little here, a little there. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. Um, and then I, um, pardon my French, we forgot Derek Jones from the previous one for the oh, right, Breakers. Yes. Uh, 2017 Old Miss. Uh, had a two-year stint with the Jets, went and had a stop with the Green Bay Packers, Houston Texans in 2019. He mainly had his stops with the Seattle Dragons or Team 9 during the XFL season. I see. So he, he, he was one of the guys that was on Team 9 and then moved up to the Dragons. Yeah, so so he went Dragons, Team 9, Dragons is what the order is. I see. Very nice. Right. And now it looks like we have another pick according to the draft. Let's in. see what we got. Generals should be up next. Trey Elston, Mississippi. All these, yeah, a lot of, lot of old Miss. Right on. That's another old yeah, Miss pick. Yeah, in the same round, right. mind you. Let's see what we can find about him. Trey Elston, huh? Let's see what we got. Okay, he's been a little bit everywhere, and I'm already liking this. A lot of so everywhere. We have the Saints, the Bucks, oh the Browns, the Bills, the Eagles, Super Bowl champion, mind you. Bills, Dolphins, Eagles again, Saints, my Roughnecks, baby, and then heading up north to the Calgary Stampeders of the CFL. I mean, this is a solid pick because you're getting kind of a little bit of veteran status here. Not veteran, but he's he's got a little bit of experience all over the place. Yeah, well, I'll tell you, if, at least if anything, dude has been, uh, uh, he's been a Johnny Cash song for a few years. I, I mean, we see, like, already in the draft, we've seen some guys have jumped around. This man has definitely jumped right. around. And I, I've, I've no, even if you, I've talked to people in the arena leagues and they have some people that jump around, this is jumping right around, on. around teams. Um, but he's definitely gotten his opportunities. And it looks like with Calgary, at least, he got a, at least a uh, consistent spot on there last year. Um, yeah, just signed with the Stampeders January 25th of last season, and now looks like he'll transition to the USFL to continue the alt football journey that he's been on for the last few we years. we got the Stars coming in now with their pick as well. Marcus Lewis uh, from Maryland. More yeah. Maryland. There's a lot of Maryland there picks is. I thought too. there was a lot of Michigan guys. Uh, I, I kind of expected to be see a couple, a lot of UConn guys, which we have seen. Um, just I think there was a pretty good amount in the draft tracker that we had. Again, it wasn't everybody, uh, but the ones that we had available to. Um, all right, let's see what we can find. And this, yeah, this name. Let's football after this one. I don't think he's the football coach either. Oh, oh here we okay. go. Here we it go. looks like he he's moved a few places, according to his Maryland bio. At least hmm. he transferred. Yeah, let's see. He transferred from Florida State. So 2016, he transferred. 2017, he sat out. That was still during the transfer policy era. 2018, saw action five games. 2019, started all 10 games. Um, recorded 33 tackles during his 2019 season. Tied for team with two pit lead for two picks. Notch career best, seven tackles solo and a pick as well. Um, yeah, so kind of got his uh, final time time to shine after all the transfer status. Uh, with his uh, senior year after taking a red shirt junior or, or so. So, and we do have, we do have yeah. the pan, uh, not the Panthers, the bandits pick in Devonte Davis from Texas. Um, let's see. And he's been, it looks like he's probably been a few places. If this is the right one. And is he the same one that played for the Eagles? Let's see. No, cause he played for UNLV. So, mm. uh, unless they got because he is from what oh no the, he's wearing a texas jersey in his, in his picture okay that's all i need to know 
Everything points to him, though. But I'm feeling that this is a case of mistaken identity, so I don't think this is the former Eagles player. Yeah, it might be, might be the case here. So at least his ath- so here's his athletics career. At least he was great. He so he was out last year in Texas, 2018, made 12 starts out of 13 games for Texas, 42 tackles total, four tackles for loss, a pick, forced fumble, fumble recovery, and pa- eight pass breakups. Honorable mention, all Big 12 as well. Very nice. So that unless we get more uh, compensatory picks. That should Mm -hmm. wrap up round nine. So now we wait for the USFL to post their round sheet. And I hate it is. That's the end of round nine. And they did. So two more, two more cornerbacks. I hate to do this to you. My wife has been calling me for a couple picks and I just need, so I have to go help her with something. I will be back in just a minute though. So just. I'll hold down the fort. I appreciate it. I'll gladly hold down the fort. I uh, raise a glass. By the way, drink responsibly. This is just a uh, rum and coke, nothing crazy. So, again, I say that. <laughs> so yeah, waiting on round ten, two more cornerback pick, pick rounds to go, and then we'll finish off the draft with a quarter quarterback round. You'll most likely get your backup quarterbacks. With, of course, sands the supplemental draft picks later on. We'll be seeing who comes out of there. There's a few guys that some people had in the mock drafts that thought we're going to go. I know uh, some names that were popping out include like a Chase Litton or especially Luis Perez, who both of us thought were going to, you know, be picked up. Or at least we thought Luis Perez was going to be a first round pick. Wasn't the case. We did have, of course, some surprises we didn't expect in that first round draft pick, draft pick selection. I see people mention Kelly Bryant. That was another one people thought. Um, another quarterback too, David Pindell. Um, I was waiting to see him go. Um, hoping, of course, for Aaron Ellis as well. Uh, let's see other quarterbacks that I was expecting possibly to get in there. Um, thinking, thinking, thinking. Uh, hmm. Space. Oh, DeAndre Francois or DeAndre Johnson, I thought were two that I thought could also be in as well. Quentin Flowers. I always wonder what happened to Quentin Flowers. I thought he'd be back. And I see people asking about Ben Holmes. You know what? Speedster, you know, definitely good with his legs. Solid pin. I would say someone that I think will, could, will definitely make an impact on the run a little bit there. Looks like we're getting uh, OutKick has been out and about for um, other things. I'm going to see if the ref can pull this one up again. I don't have really access to push it onto the stream, but Brian Scott getting talked to by OutKick again. I know some people are asking about, like, who the hell is Brian Scott? Guys, you got to check him out. Guys, dude is a solid talent. I know we've been saying that a lot, but still, (laughs) I'm telling you. You guys got to check him out. He's got, he is a good choice for the stars. You are not going to regret it. Guarantee it. Yeah. But I mean, otherwise, you know, we'll see who else is in the quarterback spots here. Looks like we have the league's teams dropping the compensatory pick lists. Saying, here's how this pick will impact the... Okay, so let's see here. So Fox Sports dropping compensatory picks and how they work. So if you want to go and check that out, recommend you head on to one of the team's pages, the Panthers, the Stars, or so on. That'll give you an entire breakdown of the compensatories and how they work during this draft. So I'm back, by the way. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I, I saw. I, I saw. You let me finish. I appreciate of course, that. Of course. I don't want to cut you off. <laughs> no, that's cool. So no that's picks cool. yet. But yeah. Not, well, let me, so let me double check again. Bandits. Yeah, Bandits would be back on the clock. There's most right, right now teams are posting uh, compensatory pick um, rules is what it is. Oh, you seen hey. That, that Jordan Tayamu picture? Oh. Well, I'm seeing the Brian Scott one for the stars. Let me just go over. 
You're talking in the jer- you're talking in the jerseys with the butt with the uh, curtain yeah, background. Yeah, yeah. Let me pull that up here. I'm telling you, they're hyping these QBs up. I'm yeah. liking this. This they're they're making it look good. I like that they have the jerseys ready with their names on them. I know J. I know Jake Henry and Com- would be very upset with this, but he but Tiamo looks good in Does red. Does look good in red. I know he's got <laughs> such a someone- conundrum now because he was just about settled on the Panthers with the Jeff Fisher connection. He wasn't sure right. if he wanted Tayamu there or not. Now I'm curious if Jake is in the chat. Let us know. Are you now a Bandits fan? I need to know. I'm not seeing him. James might pass that on though. I mean, he, he's he's currently saying it's a beautiful pick, and I know he'll gladly pass that on to Jay, Jake if he sees that. So James, since you're here, how are you but, think? How are you feeling about those Panthers picks so far? I mean, Shea Patterson. I'm. I'm jealous. I'm not going to lie. I loved Shea Patterson with his time at Michigan. Again, maybe not their most successful time in school history. Most winning collegiate school in history, mind you. Go blue for now. <laughs> they, they're yeah. getting better, so hopefully we can keep that around. Uh, many of those come from years ago. Uh, the younger fans might look at that and say, well, Michigan, they're not that great of a school right now. Get over it. They used to be. Oh, Shem Beckler, sign them up. <laughs> Going old school on that one. I remember the Rose Bowl. Yeah, Bo, Bo Schembechler. Man, we're really turning the clock well, a little like back now. That was a hero when I was a kid, dude. Bo Schembechler. No, I, 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 for, for many, I understand. And I, I didn't grow up as a Michigan fan. Honestly, I was pushed more on as Notre Dame. So, I mean, I can already hear some of the hisses from from some <laughs> from me. U of M guys. <laughs> yes. I'm just saying. Oh, we got we got our next pick. All right. Round 10, pick one. Christian Campbell from Penn right. State. Going to the bandits. Let's take a look and see what we got here on this young man. I'll pull up the screen so we can share this. And I will say, I'll say it again. I know I said it earlier when it was way too early to say it. This has not felt like we've been streaming for this long. I'm not going to lie. No, I mean, we're, we're actually well past the time we yeah. thought we were going to be here. So this will, so this has definitely been an experience. And the fact that, I mean, I know we had some drop off. It's a long stream. The fact we still have like eight hundred and like thirty people here, I can't believe so, that. It's been over three hours, people. I still is awesome. I'll it's tell nuts. you this: I, when I went to go check uh, check on my wife, I just checked. We have over forty thousand views on this video alone today. Oh my 40, god! 000. Thank what? you guys. You people, you guys, rock. sign you up. Oh sign god. you guys up. So uh, Christian Campbell spent some time with the Cardinals, Saints, 49ers. And another one coming from the CFL with the Rough Riders, uh, which he was there He's recently there. from 2020 until it says present here. So, yeah, he. Uh, so according to the the Saskatchewan part or the Rough Riders portion, so he signed in in 2020. He opted out of his, he opted out of his contract for for that said year, but he did opt back in and was on the Rough Riders roster for 2021. So he was supposed to be there at least. He got his one year in, is what it is. Just uh you know, had to kind of rotate it, get through that. The opt-outs were very much key in the early stages of that COVID canceled season because people still weren't sure. And eventually that did get mm-hmm. canceled. Sadly, um, luckily we had a nice 2021 season that got concluded. I'll tell you what CFL wise, and actually I'll stop for a second. As I see that pick come across our screen, it looks like for the yep. stars. Well, you now Ma- you were now the now. I'll say it. Mazzy Wil- Wilkins, uh, another TSL guy with the Alphas, spent some time with the Bucks, CFL as well with the Blue Bombers in 2021, uh, and the Cardinals and Ravens in 2021 as well. So it looks like he didn't play for the Blue Bombers in 2021. Looks like he was signed okay. on the 22nd of June, cut in July. Uh, he was on the practice squad for the Cardinals. Uh, was with the Ravens. Uh, practice squad as well, but he does have some playing time at least with his uh, with the Buccaneers. So he has at least five games under his belt, uh, three tackles. So, uh, but again, we're seeing some of that the spring league experience come in here. And again, I'm not even going to be yeah. mad at that. And again, with Bart Andrus, perfect pick. Having that uh, TSL connection at least. Right. Oh, exactly. I mean, that, that's, that's the thing. It's the, the TSL connection you're coming back to here, you know, uh, def I would, yeah. I mean, I, the, that connection back to that league, you know, you gotta get props for that. Um, but yeah, set another cornerback on the board here. Stars getting another one locked down for them as we continue on 
and they're coming Through quick. Round they're coming 10. quick. So we have a little bit. We, yep, we just Generals got another one. David Rivers, Youngstown State. Uh, so let's take a no. look. Uh, take a look here. No. Not the first one. That's another Youngstowner yeah. coming in. Yeah. So let's see what we got here. Looks like some CFL experience. Another one that's traveled around. Oh, I think the people in this in this chat are like this. So we have Packers, Jets, Bucks, Dolphins, Bucks again, Dolphins, Guardians, and the Battlehawks. So I'm going to have to look oh. up and see what happened there. It sounds like maybe a trade going on. Uh, he was drafted in the third round by the Guardians, traded to the Battlehawks, along with uh, Brian Wallace, offensive tackle, in exchange for Dejon Allen and Avery Young. Uh, ah, well, there you have he it. signed with the Blue Bombers in July 9th, 2021. Hmm. So, again, we're seeing, well we're seeing a decent amount of that spread out experience between between these guys here. Yeah, so far I think the it feels like the majority of the pickups at least have I mean, of course NFL experience has been the one that they mm. that a lot of them have touched on, but for the most part I would it feels like that about half if not a touch over half have at least touched an alternative league in some point. We knew the TSL connection was going to be important here going into the draft. People were going to be looking at these talents. Fox was definitely going to look back at the roster and see who would fit back in. But sure enough, here we go. Oh, and you know, another Tarleton State, they have another mm. pick. Not just Ben Holmes nope, anymore. No, no, Dominique Martin. Dominique yeah. Martin. All right. Round 10, pick number four. Panthers getting their second guy. So we're halfway through the 10th <laughs> round already. I mean, this has been pretty quick so far. So let's see what we got on yeah, they're Dominique. Mo they're moving here. it now. They're ready to go home. I mean, it's 10. It's well, now it's only 940 over there, but yeah. still, it's getting a tad late. Late, even down there for them, probably. Well, it looks like he spent some time with Green Bay. <laughs> not a lot of information here. Uh, let's see. No, he's not. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. maybe that's it. All right, let's take a look here. Not, not a lot of information other than Tarleton State and Green Bay Packers uh, to go on here. But let's, let's see who's on the board now. So we just had the Panthers go. So yeah, pan. So if we're looking back at this board, round ten. So it should be the Breakers that are back up. That is according to the yeah the press release chart. Yep, Breakers will be right now. Very good. And still waiting to see that pick drop. It's funny because at Fedora now, last few rounds, he's been like rapid fire dropping. Somebody these, took his so. pick this time. He only got he got only got so <laughs> lucky so long. Darn, I wanted Dominique right? Martin. <laughs> or that or darn, I wanted David Rivers. Or darn, I wanted Mazzy right? Wilkins. Any one of these guys. I, I mean, that's <laughs> technically speculation. Yeah. <laughs> being funny <laughs> so let's see. i'm so curious I'm, I'm actually going back to trending let's see where the usfl sitting now they're sitting at number 10 now number 10 so they're in yeah, the they, top 10 they've been they've been pumping this i mean and it's cool because even some outlets you know outside of of course fox is wrong because outkick actually is a fox funny enough i didn't realize until learning later outkick is a fox property yep. so that i learned um but they've been promoting the hell out of it. NBC actually has done a decent job with some of these. Uh, they actually retweeted. Um, they actually made a post on Shea Patterson being in the All American Bowl with that selection back in 2016, I believe it was. Um, and they talked about that one. So getting they're getting the exposure. So and there yeah, it is, Annie Patterson, Maine, the Maine Black so Bears. Let's... That's a that's a first one on the board yeah, for that school. Yeah. I like. I love to see it. Let's uh, let's see what we can find out about Mr. Manny here. Looks like he possibly spent some time with the Chiefs. Yep, Chiefs re-signed Manny Patterson, so he spent some time there. Let's see what we got here. This was in 2021 that he was re-signed. There's not a lot of information. Uh, I see. So he had an ACL yeah. injury his senior year, which th that is unfortunate. Yes, it is. And then with then coming into the next year, it was uh, with the illness we shall not name, stopped him from entering pro day. 
Oof. So this is this is this yeah. guy's shot then. This is this is that shot that he's kind of been robbed of twice now, one by injury, one by the thing that we shall not mention for YouTube's sake here. Mm-hmm. Although if he re- if he does recover, I mean, at least in terms of his uh, college production, you have a three time all CAA selection during his three seasons in college. So uh, from t- what for his three final seasons from 2016 and 2019 in that in that area. So um, talented. Um, I know it's ACL injury. It doesn't make or break everything. It's very recoverable anymore. But, you know, he did get to an NFL level. He did get a shot, um, did have a. Did get a contract signed with the pay, with the uh, Chiefs after a rookie minicamp tryout. So, you know, he's been able to make an opportunity some opportunities for himself. We do have the next pick though from my team, Gamblers Howard Wilson from Houston, appropriately. Uh, so that nice. again, I love that local flair here. Let's see what we got here, Howard Wilson. The name again sounds familiar. I don't know where it rings a bell. Let's see. Cleveland Browns. No, so he, yeah, it's not a spring guy. He spent some time with the Browns, played for Houston, drafted by the Browns in the fourth round, 126 pick overall in the 2017 draft. Signed a four-year rookie contract uh, worth three milli. Three milli. Sign him up. Wow. Uh, on the second day of tr- rookie training camp, mini camp, he suffered, fr- uh, s- boy, I can't speak, suffered a fractured patella. So that Dude. put him out for all of 2017, 2018. Still had more surgery on that. Ended up getting waived. Went with your teams, had a tryout with the Bears, but no beans. No yep. beans. Yeah, it looks like uh, Texans, he had a tryout as well. Well, good. Getting his shot Um, here. Back in 2020. In Texas. Local Texas guy playing for a Texas team. Never be mad at that. No, not at all. Uh, Let's see if we can get his Houston accolades. Or at least his setup here. So we do have we, have, we do have the stallions pick as well. But go on. I will wait. I will wait to say those then because I'd rather get the pick. So we next. have Brian Mills, North You're Carolina doing. Central for the mm-hmm. Stallions, which would put the Maulers up next for the last pick, potentially, of the tenth round. Yes. The <laughs> last pick yes. depending. We learned that early on at least. At least we learned that early on where <laughs> got Got to wait for those signal, yes. those cues. Yes. You know. So Brian Mills of North NC Central. Let's see what we got here. So according to his bio here, undrafted in 2021. So very recent mm-hmm. coming out here. And he, he stopped at four different teams last year. Been all been around the block. So Came out, Seattle, signed him as undrafted free agent, was waived August 12th, then was signed by the Saints on the 18th, waived on the 31st of August, then signed with the Browns to the practice squad September 30th, was waived December 28th, and then, there's the extra kicker, he was with the Vikings as of January 5th of this year, and was, let's see, elevated to the active roster January 9th in week 18 against Chicago. So, must have... uh, had it must have had his contract, uh, I would say, cease or was able to get an out. Now he's getting an opportunity in the USFL. Sign him up. So, I mean, we're getting close to this, this end round. I mean, after this next pick, we have one more round, then we're circling back to those quarterbacks. Getting those right. I think, I think what's, I think that's what a lot of you folks in the chat are waiting for. You want to see those final QBs. And of course, I mean, there's some, I still hope I see Zim, Zim's name call. I really do. Me too. You know, it, I, I, we, uh, yeah, I, I feel bad saying just me. I, I we both do. <laughs> we both do. I'm, I'm like being so selfish right now. What's wrong with me? <laughs> well, to be fair, I'm sure oh, he me. hopes to see it as well. <laughs> what? Hey, Tarleton state getting some picks. Prince Robinson. Yeah. Pick number eight of round 10. Tarleton State getting some representation in here, man. I'll say this. In the list that we had, um, the draft tracker, at least uh, uh, roughly around 100 guys that we had, there was a good amount from Tarleton State. Now, 
or tar- Tarleton, Tarleton. Sorry, my bad. But I assume <laughs> there's maybe there's a connection that we don't know about in the back. Like Jim Pop, who knows? Maybe he his kid works there or something. Like, why are we seeing so many guys? I mean, I'm 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 excited to see the outcome of this here. Another one looks like Let's he had see. some time in the CFL. Blue Blue Bombers. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, in college for his junior year, was an all LSC first team member and and special teams MVP voted by his teammates in 2018. Very nice. But yeah, but yeah, CFL product is what you're exactly right. I think that's what you're looking at. Um, and then, yeah, just kind of some – some looks at least in draft prospect looks, but yeah, CFL seems to be his latest database entry. So that is, that is the end of the 10th round. No, uh, did we, we get the horn? the horn? No compens. No, com- no compensatory. See, Thank it's not you. just me. It's not just me. <laughs> yes. I- <laughs> yes. Uh, I will plead the fifth it's been a, on that. It's a long, it's a long night. We're all, om- Guys, we're almost going oh in. We're gonna God. be going. We're into four hours. God. I don't honestly. I've been I've been doing this for over four years now. This is by far the longest video I've done. Thank God I have you, Zach, here with me because I <laughs> oh honestly God. I would have given up probably by now alone. I'm not gonna lie. I probably would have oh. threw in the towel. With with friends like these, I can go. I can enjoy myself for a while on <laughs> here. Trust me. This is fun. That I that I'll be frank. All right, we have we have our first pick of the eleventh round, Jalen McLean Alrighty. Sap. Jalen McLean Sap Jaylen, from Marshall. Jalen Mc Marsh. We are Marshall. <laughs> so oh, I have a yeah. funny story while you're pulling that up. My sure, uh, sure. I live in a suburb or a subdivision rather that shares the name of a college. And so because okay. smart TVs, maybe not as smart as they think they are, I get ads for, I'm not, I'm, again, I'm not going to dox myself, but I get ads for the college that my subdivision is named after because my wife and I mention that like, oh, we need to go to the so-and-so, you know, workout place or the bar or whatever. I'm like, come right, on, smart right. TV, I'm not flying to North Dakota to go to your school. <laughs> Clearly, why, stop targeting me. <laughs> So anyway, while you're pulling that up. <laughs> sure. So 2019, he re- he had redshirt juniored um, for Marshall for second season. Uh, after only playing three games in 2018, saw action in 10 games, two starts uh, against Boise State and Middle Tennessee, made eight tackles, recorded half a tackle for a loss, one pick, three pass breakups. And then that's all Marshall based stats. Real quick, and then real quick. next pick on the board, Stallions, oh, let's Lorenzo Burns from Arizona, Arizona. So uh-huh. that's I, I mean I, I I'm always I was a bigger fan of uh, Arizona State just because I lived in Tempe, but can't be mad at those Tucson mm-hmm. picks either. Let's see, Lorenzo Burns, which would put the Gamblers up next. So let's see. That's so right. Much, uh, our last cornerback of the draft here. So Burns was claimed off waivers most recently for Jacksonville. Um, at least according to what I am looking here. Uh, that was back in August of this past summer. Uh, Real quick, too. Jerry Cantave, William Jewell College for the gambler. Uh, yes, the gamblers. I almost had to shame on myself because I thought I said the wrong one, but I did say the right team. So we're we're flying through these ones now. Now we're there. I think they're ready to get to the. I think they're ready to get back to the hotel. They got an early morning tomorrow. Maybe. Tomorrow, mind you. Right. This also gets yeah, off at Jerry, nine in the morning. Yeah, William Jewell College. Okay. Um, and Lorenzo Burns to update he his stats. He actually is a pretty decorated, um, at least in terms of uh, college. 2020 and 2019 both had Pac-12 all-conference honorable mentions as well. Um, so he's only been out for a few years as well. And then, like I said, he was, most recent stop was with the Jaguars, was claimed off waivers. And it looks like he also had a stop with the Arizona Cardinals, too. At one point, and then yeah, you know, let me see here. Um, yeah, Jerry Cantave. I'm gonna have to look that one. Cantave. 
Williams Jewel College Athletics. He is very recent. Um, looks like he might have just graduated because uh, he was a junior in 2021. So another young gun coming right out and going pretty much to the USFL here. And we, we have well. the breakers in Jalen Embry, Northern Illinois. Ooh, ooh Maction. I like my Mac yeah. guys. I'm just going to be frank. Love my Mac guys, man. Let's take a look. And this name, this name does sound familiar. I've, I've, I know I've said that a million times tonight, and it's a shame that I don't have why my memory won't serve me justice. But I have a feeling I've seen him somewhere familiar. Detroit. All right. Well, that's I got. Why. He was. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, oh, okay. Yep. Okay. So, yeah, um, 2018, won a MAC championship with NIU. NIU's top corner broke up a pair of passes in the championship, uh, led the team in pass breakups at that time, fifth on team in tackles, uh, do, 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 and a few other stats just from the season on individual mm-hmm. stuff. Also use, also was used on kickoff returns, It's uh, he has said on here. Spent time with the Aviators of the Spring League as well. So nice. We're getting that nice. connection in here. Mm-hmm. That's another TSL mm-hmm. guy. I, I mean, I, I I love to see it. I love to see it. So we're already halfway through the eleventh round. Already. Oh, we were so you were so close. We got the webcam chat guy back in. We were so close. Oh, I thought we were good. I thought we were rid of him. I I, I dropped get him. Get out of here, you son of a gun. Come there they back. go. I mean, at what point do you give up? To to be fair, it's actually pretty satisfying to hit hide this user. I agree. <laughs> Uh, when it's the, when it's the spam, I don't like I don't like dropping actual people. By the way, oh, they're doing it again. I'm gonna do it again though, because it'll be cool. Yeah, yeah. get out of here. Yeah, I get out of here. Here's webcam person, but we dropping you the hammer. We're we're like a bunch of maulers yeah. over here dropping the hammer. My my worst nightmare is I'll accidentally click on one of these guys that are legitimately right. watching us, and they'll be like, what are "No, I <laughs> why was I hidden away in band?" <laughs> Why was I kicked? They were so cool until yeah. they did th- <laughs> create enemies for life. They'll create the, yeah. the the competitors we never wanted to see, the ones that beat us. You know, <laughs> it makes me think of uh, for some reason it makes me think of the Simpsons with like uh, Willie talking about Scotsman. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Scotsman, it's like you, uh, you just uh, Principal Skinner, you uh, you Scots are sure pretentious people. You just made an enemy yeah. for life. <laughs> 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 oh boy oh boy so let's see let's see jeff fisher taking his time here so maybe one of his yes, guys got picked oh here we go jalen burrell new mexico another new mexico Jaylen. guy coming in too i think we've seen at least one or two of them uh earlier yeah they're really coming in now definitely finishing this up yeah they these coaches want to go home i'm thinking they want to and I mean, they they got their guys. We're near the end of the uh, of the draft here, so they they probably have who they wanted to go ready. Um, yeah. So let's see. So if the Panthers went, then we have the Generals up next. Yeah. What a fun night. Let's see. It has been a good night. <laughs> I, it's honestly, been good. I didn't know how this was going to go. I don't know if it'd be good, bad, or indifferent. Um, but it, so far, it's been pretty good. We do have the next pick. Dewan Neal from Shepard for the Generals. That sound, this is one of them, uh, for some reason, I make it, it sounds familiar to me, but I could be wrong. I know. It, we, once yeah, you Dewan. do this for a couple hours, then you start second guessing, like, does it sound exactly. familiar? Or have I just heard like, a we're, lot we're of gonna, names tonight? We're going to hit the four and a half hour mark here in like two minutes. Let's see. Jousters in 2021. So you went to the Mega Bowl last year. Okay. Let's see what else we can find here. It's got that. It's got that connection. Um, looks like he did have a stop with the Washington Commanders, or at least uh, now named Washington Commanders, according to the CBS Sports. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, and yeah, Jousters is the main one. It's being listed at the moment. All right. So again, seeing that Spring League connection. And I think we're going to see a, a good amount of that tomorrow, especially with the receivers and the running backs. I think we're – and there were some solid, solid ones there, especially when you look at both the jousters and the linemen, both of which who made it to the uh, Mega Bowl. So we got one mm-hmm. of those guys coming over here for the Generals. 
Come on, Zim. You got two. You got at least two more picks, man. Come well, on. Stars on the board. Stars on the board here, and then we're going to wrap it up with the bandits. Now, again, it isn't his last chance. Let last chance. Right. Last chance. Uh, there is going to be a supplementary draft coming up here in a couple of weeks. Uh, probably a lot less coverage on that one, so don't expect us to do a live stream. But we will definitely be yeah. covering it on the Friday show. I, I know, knowing you, you'll at least list. Oh. You'll at least get the list and put them on the website like that. You know, get that tool up there Absolutely, for everyone. Absolutely, yeah. So just check out usflnewsroom.com. We'll have the information, whether it's live, which I don't think the league is going to be announcing them live, so it'll probably be after the fact. Um, yeah. But yeah, stay tuned. And, I mean, just check it out daily. Anyway, we're dropping news all the time. Uh, I mean, I think we're the only dedicated USFL website. There's other websites out there that cover the USFL naturally, but – with pro football newsroom, we have XFL newsroom, USFL newsroom, mm-hmm. so on and so forth. Um, and some things to look forward to on that front, but we won't talk about that now. Yeah. We, I would say newsroom really kicked off, has kicked off. Well, um, actually was, that, I know you and I talked about this the other day, a uh, USFL daily, the uh, former XFL press guy yeah, is coming back. That's so that exciting. Was kinda, that was kind of cool to see. I, I, I like to see it. It's a bummer that somebody stole his old domain. Um, so I know that XFL yeah. press was there. And then they went to buy, uh, once it, once they announced that they were going to buy USFL Daily, somebody poached that one too. I mean, ah. what kind of scumbag do you have to be to poach somebody's domain? I mean, I get that we're all, I mean, let's be honest here. Everybody's kind of competing with each other because we're all doing kind of the same thing. But me personally, I'm a man of the community, right? And I mean, let's just, mm-hmm. I, we probably should have said this earlier, but shout out to everybody doing streams tonight. Sports, uh, sports gambling podcast network. I know they're, uh, God, I can never get his last name right. Uh, Rod, Rod, what? Rod, Rod, Rod Via Gomez. Gomez. Thank you, thank you. Top notch talent. In fact, if you look over at Newsroom, he used to write for us and podcast for us once upon a time. I am mm-hmm. mad when people leave. I love people say getting new opportunities because, quite honestly, he's moved up since he's left us for a couple yeah. different opportunities. So I ain't even mad at. It. I love the community. Uh, I just, I never like when people do, I don't like that. That's all I'll say. Now I feel you. All right. Stars got their sec, got their last cornerback selection for this, for the main draft, Bradley Sylvie, Sylvie, Alabama. And he's had a few stops. He actually is one that has had the stops in spring football. Um, so 2016 was undrafted was with the Buffalo Bills for a spell in 2017, as well as the Saints. 2019, played for the Birmingham Iron. Nice. And then 2020, was with the Defenders and the Los Angeles Wildcats. So we potentially have the end of the 11th round here, depending on if we have any of those extra picks coming in. But it looks like oh, Rashard yeah. Causey Jr., Central Florida, for the Bandits. Rashard Causey so Jr. Let's see what we got here. So... Now we're getting in one more round to go. We're getting the quarterbacks going from cornerback to quarterback. Mm-hmm. Eight more picks. Uh, who Who's everyone? All right, chat. If you had your pick of a second quarterback, who do you want? It seems like Luis Perez is still in the draft. Uh, that's sign me up. Some, solid backup. Hey, solid. Him, him, him and Chase Litton are still sitting there. Litton was talked a lot by people. I want to see Dave Pin- David Pindell get picked yeah. up as a backup I option. about him, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely want him. Um, I know people want DeAndre Johnson. I, I know some. I know I mentioned earlier Kelly Bryant. Yes, Troy Jerome coming in there with that one, definitely. Um, and I'll, like I said, I throw in either DeAndre Johnson or, De- or, De- or DeAndre Francois, both of those options, in, too. So let's see. Let's see if. And then, of course, David with Aaron Ellis. Sorry. Oh, no, you're good. You're good. You're good. <laughs> Got to mention Aaron. I, I mean, high school, I was, for folks, I was a center in high school. That's not a joke. I played with him in high school football. That's why I'm rooting for this guy. We'll and see. I'm rooting for him because you know him. Yeah. <laughs> Sign him up. Good friend of our shows. Good friend of our shows, really. Like, I know, I mean, it's funny because I remember you interviewing him a couple times last year, at least in the lead up to the ELF. And then it, it wasn't yeah. for a while until I realized that you, you knew, like, not just knew him, but went to school with him. And I mean, that's super cool. That's super cool. Okay. Um, while we're waiting on the confirmation, <laughs> go to the Birmingham Stallions Twitter. They have, if you're a fan of Rick and Morty, so Aaron and uh, Adewale Hideo. Hideo. 
Adeo, they both I they're brothers. expected and then later confirmed they're brothers. They made if you ever watch Rick and Morty and watch inter, interdimensional t- t- cable, <laughs> you'll know what I'm talking. Hey, let me just play. We got 36 seconds. This, this, this is pretty, has a this somewhat pretty looser good. feel to it. Yeah, it's got an almost improvisational tone. It's in theaters now. Coming See, now this the, now the two brothers I'm in it. a van. Oh, and then a great. meteor hit, this and they great. ran as fast as oh, they could Trust me. from giant monsters. Right. monsters, and then a giant tornado mm-hmm. came. Mm-hmm. Well, let's get back to the brothers because they are, they have a strong bond. You don't want to know about it here, but I'll tell you one thing. The moon, it comes crashing into Earth, and what do you do then? It's two brothers, and a, and, and they're going to, it's called two brothers. Two brothers. <laughs> it's just called two brothers. See what I'm saying? No, I, I could get down with that. I could get down. That that's that's my kind of comedy right there. I'm one of these guys. <laughs> I'm not gonna start. lie. I don't watch. I well, one. I don't watch a lot of TV um, other than sports. And when I do, I have this weird thing where I wait for like shows to end their run and just watch like The Sopranos. I didn't watch The oh, Sopranos yeah, until yeah. it ended and just watched it all the way through. I feel you. Cartoons, I don't know. I, I I do love cartoons. Don't get me wrong. I just, I man, I don't have time. Oh, we do have uh compensatory. We do have a compository. Comp- co- Damn compens- it! I'll <laughs> compensatory. There we go. Pick. Thank you, buddy. No, I was so glad. That, I'll I'll take the fall for that one. Ah, <laughs> oh, and that was the only compensatory pick was Ike Brown. So they only had nine that time. What's with the breakers? I feel like they're getting all the compensatories. Yeah. What's with, what is Larry Fedora doing? Is he gaming the system on all of us? I mean, we'll find out here. Uh, oh, that's not what I wanted. I gotta look up. Gotta look up Ike Brown. Ah, well, and now I feel bad because the round is officially over. So, Zim, if you're watching, I'm sorry, man. I hope you get in the supplemental draft. That's all I'm gonna say. But keep hanging in for there, sure. man. We'll be you rooting talent. for you, brother. Like seriously, the, mm-hmm. it ain't even over. And I mean. See, this I mean, this is the perfect time to be looking to play football, quite honestly, because between the USFL, the CFL, the FCF, you have the XFL coming next year. I mean, I'm so happy with the opportunities that these leagues are providing and they're growing. Like we're so used to seeing yeah. them kind of come and fizzle out, but FCF on, is on its second year. USFL is looking good at least to say the least oh, for yeah. the first couple of years, the XFL with the partnership with the NFL seems to hold them on their feet for a little bit, but now we're in that final round breakers up next. We have the quarterback second round of quarterbacks here. Boy. Oh boy. We'll find out who the backups are now. Is all we're going to say. I will say this, you know, the USFL and I'm double checking. They wait, did wait. delete the, the, the horn tweet. With the final, oh. so maybe we do have another compensatory. They deleted tweet, that uh, tweet. Pick. Okay, <laughs> a compensatory pick. Okay, okay. So we'll see. We'll see. Maybe there was just a typo in there. Car- Car- Carson uh, N got me faking out. I'm like, unless I'm missing something, where he's like RG three. I'm like RG <laughs> three. <laughs> I mean, it, it could happen. We're in that final round of quarterbacks, but I feel like that is one that would have went in that first first round if there was an rg3 right <laughs> well and even I, I don't know. Can you say it, in general it's now even they're the fourth pick in the 12th anyway it's now later in the night i'm just like trying to make sure i get all this stuff in order you know i got stuff to do tomorrow. i know i know yeah we're busy boys <laughs> i didn't think we'd be up this late this is past my bet honestly no joke i got sometimes i go to sleep like on the weekend Zach, you know, because I'll ping you at like three in the morning yeah. sometimes. Yes. But the weekdays, I yes, go to sleep I'll, early. I'll get those and I'll, in my head, I'll go WTF because I'm not going to say that yeah, on yeah, yeah. here. <laughs> I'm just like, why? I don't like to sleep. <laughs> sleep is for suckers. And you know what they say about suckers? It sucks to be a sucker. The the hustle does take the sleeping yeah. the hours away. I don't drink coffee either. People <laughs> think I'm insane at really? work. I, I do uh I do at least a Kickstarter a day right, right now. Like uh, Mountain Dew. I used to drink too much coffee. I used to drink so much oh. coffee that it would like sweat through my hands and you could smell oh. the coffee coming out of the pores. Like I I used to have oh. this thing called super coffee where you'd pour you'd brew a pot of coffee, get rid okay. of the grounds, put in new grounds, and rather than water, you run the coffee through the thing again. 
So you get a double mm-hmm. pot of coffee through like two grounds. Boy, that'll wake you up. And I mean, I used to drink coffee all day, every day. And one day, I don't know what it is. You know, you hear people, oh, it's like addicting and you can't stop. And I believe that. I don't know what it was. One day, I just was too lazy to make a cup of coffee. And it's been like five years. I've had maybe one or two cups every now and then. Like okay. very rarely. Okay. But now when I drink it, I get like a quarter cup through and I'm like. <laughs> like, I can't, I can't, it what- does, I can't jive with that, man. That's what happens when you stay away from caffeine. Which is good. I mean, I honestly, I feel more awake than I ever did when I drank caffeine all the time. Um, it's just like a natural awakening. But we're waiting on the 12th round here. Final round of the first night. We got, we'll just run through the order. So we got the Breakers, Maulers, Stallions, Gamblers, Generals, Stars, Bandits, and ending it off with the Panthers who went out first. So basically a reverse mm-hmm. of that first round here. And we're waiting. They're they're taking their sweet time. Yep they uh, they are taking a bit more time now. Credit this is your backup, mm-hmm. so you do want to, as what we've seen in recent NFL years, and what we and what pe- more and more people stress, you got to have someone that's ready that can fill in right as you go. Especially with spring leagues, one thing has come clear, and and this is not. I mean, it's not guaranteed in any league, but we've seen any time that you'll get changeover from the original starting QB from at least a few of these teams by midway through the season. You know, it's bound yeah. to happen. Luis Perez took over from Matt McGloin for crying out loud in the XFL. Cardell Jones wasn't even starting at the end of the XFL's run right on, too. Yeah. You know, sometimes these things happen. And so you either want to have someone that's capable and ready right behind them, or you want to have them ready for you know who I want to see One of the two options. Mike Bercovici, bring him oh. on, dude. You know, the, you should sign him up. Think of how fun it would be. Bring him to the gamblers. Kevin Sumlin, if you're listening and Mike Bercovici is there, at minimum, he's going to give you a good highlight this year. Sign him up. Sign him up. Sign, sign him, up. him up. We'll <laughs> see. Bercovici. Bercovici. I mean, we finally got the name right. I got to keep saying it. Oh, here we go. Quarterbacks All are right. in. Your backup breakers QB, Zach Smith, University of Tulsa. I, I think that's a solid pick. Uh, God, where do I know him from, though? Do, do I? He definitely is a familiar I might only know name. him from his college days, but I definitely know the name. It may, again, maybe it is just one of those names that I've heard before. Because he's a, well, he's a younger gun, that is for sure. Maybe it was from the Spring League. Let's see. Maybe not. Uh, not a lot of details on him. Yeah, actually, so, well, he's relatively fresh out of college. 2020 was his last year with Tulsa. Uh, through for 55% completion rate, a little under 2,000 yards. Um, so it looks like, uh, if I'm looking at this right, yeah, it might have been in partial season. He had an stellar 2019 campaign, or at least yardage-wise mm-hmm. he did. Um, now we move though. But otherwise, otherwise he's only been just out for a little bit. So we have the Maulers on the clock now. Let's see what they come up with. Are they going to draw these last eight out? Nope, they're not. We got Josh Love, San Jose State, coming huh. over for the Maulers. Okay. So yeah, even more surprises. These are guys we did not hear about. When we were doing the, doing the setup. So still waiting on a few of the names we were hoping to uh, see cross Josh love though. So let's some see. Rams, Panthers. Uh, yeah. A few camp touches. Um, Mountain West conference offensive player of the year, 2019 and San Jose state. They were, I was going to say San Jose state recent years has been a solid program for the mountain West. Uh, his 2019 campaign was, you know, well, almost 4,000 yards, 22 TDs, 12 games started. So looks like a young gun can sit right behind, uh, right behind, of course, Loletta, you know, a little less experience mm-hmm. in Loletta, but one that, you know, d- did have a nice college career. So we have, we have the stallions pick is in Jamar Davis Smith from Louisiana tech coming in there. Oh, fu- funny how that works yeah. out. 
<laughs> but I mean, well, and let's let's of course double check check Jamar Davis Smith. I put Jamar, and I'm like, that's not right. <laughs> Darn typing. It's it. We're getting to that stretch. Yes, where it's yeah. So 2020. Yeah. So this still would have been under Skip Holtz's tenure um, at LA Tech. Uh, had spells with the Patriots, and then in 2021 was with the Tiger yeah. Cats. So we're getting the CFL experience. We're getting a little bit of a connection there, sort of. Familiarity two going in. So that leaves us with now the Gamblers up next. General Stars Bandits and ending it off with the Panthers. Yeah. Who. Who's uh yeah who's backing up Thorsten Let's see there? What we got? <laughs> Let's know? see what we got. Come on, Luis Perez got to be picked up. I or I'll he actually or be he's really not upset. in the pool. Maybe he something came up and he's. You know, I mean, it's possible. I, it's, it's possible. I mean, as of this morning, he was. So I, it would be really last minute change. But I know. You know. Give me that Perez pick. I would be. I would be super happy because. Well, Matt, imagine you get Perez loading up with like someone like a Brian Scott. Or like imagine Jordan Tamu and Luis Perez wouldn't be ideal as a backup because Perez is less mobile than Tamu in that system. But like just the names alone, <laughs> I'd be like, I'd be going as an alternative, as a spring football fan going, Oh my right, God. Right. Yes. Right. <laughs> so, Kevin Sumlin making us wait again, but I'll tell you this. Usually when he makes me wait, he comes out with a good pick. So we're rolling the dice. We're rolling the dice. Ended out strong day one. Come on, Sumlin. Let's give the gamblers a good pick. Look at uh so say I still got the Menzel folks in the chat. Oh, I know, I, if, uh, yeah. Holding out, holding out. Oh, someone throwing a Kyle Trask. <laughs> Look, I mean, hey, you know what? If he was available and not like borderline being considered a placement in Atlanta, you know, would be kind of cool, but yeah. <laughs> Let's see who we got. The so, gamblers, boy, oh boy, are they making us hold on to our seats here? They are. Coach Sumlin. I, someone wants to make sure. He knows. He knows we're watching. Sure it's a good one. He probably doesn't appreciate some of my comments. That may be true. <laughs> and he's probably holding it uh, against us. He's uh, oh, you guys want it to be funny. All right. Kenji Bahar, Monmouth. I, I can't say the college name. Kenji, Kenji Bahar from Monmouth looks like a stop with the Ravens, according to his... At yeah. least his profile. Let's see. Kenji Bahar. So looks like his last year at Monmouth was 2019. So, oh, sorry. Undrafted out of 2020. My bad. So he's actually been with the Ravens the last Not two bad. years. Not bad. Big South, Big South Offensive Player of the Year 2019. First team, all Big South 2019. Second team, all Big South 2018. So at least in that in less than that conference solid repertoire and he's had consistent nfl employment for two seasons and, i mean you can't be mad at that again looking back uh, i've mentioned it a million times with pj walker that little bit of experience is that can help a lot in a league like this uh, mm -hmm. so we have four picks left of night one we have generals up next generals up next and we just got deandre johnson oh, going to the generals wow there you go another wow. tsl guy all right Johnson land in the spot, Texas Southern. And he was very much the, wasn't as much a pass happy in the TSL. His legs were doing a lot of the work for him when it came to the sea lions, him and Ben Holmes. That was like their main MO along, of course, the Ladarius Galloway, uh, blowing, leading the pack and, uh, you know, being their main runner and one of the top running backs in that league. But Johnson has been one that people are clamoring. He should get picked up. Looks like he's going to be backing up. All right. Dude, this is, all right, down to three more picks of the night. I'm getting my energy now. Now I'm like, phew, phew, phew. I got to stay up for I like know. another We're, five hours. I'm, I'm, you can go to bed, Zach. I, I'm streaming until the date, too. <laughs> I'm I'm just looking to see who the Panthers pick up to back up Shea Patterson. That's my if main thing. If you guys thing, get Luis Perez, if you know, somehow, if somehow. I, my gosh, I will, my gosh. Oh, I'll be angry. See, so I actually had, and it's because the list wasn't fully released, my original mock draft, as I said at the beginning, was Luis Perez would go to the Panthers number mm -hmm. one. And that didn't happen. So who knows? I think he fits the system because Jeff Fisher, unless he learned some stuff in retirement, he's a ground and pound guy. Running backs are primarily his bread and butter. But I mean, you get a talented enough QB, then, well. Here's the thing, too. Yeah. 
you know what retired people do. We know that Jeff Fisher, he likes to fish. He likes to hunt. He probably likes to bowl, too. I don't want to get too off topic because we have our next pick in. So I'll, I'll, I'll finish that. Thought. Case. <laughs> Case Cookus. Northern Arizona, Northern Arizona, which is, again, a, a very nice campus. Very nice campus up there. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. I can. I definitely could say I have never it's, been. It's, it's the part of Arizona with trees. So it's like a little bit, uh, I mean, northern, okay. clearly it's northern Arizona. But, yeah, very, very nice campus. Um, I want to say... I want to say it's in Flagstaff or in the surrounding area, but I could be wrong on that. It's been a while since I lived in Arizona, but it is a, a very nice so, campus. So Cookus has been a little, he's been around a few places. Uh, he was with the generals actually in 2021. So this makes a lot of sense. He back. So he was, he, well, it makes right. some sense. At least he was in the TSL. Um, I was about to say under Bart Andrus, but that wouldn't line up different, yeah. different seasons anyway. So technically, Two generals are two generals QBs are lining up with the same team under Bart Andrus, that is. Um, but he did play with the Giants at one point. Last year he also had stops with the Broncos, Vikings, Raiders, and he was with the Edmonton Eskimos last season. We got the, we got the, the bandits pick in now. Brady White. Oh, who? which Brady that, White. That, that, spring League, right? Memphis. He came from the Spring League. Oh, that maybe I'm gonna have to check. Memphis, though, tell you what. The Memphis University, of Memphis, the Tigers, those guys have some explosive offenses. That I know for sure. Uh, yes, he was there with the go. Alphas. Yeah, that's where I knew the name. I couldn't remember if it was the first name Brady or last name Brady, so I wasn't sure if I was confusing them. But like to see it, like to see it. So, all right, last pick in the draft. Then we got the Panthers. Let's see. They get yep, we'll started the Come same on. way we ended Louise. with the Panthers and Louise. the quarterback. Luis Perez, Luis Perez, come on, me. land him. I beg you, Jeff, give me my man. Hey, well, this is what I was going to say. So as a retired person, not so much retired anymore, Jeff Fisher, I'm sure he loves to go bowling. And I mean, what better person to have on your team than professional bowler, Luis Perez? I'm going to, you know, I don't usually do, I don't usually don't care for cold takes, but some dude I feel bad here bro. for saying this, but the guy, the guy's name's Cam. I won't tag him. Bro, oh, no, bro, bro. Hang on. Let bro. me, let me react to it, but naturally. Okay. No, no way. way. Paxton way. Lynch. Paxton Lynch backing up Shea Patterson. What, you People thought it was rumored. Lucky. They thought it we might happen. We speculated at the beginning of the episode. So you mean to tell me Paxton Lynch Dude. snubbed Luis Perez for the final QB spot in the main bro. draft? Oh, I mean, I, I got to think Perez is out. Uh, for one reason or another, I mean, unless he gets a su in the supplemental, no, no, I think but he was, damn, I, think he I maybe pulled himself out of the pool or some reason. I don't see him not getting picked over some of the guys that we saw in this last round of quarterbacks, but bro, Paxton Lynch again, just yesterday, Dude. if you guys aren't aware, he was on a CFL roster yesterday. They yes. got on the horn quick. <laughs> Blake MMA show should have been me. Um, yeah, have you ever seen me throw? No, look, Paxton Lynch. Okay, this is a this is a guy that was drafted for that was drafted first round for the Denver Broncos. They had high hopes for him coming out of Memphis. Funny enough, we just had a number of Memphis QB picked up recently. Uh, had some seasons of doubt on what his status was with the Broncos. Went up north. Now he's here. New chances to try and play. Credit. He's going to start out as the backup because trust me, Shea Patterson's definitely going to be your guy based on the status. But look, injuries happen. Guy could have a lot, have a chance. I mean, it's a big name At for the minimum, league. Trade it was, bait. It's a big name for the league. I mean, that right now, Jeff Fisher has a really good spot here because, I mean, quite honestly, if he does see, let's say Shea Patterson comes in and he's so solid. I mean, you have now some really good trade bait with Paxton Lynch in there, though, too. Right. I mean, yeah, because you can execute trades post right, this. Right, so. Right. You just can't do it during the draft. Exactly. So you got to wait. I, I'm excited because of the name value. So people are going to, in the morning, wake up and go, I mean, unless you're now still awake, but in the morning, people are going to go, Whoa. Right. and the NFL world's going to be like, oh my God. Um, I don't know. I still, I'm happy that the name's there, but I'm just like, damn, man, like Perez has done so much in these leagues. And I just was, I mean, unless like you're saying his name for some reason was taken mm -hmm. out. 
it's just hard for me to accept that he didn't get picked up in these two rounds. It really I, I, is. I, like I said, I, I'm surprised that he didn't get picked. So that's why my initial thinking is he either has another opportunity ahead of him that has either made it to where he's decided not to enter the USFL this year. Because I don't Maybe. see him, I mean, that, I don't see him getting not picked in that last round of eight. I will say very surprised mm-hmm. by that last pick because, again, we, we joked and speculated a little bit that what if, what if he did get cut? And it is funny because earlier I, I specifically mentioned on OutKick the way they worded that anybody who is a free agent as of today is available for the USFL draft from either the that CFL, NFL, or XFL. And so just that yeah. extra, as of today, made, me, made the little antennas go up. I said, did it, did it, did it? There's not, there's no way, right? And boy, oh boy, well, there was a flipping way. Well, they definitely made, I, I, I almost, this almost feels like it was, pl- it was planned. Like this, this almost feels like they did this to say one final drop in the bike. Right. Just, just walk away, like, walk away from explosion moment is what that was. You know, they still have another mm-hmm. day. Things can happen. You know, we haven't even gotten the skill positions of running back and receiver, you know, those are going to definitely have some people. Oh, we're going to see out. some fun names Dang. tomorrow. I think I just, I mean, he, ah, that stinks. I, I hope Perez finds an opportunity. If he is still in football, you know, I, he's has plenty of film, you know, I, that's all I'll say, but overall fun night, a blast, a lot longer than I expected. A lot longer than I, like, I thought we'd be done an hour and a half ago. No joke. So here we are. I'm glad you guys joined us. Like I said, Tim Skelton will announce you again. I, I think you might've left the chat. We'll also announce a new giveaway this Friday. So we didn't make it to the 3,000. But you know what? Pat yourselves on the back. You gave us our biggest show to date on our first live stream. So, I mean, yeah. you guys you guys earned it there. But if you, if you enjoyed this, which hopefully you did, make sure you follow us over on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, at USFL Podcast, on essentially every major social media platform there is. If for whatever reason you haven't subscribed to us here yet, Hit the button, click the bell. It builds morale. It'll make you feel good. If you're a little sad about your team, maybe not making the right picks, just click that bell. It'll lift the spirits up just a little bit. Uh, oh, one yeah. other thing, though, too, again, just to kind of wrap up uh, a few things. If you plan on going to that first USFL game in Birmingham between the Stallions and the Generals, come and hang out with us. The party's in the parking lot at Protective Stadium starting at 12 p.m. Central. We got the USFL podcast. We have this is the USFL podcast. We have Jim Mernier of Controlling the Chaos podcast, as well as Inside the Walls podcast with my man, Zach. And we have some special guests and surprises that we're going to be announcing over the next couple weeks. This event's going to be huge. But the good news is, hey, if you can't make it, we get it. We're also going live on YouTube. We'll, we'll announce the giveaway stuff on Friday. I have to run this by my co-host here before I just start spouting yeah. things out. But I have a couple thoughts sure. in my head on a YouTube giveaway for that. That's all I'll say. We'll, we'll make it worth your while. Trust for me. Sure. It's going to be worth your but, while. That's all I can tell you. I mean, overall, so before we go, everyone in the chat, did you have fun tonight? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Or I, thumbs up. I can definitely see they had fun. I'm getting like all kinds of chats here. Great show, guys. That's what I love. You know, ain't it, c- thank you for the time. Thanks for what you do. You guys made the draft so much fun. James said that. Thank you very much. <laughs> David, <laughs> the ref's wife is going to be officiating him tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Sign me up. <laughs> and then Robert Robert Lemon here. See you all in Birmingham on the 16th. Great show. Pe- you know, yeah, you guys are awesome. Getting the thumbs up now. Thank you all. This is this is. I had, this was a bigger day than I thought we were going to have. And pe- people coming in, flocking in, enjoying this broadcast. I was nervous coming in, I'll be frank. I, I did not know how this was going because we had so many people waiting on this show. And you guys made this worth our while a ton more than I thought I ever, I ever, it ever could be. This is the biggest stream I've ever had with I mean, anything. So let's just look. You. So we're at a little over 44,000 views on the stream tonight. I Unreal. mean, before tonight, our our... Biggest video, I think, was around 1,500. I yeah. mean, sign you guys up. You guys I mean, rock. And like I said, we're <laughs> going to be going rock. live more as the season gets closer or as the season goes on. We're here every week, Friday, uh, 9 a.m. Eastern, every Friday. 
It's on YouTube and it's on all your favorite pla- uh, pod- podcast platforms. There you go. And you uh, go. sign us up every now and then. You'll see us be able to stumble over words and stuff. So I saw a couple questions. So no, we're not going to be streaming live tomorrow for the um, for the draft. But I do know the Sports Gambling Podcast Network guys will be. So go go check them there out. You go. go give them a shot. I mean, yeah. we took your time today. But trust our word on it. Go, go, give them a shot. Go check them out for day two, and I mean, if even if you want a different, uh, uh, an alternative thought on it, go watch the replay of their night one. Um, but mm-hmm. we will be talking. We will be recapping day two of the draft this Friday. So don't worry, we'll get you covered. And we have all sorts of other news to talk about as well. I think I think that's it. I don't know what else to say. I I, I think so. Yeah. Again, guys, you know. Thanks for the time tonight. I know we couldn't do it tomorrow, but trust me, well, there's going to be more coverage on USFL Newsroom. We'll keep you up to date, at least for sure, on that tracker. Uh, If there's one thing I know Stefan does well, based on his XFL tracking he did last time, he's going to make a good list for you. It'll be real easy to access. So And good good call out on that. So, yes, we won't be live streaming, but the draft tracker will be updated live tomorrow, and we'll be on social media partying with all the fans as well. But I think that's it for today. So until Friday, sign you guys up. And thanks for making this the biggest video ever.